And we are live. Hello. Hey. Landon. Damn it, Landon. What episode are we on? <laughs> we are on 148. 148 oh, episodes. Mm. We tried to get you up here for quite some time. I know. You know, it was a big Rolo, Tomasi, Mike <laughs> Sartain. This is something that we feel... I don't think we've had the luxury of having enough of these conversations mm. yet. And I, this is what I love about this space mm. is because, uh, I, like Charleston said, I believe. There's yeah, a lot of what crossover. Are, what are we? What, what are we? Uh, sigmas? Sigmas. Like Charleston sigmas. told us. <laughs> yeah. but, um, I wonder if I, you know what a delta is. <laughs> delta male. Yeah. So I feel like for us, um, uh, Chris and I are uh, two individuals that could walk in a lot of different rooms mm. and be able to have great conversations mm. with people. We've all, all sorts of different backgrounds and, you know, getting into this podcasting game. Uh, mm. One thing that was most exciting to me was having the great conversations that we mm. can have sure. and opening up spaces for other people, because there's so many people that know me very mm. well that I get to open up a different door to, to say, Hey, you ever, you ever see these guys? So mm. 148. There you go. Let's go. And we got Rolo and Mike Sartain in the building. Let's get All right. You know what I mean? Let's get, let, Landon's got to get them sounds right. It's okay. Thank you for having me. <laughs> there we Come go. on. It's a roadcaster. It's not that hard. <laughs> big button. Big button. Uh, and, and Landon, also a huge fan. Yeah. You know, Landon, if, if, if Pleasantly I, surprised by that, by the way. Really? <laughs> nice. Nice. Oh, man. This guy's the man. He's all, all, the, all the stuff you guys do is amazing. So tell me a little bit. Mm-hmm. What we like to start to do with every show, just because I would love for our fans to get the opportunity to know you from scratch, both sure. of you. Mm-hmm. So how did it start for you? What what turned you into who you are today? We can start with you, Roman. Well, I'm the author of The Rational Mail. That's really how this started. But really, it was before that. I used to, uh, I used to be a moderator on this forum called So Suave. And it was not necessarily like a pickup forum so much as it was like sort of I guess in in the beginning it started. I was like in the seduction community, but it, then it sort of morphed into what we kind of call the manosphere right now. So it wasn't just about like, oh, how do I go get my dick wet? It started becoming a little bit more about intersexual dynamics, and I was part of that for almost twelve years. And then I started the blog in uh, 2011, and then uh, the first book was published in 2013, and then I've since published four more after that. So between 2013 and just as recently as last year, um, my, my fifth book came out, and now I'm done with the series, thank you. Um, but the uh, the Rational Mail series, I when I first did the book, I wasn't like planning on writing the Bible of the Red Pill or the Manosphere or whatever, but that's just basically what happened, and it... It uh, exploded and snowballed into what it is today, and um, I'm happy to say I'm working. I'm just about done with the uh, the 10th anniversary edition of it, and it's going to be a hardback. I'm, I have yes, I have uh, corrected it for typos and syntax <laughs> and a very small type size. Sure on you well, when I, but the reason for that is because when I when I wrote the book, I thought it would be the only book I'd ever write, and so I wanted to cram as much good stuff into it yeah, as I possibly just could. Get it out there, and um, and then it became you know what it is right now, and. Um, and then right around, uh, you know, then 2015, I produced uh, Preventive Medicine and then uh, Positive Masculinity. Then I did Religion. I took three years to research and do all the study and stuff. And the most well-cited book that I have is, is the book on religion. And it's the confluence of sort of intersexual dynamics and religion. Wow. And then the last one I did was... Um, uh, the player's handbook, which is not a how-to book. That's everybody keeps asking me. Is this, this how I get laid? Is this going to solve is all my problems? Show me how to get game. Yeah. No, it's not. It's why it works. It's the principles, underlying principles behind the techniques. And it's like, what's a neg hit? Why do this sound stupid? How did they come into this? This sounds stupid, right? Well, there's a there's actually a reason behind all that. People just think it's like, it's oh, it's so cringe, but it's not. It's like there's there's actually principles that go behind. I'm not expecting mm. you to use all of these, but if you wonder why amused mass works or command presence works or all this, you know, all this other mm-hmm. stuff that's been around for, for, for so long. There's psychological principles behind that. And people wow. don't really know that, especially this new sort of generation. That's sort of the, the new come ups right now who think that it's all just, you know, laughable old school stuff. And it's like, no, there's actually a lot of meat behind all of this. Mm-hmm. It's just, he does it's the TL, the DR generation that doesn't want to have anything to do with it. Yeah. So I started doing that, and then, uh, as you guys know, I used to work with uh, a guy named Pat Campbell. Pat Campbell was a terrestrial radio show host um, out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. He was a syndicated conservative guy. Nice. And I uh, started doing his show every Friday, and from there, we started. I started my podcast because people wanted more and more of it, so it was myself, and, mm. and uh, Pat Campbell did that in, um, I guess it was the begin- beginning of t- 2018. 
And that's where my podcast is right now because Pat passed away in 2021. And um, since then, I've just sort of, you know, kept going. And then I started working with Fresh and Fit. I work with Adam Sosnick. I work with Jedi Abila. Uh, just have my hands in a lot of different areas. And like you were saying before, there's a lot of crossover. And I wasn't really fully aware of, like, how much crossover there really was with what I do and other kind of venues, I guess, or other sub-niches. So... Um, I'm really good friends with Robert Kiyosaki. Um, I helped him with his divorce with Kim Kiyosaki. Oh wow! Uh, I know George. I know him through George Gammon. Uh, very much a uh, a financial economics guy. Uh, through him, I know uh, Ken McElroy, uh, entrepreneur slash real estate guy, and then you know Jason Hartman as well. So there's that, and I had no idea how much crossover I had with like the rebel capitalist guys. Because they all watch me, but they also all watch George Gammon. So that, that's that. So it's like we talk about money, muscles, and game, or it's health, wealth, and relationships. relationships and so, but there's that, there's a lot of crossover in that. So I hang out with you guys. I hang out with um, with the uh, with the guys from Fresh and Fit. You know, been instrumental and in part of their lives for gosh, going on two and a half, almost three years now. It shows. And <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm just I got my I got my I got a lot of irons in the fire, and then uh, right around was it a uh, 2022, about August of 2022, uh, myself and my one of my business partners, uh, Miguel Munoz, also part of the crypto sphere, okay. um, he said, you know what, let's go, let's start something in Vegas, because he lived in Vegas, and I live in Reno, and I'm like, I can do that, yeah. so that's a short trip, <laughs> short true. flight, so, <laughs> so we started doing that, and through Justin Waller, another guy who I met through Fresh and Fit, and it's just all this, you know, interconnections, you know, it's like, it's like, it's like one of those like forensic things where yeah, you take like the, the thread red. and you run it in front of this tag pains. and everything. So there's all this web work here. And that's how I met Mike. And then uh, I think the sort of the relationship that Mike and I have is really reminiscent of, of what I used to have with Pat Campbell. I think that's one of the reasons why we work so well together. And he's probably the only guy I know that is at least as well-read as I am on this stuff. So, and then we started to access Vegas. And the reason why we called it Access Vegas is because this guy had access to all the places to go. And we, we basically started our own, you know, kind of panel show with the girls and everything. And we have a different, we have a different spin on it. We have a different take on it. Our, 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 our purpose isn't to kick the girls off. It's not to like pander to them any, anyways. We're just having a conversation. And again, it's, it's not meant to be sort of um, a three ring circus or a more Maury Povich kind of thing. It's more like we want to have these conversations and, um, and I think we've done pretty well. I think, what, what are we, I, are we the second, are we the number two or the number one Listen, podcast yeah. in Vegas we're, right we're, now? Real talk, like, like Graham Stefan, I mm-hmm. think probably has the most views, but I think we're, mm-hmm. we're definitely up there. We definitely get a lot. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, and how long, how long did you, this, this union is pretty new, right? Uh, about a year. A year and a half. A little over a year. A little over a year. Somewhere yeah. there. Yeah. Number two in a year. Mm-hmm. Not Gosh. that bad. Yeah. 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 And it worked out pretty well. And then we do other things too. And again, like you said, there's a lot of networking and there's a lot of crossover. Oh, yeah. So I'm also working with uh, Charlie and Miguel from Cultivate Crypto, Dollar Cost Crypto. We're working yeah. with that. So they're in Vegas as well. I was going to say Vegas is definitely the place Vegas, for you guys to well, be. Well, I'll tell you the reason why Miguel and I decided on Vegas is because there's really only three places to go and do uh, podcast. Like if you want the podcast mm-hmm. meccas were uh, Texas because that's where Rogan was. Yeah. That's where uh, oh. The Blaze was. Um, I'm trying to, oh, I'm, I'm trying to think who else is there. But then there's Nashville. And Nashville is Nashville. Prager U and uh, Daily Wire is is there. Okay, uh, there's some other people there as well. So Nashville is one of them. And then there's then there's Miami and there's Fresh and Fit and then uh, Dave Rubin's there. Valley Tainments and Fort Lauderdale, close enough. So those are the three spots. But there's nothing that's really on the West Coast because nobody wants to do anything in California right. because it's you can't do business in California anymore. Mm-hmm. So what's the next most obvious place? The the biggest hub. They, I mean, you can get direct <laughs> flights from Japan into like Las yeah. Vegas. So I'm, I'm like, why is there not a, a show here? Why do we not have a, 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 a West Coast hub? And so that's what we are. We're the West Coast hub for like the red pill kind of stuff, uh, that, that kind of yeah. content. So, right at home. so that's what we did. And we have a lot of, like I said, we had a lot of irons in the fire. We've had, um, we've had some pretty controversial guests. We've had Gary's the numbers guy and Zerka on, but then we also have like serious talks like uh, Richard Reeves has been on. Yeah. Uh, in the last year I was on Dr. Phil. So did, okay. I did one show, very long show that turned into two shows with Dr. Phil. 
And um, so just, I'm, I'm constantly yeah. doing stuff. And I think people are like, oh, that role of Tomasi, you're just sitting there and just all he does is pontificate. And I'm like, no, dude, I'm out here fucking busting my yeah, ass, bro. Man. Yeah. And you're showing a lot. And you're I'm showing doing okay. stuff. And you're showing a lot of range, too. If you go yeah. from Zerka to Dr. Phil. Like, <laughs> right? I know. I find I know. Yeah. Just, like, that is quite a, the range. Gotta, there's no a few offense, similarities. Yes. No offense to anybody, yeah. but, you know, like, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's range right there. Yeah. Yeah. That's but I like, I, like, I like being able to have, like, a really serious, like, cerebral kind of conversations and then we'll go do access vegas and we've got like amanda nicole on there or <laughs> yeah. zirka or you know That's or good. hey we've had adam sasnik on the show too and he yeah. turns into a completely different person on bro, our when, show. It's, when it's not his show and he doesn't <laughs> care yes. bro he is swinging for the fences <laughs> adam sasnik on your That's show fun. is different from adam sasnik on, on his, his show, show. That's yeah. yeah it's it's yeah. totally different and he's great but, but I that's love the beauty of having uh, people in the space that are capable of having real conversations. Yeah. You know, obviously you guys have real conversations with individuals. It's not that mm -hmm. um, you're just trying to shame everybody and kick them out of the room. So when you get those, mm -hmm. that, that out of them, you're, real, you're, you're surprised by some people. Mm -hmm. It well, really shock you. When we had, um, when we had uh, Richard Reeves on, Richard Reeves was one of the guests that was on Dr. Phil. In fact, I was the one that suggested he go on the show with us because we had a panel of four people on that show. And then afterwards, I hit him up once we could actually talk to each other because we had to sign NDAs, right? Um, and I, I said, I said, Rich, I said, can you, if you're going to be in Vegas, can we get you on the show? We want, we really want to just have an interview. We don't have to put you on with the girls or anything like that. We just would like to have a sit down and talk to you for a couple hours. And he showed up. I was like, oh, hot damn, great, he's he's here. And he said that like people were telling him not to go on the show yeah. because he thought that mm. that we were going to like run with the flagpole bash. and just like completely bash him and everything. I go, dude, dude, that is not what we are about. I don't care if you disagree with me. I just want to have a good conversation yeah. with you, there you go. and the, and that kind of con just so we know where you know where the conflict of interest are between the two of us. Right. So. And look, that turns out to be really good, but the problem is, is then you get like guys who just want to want blood sport. Yeah. Oh, you should have punched him in the face! I can't uh, believe he's cool. from the Brookings Institute. How come you didn't just tear him a new one, right? And then people think we go too easy on the girls because that's this is not that show. Yeah. The point is, not, it's like it's not a NASCAR you know race where everybody wants to see the car crash. <laughs> we just we're actually there to have these conversations, you know. Which is a beautiful thing. I feel yeah. as though that is what happens with the commenters. Oh yeah, right. Like whoever's oh, yeah. leaving mm -hmm. those comments on, they, they got they got to find something have, wrong. Have you something to hate oh, you? Yeah. About. Have you ever been in a room full of successful men and asked them which one of you guys comments on YouTube? With us? <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone ever noticed? It's, <laughs> yeah. it's fucking none of yeah. them. My time. Anyway, we appreciate that? all the people that comment. No, no, no. Comment. But, no, but no, no. I'm saying I'm talking do. about the, I'm hate. talking about the, the negative yes, comments. Exactly. I leave yeah. I leave positive yeah. comments on his stuff all the time. I'm talking about the negative comments specifically on TikTok and YouTube. Because of the anonymity. There's less anonymity on Instagram. So I don't see it it's quite true. as much. But it's like, I, I sit there with a bunch of successful guys. I'm like, when was the last time you guys ever left a negative comment on a YouTube mm -hmm. video? And they're like, I don't know how to do that. Like, what are you talking? Yeah, I make right. too much money and I have a beautiful right. wife. And then I was like, man, I don't understand this. And then it was Zerka who said something to you. Mm -hmm. He goes, you need to make a book called The Rational Teen. I was like, The Rational Teen? Mm -hmm. What yeah. the fuck is that? And he goes, because it's all these kids watching. And I was like, wow. Okay, I love Mr. Beast. I can't watch his content though. Like I mm. admire him as a content creator, but I can't, it, it's unwatchable for me. Same thing mm. with uh, Jake and Logan Paul. It's just, mm. the content H3, is H3. unwatchable. Now the, the podcast I can watch, but like his other dab, dab, dab stuff, I can't. It's just understand. It's just, un, it just, I don't understand. I was like, how do these people get 178 million views for a video? And why are all these people doing, like why, why are these thousands of people? And then, and then it was Zarko who said it. He goes, it's 15 year old boys. It's like, oh, fuck, that's what it is. I was like, who are these people ma writing these comments? And I just couldn't figure it out for the longest time. And then, you know, when I first got in the space, when I got introduced to it, I was like getting these negative comments. And I'm like, what you're saying isn't even like 1% right. Like, what the, who are these people saying? Yeah, you're these? wrong. They can't all be 35-year-old men living in with their moms in a basement, can they? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, they're 13 to 15-year-old kids. I, I couldn't figure yeah, it out for the longest time. Sense. Like, who are these people, man? I, it's, it, it's really interesting. Um, my story is uh, not quite like his. Uh, I got out of college when MCI Worldcom and um, and uh, Enron went out of business. I went to UT Austin. Yeah. There were no jobs, and as a joke, almost as a joke, I got I go apply to be a DJ at a strip club, and in Austin, Texas, on Congress Avenue. So, it's not so there anymore. The, the voice just yeah. made more sense. To yeah. Me yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I go do I go try out. I get the job. Couldn't believe I got the job. 
And it was really weird because he is on the SoSwap forum at the same time while I'm doing this, at the same time Neil Strauss is writing the game. Like all three of these things are happening at the same time. Like we're getting into cell phones, like 04, we start getting into text messaging. Mm. Like around this time period, there's this thing where people are consorting information on the internet. That's where like uh, the, the Manosphere and Red Pill, the, these kind of concepts come. And I'm, I'm working at the strip club and this is the first time I'm seeing, I'm being told something by my, the, my family by Disney and the church, and then I'm watching women who are, you know, objectively very attractive, and they're saying completely opposite things. Now, not to say that strippers at a strip club are uh, uh, identify all women, but like the, it was just extreme examples where I was watching domestic abuse, drug use, all this kind of stuff. Women complaining about men, and then like, like just consider this, guys. Women get offered infinite dick and still chase each other's man. Like, how crazy is that? <laughs> when you watch that, infinite uh, dick, yeah. and you still chase each other's man. Yeah. And I was watching this at a strip club. I was like, it's like the six of you are fighting over the same worthless dude. And I was, I was like, okay, some, and I'm 22 years old. I'm like, something's wrong here. Something's broken in the system. So it was like kind of the first, uh, I guess, maybe red pill moment for me. When I read the Rational Mail, I was like, thank God someone wrote this. Then I joined the military in 04, and from 04 to 11, I'm a, I'm a captain in the U.S. Air Force. I fly KC-135 as a navigator. And then um, during that time, I, I start to see the difference between good leadership and bad leadership. And I was like, okay, this is really interesting. Because also during that time, I get introduced to Mystery and Matador. I'm friends with, I'm still friends with Mystery and Neil Strauss and those guys. Okay. And I'm watching this, this, this pickup thing kind of explode and get really big. And then granted, this is before Instagram. So I think pickup actually had some efficacy in that time period, but sort of died off once social media started because now what happened was guys who had the, the Lamborghini and the nice watch and all this and the big mansion party, they got to dunk on the pickup artists because they those guys couldn't weren't able to keep up. Mm. And so during that time period, I was like, I was uh, living in Atlanta, Georgia. I was stationed at Robbins Air Force Base. And I would go out with these club promoters who had like the hottest girlfriends I've ever seen and would show up to a club with 70 girls. And then I would listen to pickup artists that like said that they were banging tens and like they weren't. Like they just weren't. Oh, they objectively man, no. weren't. And then so the, that period of time goes on. I get out of the military in 11 and then I moved to Las Vegas. I, I was made up my mind. I'm just going to move here. And one thing leads to another, like long story short, I end up working for this event company while I'm still working in finance. So I, I start coaching for free, I, I, uh, RSD would have me go on stage and different uh, like uh, companies would have me come coach, but I was doing it totally for free while I was working in finance. And um, I would throw these events in Las Vegas. So first it was a bikini competition, there was another bikini competition. Now I host all the bikini competitions in Las Vegas. And I was hosting the Maxim party, I was a videographer at the Playboy Mansion. And I, I kind of figured out this like, this interesting idea of networking in order to get hundreds of women to show up to like certain events. And it was funny because I lived in the same building with Dan Bilzerian, but I didn't know him. I lived in Tower 2 of Panorama Towers. He lived in Tower 1. And we never met while we both lived there. Okay? And Dan's one of my good friends now. But I didn't know. Nice. And it was like he was doing this thing I was slowly discovering. I was like, the, the, term, the, psych, the, the term in psychology is called mate choice copying. And this is the concept where is, if a man is seen with other women or the approval from other women, mm. other women find that man a, a, attractive. Yeah. By the way, this is the same thing for two gender species, all ev pretty much every mammal, several species of bird, okay? There's even an experiment they've done with geese with uh, where they put female geese near, near next to the male one and they're stuffed animals and the female still choose that Suddenly male. more desirable. Just Suddenly he's more desirable. So I'm like, okay, there's something going on here. Like, and then I'm, I'm still coaching guys and I'm like, I can't make your eyes blue. I can't make you six foot three. I can't make you look like a male stripper, but I can make it look like you get approval from women and that is going to be an incredible attraction trigger. And I was like, this is really interesting. And then I remembered all the lessons I learned from the military mm -hmm. and I would meet these guys that were in the pickup community. And I was like, they can't shake my hand. They have no ability to lead. I can't hear them when they talk and they fucking, they come off like really, I don't know. They had no ability to like really communicate or lead a group. So I remember that, that part. And then there was the, the guys in the self-help community, right? So I'm friends with Ty Lopez and that whole group and that group, like they didn't know how to talk to women. So it's like, there's something missing here. There's a gap There's that's a not being bridged lane. here. Mm -hmm. I was like, what if it was like Jocko Willick or David Goggins taught a dating program? What if, or what if there was a pickup program taught by US military officers? Mm -hmm. And it's just like, I kept thinking about this concept. Remember, I'm doing this all for free at this point. And then, and then uh, COVID hit and- um, You had more time to think and, about and it. And I had more time yeah. to think about it, but I'm working in finance and I'm triple levered to the upside and I lose a ton of money. And I end up thinking, man, I, I should probably start doing this for a living. And one of my friends tells me, he goes, You've been at this point I've been coaching for 14 years, never made a penny off of it. And I was like, 
what if you did this? Uh, he's like, if people actually paid to, to learn from you, they would actually be more invested. And that was, that's absolutely mm -hmm. true, by the okay. way. I'll tell you guys, you can give free advice to 100,000 people, mm -hmm. but if you <laughs> if somebody pays you a certain amount of money, the l amount of work they're willing to put in once they give you the money is a hundredfold. Really and and the, the, the change in their life is a hundredfold. So anyway, so I started doing this for a while. And then, uh, so um, I, I'm coaching and then, the weirdest thing happened, guys. If, if this has ever happened to you, this, it's really interesting. This girl I was dating just started lying about me to everyone. And cost me a job. <laughs> he cost me a job. And I remember just being fucking livid. I was like, I cannot believe. But I can't do anything about it. Like, I'm just, obviously, I, there's nothing I can really do to her. But I lost a job because of her. And it was just, it was like a side job. It was like a hosting gig. And I remember thinking, of, you remember the Joe Rogan thing where he, he says the N-word and they put the, all mm -hmm. the clips together yeah, and then all these black comedians come together. But like in context, you understood he was quoting Paul Mooney. Right. Out of context, he looks like a racist. He's a white guy mm -hmm. saying. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. But like, I, I remember thinking he has this incredible superpower of having a podcast. So like you can't take him out of context because he's going to talk for three hours. And if yeah. you listen to Joe Rogan in clips, he sounds sometimes kooky. If you listen mm -hmm. for three hours, he's a really well thought out guy. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, man, maybe I should do this. And so I started the podcast because this fucking girl was lying about me. It was crazy. <laughs> First episode, I had an F-18 fighter pilot. It was a buddy of mine and a playmate. And I had compared their lives together and using the concepts of evolutionary psychology. I forgot that other part. I'm, I'm obsessed with evolutionary psychology. Yeah. That's our main connection. Ooh, yeah. Ty Lopez introduced me to a, a, a professor named Dr. David Buss from University of Texas at Austin. I'm also a Longhorn like he is. David Dr. Buss. Buss has been on my program. I have come to the realization that the all psychology is an evolutionary psychology and evolutionary psychology is the only testable model of psychology. Psychology is a soft science. Evolutionary psychology is a hard, hard science. science yeah. And this is the concept of like, there are actual dimorphic differences between the male and female psychology amongst homo sapiens. And those things have been developed through 178 million years of years. mammalian mm. evolution, 3 million years of hominid evolution and 200,000 years of homo sapien evolution. And when I understood those concepts and remember, been working at a strip club, throwing these events, Just going watching. to these huge parties. Yeah. So it's one of these things where like, theoretically, Dr. Buss is talking about this stuff, and then I'm sitting here next to Dan Bilzerian. Not a guy like Dan Bilzerian, like the dude who fucked 1,500 women, the, Dan Bilzerian, like I'm the, he, the <laughs> Dan Bilzerian. Yeah. And I'm watching these women fucking fight over him. And I'm reading these concepts about sexy son's hypothesis, and I was like, maybe what I could do is actually bridge the gap between theory and practice. Sick. Like relig realistically do this. I read the Rational Mail in 2013. I don't know what Rolo Tomasi looks like. I imagine in my mind what he looks no like. No one did. No one knew what he looked like. Yeah, great name, by the way. I imagine in my mind, you know, he's this character, you know, obviously it's the character from, it's funny because he's the character from LA Confidential. Yeah. And then Owen Cook, Tyler Durden, is the ca character from Fight Club. Fight Club. And, and I, remember, I remember thinking this, and ironically, my real name is Michael Sartain. The, uh, the, so, so, you know, I remember thinking, I, I, I always remember this one time, I was like, I wonder what Rolo Tomasi, who I didn't know what looked like, <laughs> would think if I took him. I'm friends mm -hmm. with Crystal Hefner, uh, play, uh, Hugh Hefner's widow. Okay. I was like, what would he think if I introduced him to Crystal Hefner and took him to the Playboy Mansion? How would that fit in? Not, not to like show off or anything, but like how would that fit in the, what he's, his belief about sexual dynamics and networking and all this kind of stuff is and status hierarchies and all that kind of stuff. And I always thought, man, how crazy would that be? One of the craziest things about me having a podcast or, or me being in this field is like some of my favorite authors are David Buss, Neil Strauss, and, and, uh, and Rolo Tomasi. And I'm friends with all of them, which is really crazy to me, right? That, that's one of the best things you talk about having a podcast, yeah. getting to meet these people yes. that you admire so much, right? Yes. Um, and so, so I'm, we get to the point where I'm hosting the podcast and I'm having all these different guests on and I get a message. And by the way, this is, I'm not trying to stun or anything. He was doing this for everywhere. Andrew Tate's people were reaching out to every podcast back in 2020, around, around that time, like early 2020. So I got a message from one of Andrew Tate's people. He connects us on Instagram and me and Andrew start going back and forth. Well, he's looking at my social media and in my yeah. social media, it's nothing but me with hundreds of girls. And He's like asking me questions and we go back and forth and I'm like, hey man, let's set up something. I want you to come do my podcast, blah, blah, blah. I have a lot of questions for you. I did a ton of research. And he's like, hey man, I don't think I'm gonna be able to make it to the States, but you need to interview my buddy, Justin Waller. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, let okay. me do that. Let me, let me interview Justin Waller. And by the way, at this point, I don't even know if this is a real Andrew Tate I'm talking to. I'm texting every, every day. He starts leaving voice memos, so I know it's him. Yeah. Oh, and, then, okay. and, then, and, then, uh, and then, so it, Justin Waller shows up. Me and Justin are good friends. I'm staying at Justin's place right now in uh, Midtown. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then, and then afterwards, Justin goes to Reno, does a show with Rolo, 
And then it was just the weirdest thing because Rolo understood these concepts in evolutionary psychology. You guys watch basketball. Evolutionary psychology is the Pablo Bancaro of, of, okay. of, of psychology. Mm -hmm. Like, you know who he is, mm -hmm. but no one knows who Pablo Bancaro is, yeah. but he's awesome. Do you understand, you understand what I'm saying? I, I, don't, I don't know who he is. He's, he's the Mike Collins. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was awesome, but like low-key awesome. Mm -hmm. Evolutionary psychology is like, so I studied physics in college. Physics is a testable model. It, like I can test concepts in physics. Sure. Jo Johannes Kepler was able to look at the motions of planets and then from those observations, Isaac Newton was able to derive the uh, laws of motion and gravity. The uh, evolutionary psychology, like basic psychology, like what Freud was doing, he was like snorting cocaine while he was talking to a 12 year old boy like that. And he was just like, this seems, this seems like the phallic stage. Sounds right. Yeah, he, he was like, that sounds right. It, and yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying Freud, was, Freud was obviously a very smart guy, but my point was it wasn't testable. He wasn't, it was, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I can test the speed of light. It's 186,282 miles a second. But I can't, but the, he there, were shit nice. there, yeah, were, I love it. there were concepts in psychology that nobody was willing to test until Dr. Buss started doing it. Mm. So it was sociobiology before like 1975. And then later on, they started calling it evolutionary psychology. And Dr. Buss does this mammoth study in 1989 with 37 different cultures. And in the, in, in the study, what he does, it's in his book, The Evolution of Desire. In the study, when he, he goes to all these 37 different cultures, they have nothing in common with each other. There's no television, radio, film, nor billboards, no nothing. And what they find in all these cultures is that women prefer men who are taller. Women care more about access resources uh, that, that men have than, than the opposite. Men care more about body count than women. Beauty. Men, men like mm -hmm. are more interested in facial symmetry and signs of youth than women. Uh, men, um, what is it? Men uh, care about a hip to waist ratio of 0 0.2, uh, 0.72 to uh, 1 or 0 0.72. Women care, prefer a male shoulder to waist ratio 1.65 to 1. It's like, how the fuck is all this the same for the Yanomamo tribe in, in, <laughs> in, in the Aztecs or in, in uh, South America and the same for the aboriginals people who live in central Australia and it's the same for the people who live in Norway mm -hmm. and Mexico and Russia and China. How is that possible? And Vegas. <laughs> and Vegas. Yeah. How is that possible? And definitely if, don't if, forget Vegas. If that's a cultural construct, well, that, what does that prove? It proves it's not a cultural construct. Yeah. My necessity, my homosex, my, wow. my heterosexuality, or my sexual, or all of our sexuality is not cultural. It's genetic. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. Now what I'm saying is controversial. Do you understand? I'm supposed to. I'm told that a men wanting to see attractive women is totally cultural. And what we should do is, like for instance, body positivity. We're supposed to oh. look at those overweight women. In, um, in Victoria's Secret, and we're supposed to accept them and find them attractive. It's, it's one thing for us to accept them, it's another thing for us to find them attractive. Mm -hmm. I don't find them attractive. Mm -hmm. But the reason why I don't find them attractive is supposedly because I belong to a patriarchy and because I'm a misogynist. Social construction. But it though. couldn't possibly be because of my genetics. But Dr. Buss proves that it is part of genetics. So now, here's this thing. It's like, again, remember I said the most underrated player in the game? This is like the biggest, most provable secret that's out there. And it's an unbelievably, Proving. unbelievably offensive when you really think about what this means. So I start making my entire podcast about evolutionary psychology, but I'm talking to porn stars, physicists, everyone, and every, every time I bring it back to these concepts, because again, I believe all psychology is a, is a function of, is a derivative of evolutionary psychology, or all psychology is an evolutionary psychology, like Dr. Bell said. And so that's what happens. So he and I start doing the show. That's why we don't kick girls off the show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so we start doing the show, but here's the big difference, right? Look, of course, like, Nobody's a bigger fan of fresh and fit clips than me. I love watching. It's crazy. I know half the girls that they have on the show, the hot ones. Um, we do. We the do. Ones so, that make it to Vegas. So we not do, the ones that don't measure. Yeah, up. you're gonna love Saucecast on Thursday. We, that, we right do. Now. We do a show. We do. So we do Access Vegas, and I'm like, man, I can get legit. I can get four or five playmates on here. Like, it's not gonna be a problem. But I didn't want to do that. I started looking for girls who had master's degrees. Girls who were married and girls who had kids. Yeah. I was trying to get find like a big, a bit more of a test a, a test sample that was yeah. a little bit as n equals approaches infinity, like the central limit theorem. I wanted a, like a, a larger test sample, and so we started doing that. So it would be a strip. If I had a stripper here, then I want a girl with a master's degree here, right? Mm -hmm. And so we started asking That's these questions because a, a, apparently there's good girls and bad girls, which I don't believe in. I believe we're all just a function of our psychology. We've had two. Uh, we've had two Miss Nevadas. On yeah, we have two. We've well. had two Miss Nevadas mm -hmm. on the show. We almost had three. Uh, yeah. Lauren York couldn't show up. <laughs> But like the point was, we so we started doing the show. But here's what makes it so different: these girls will cap, and Myron will be like, oh, "You're capping," and you, but you don't know. You don't know that she might be telling the truth. Not with me. I know every single one of them. I know every one of your <laughs> ex boyfriends. We had a girl come on the show. I'm not kidding. This girl's a real estate agent. She's a real estate agent, and she fucks on Brazzers. 
go look it up. Savannah Storm. <laughs> she does both. She's girl sold so $10 million worth of real estate. She comes on my show and she goes, I'm a sapiosexual. You know, sapiosexual. She's like, I, I prefer men who are intelligent. I'm like, stop it, Savannah. No, Your last two boyfriends no, were a don't. male stripper, no, a male don't. stripper and the be- like one of the best looking like model VIP house <laughs> in the city. And you're telling me you're a fucking sapiosexual. And she goes, you're right. You got me, Michael. <laughs> and so that's what the show was different is that I knew these girls. And in a couple of cases, or a few cases, especially near the beginning, I had dated several of them and I didn't tell anyone. So when the girls were sitting there, like some of the girls would be like, hey, how many of you guys have slept with a guy on a first date? And like some of the girls, I know for a fact you've slept with a guy on a first date. <laughs> they don't raise their hand. Yeah. They don't raise their So that was what made the show different and it's like so yeah. interesting to some people. And the other thing is we just smother the show with statistics. Yeah. We try to use as many stats as possible. Can't refute it. There but, are certain there are certain topics on the show. Like people say, Oh, you guys don't you guys are too soft on the girls. You don't you don't like you know hold their feet to the fire or anything like that. But there are certain topics that we like step on <laughs> immediately. Like when it comes down to like chick crack, right? When it, when it comes to like, oh, oh it's my energy and it's my Brazilian power power crystals and my tarot cards or slam it slam like, that one right I, immediately like how, how, how incredible would it be to like have the privilege to believe that your life is the way it is because of brazilian power crystals <laughs> i'm a fucking man i have to work like i don't have the privilege to believe that the aligned yeah. you understand what i'm saying like yeah. it's just one of these things where i understand that i'm on I, i'm asked to go on podcasts and people want me to work with their business because of the value i bring not because of the day i was fucking born it's not because of astrology <laughs> like i have like dude imagine See, he's already being, worked up just me imagine like bringing this so, shit out another fan <laughs> okay. imagine being so privileged that you could just believe uh-huh. that shit but like the thing is i don't mind if people believe in astrology just work just as long as you work i don't there mind if go. people if you believe in the secret uh, i have a, a guy i watched named tom bill he's the guy who created quest <laughs> the quest bars tom bill yep. used to say oh, wow. i will believe in anything that helps me uh, that w- whatever is functional to help me be a better operator. So if you guys have ever met like a, a really good sales guy, high ticket sales guy, but he he believes in all kinds of superstitions, whatever, bro. If you meet a basketball yeah. player or it's base- working for you, bro. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Stick with it. Baseball yeah. player. If Adolis Garcia hits five home runs in a row, but the guy has like a fucking chicken head hanging in his, in his cloth, <laughs> whatever, bro, you got to believe. My lucky rabbit's foot. Yes. That's fine. Oh, but just oh. keep hitting the home runs. That's yes. all I'm saying. Oh, and so yeah. like, it's just one of these things where like we take objective reality. We start like, this is what we do. Mm-hmm. We have this like, we have this um, core competency that he and I have. Mm-hmm of objective reality where you can't really argue with mm-hmm. us on it. Like 80% of divorces are initiated by women. That's like a really hard, mm-hmm. there's some questions. You should ask some questions. If 80% of divorces mm-hmm. are initiated by women, there's some questions you need to ask from that standpoint. It's like, well, I will have girls come on. They'll be like, well, the reason why is because men are trash. Really? Why are men are trash? Uh, well, because they're leaving these m- women to like do all the work and they're not helping. I was like, okay, mm-hmm. how can we scientifically control for men being trash. What if we take do an experiment with no men? How about that? Then we could control. Mm. So how about this? Lesbian marriages. So we compare lesbian marriages to homosexual <laughs> marriages. Well, who has the higher divorce rate? Anybody want to guess? Lesbians. Lesbians. Yeah. Two yeah. to one. It's a hundred percent more. Facts. Wait a second. Even when women don't have men to blame, they're still leaving marriages. So do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. That's horribly offensive. We I, have a. We have a. Uh, I, I, I like to uh, quote this from. Uh, Dr. Gadsad. He's helping my argument. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I like, <laughs> I, if we the have weapon. like a, if we have like a mission statement, and I think I've said this before, but uh, if we have a mission statement, is this? And I, again, I'm stealing this from Gadsad, but we have an uh, a an obligation to objective truth. That's basically okay. what we say. So when I talk about like the red pill, it's not about a philosophy. It's not about religion. It's not. It's not a. It's not a. It's not, it's not, you know, uh, preaching, it's not teaching, it's not, it's a, it's what, what I call praxeology, okay? Meaning that it is the loose science of why, of behavior, like human behavior, yeah. in that that behavior has some sort of intent or purpose to that behavior, okay? In this case, we talk about intersexual dynamics. That can apply to a lot of things. Economics can be a Literally. praxeology just as anything else. But um, when we talk about the red pill, it's not about, like whenever somebody says, well, the red pill preaches this, or the red pill is their ideology, their philosophy, their whatever, I stop them dead in their tracks right there. I go, you don't know what the red pill is. And I think one of the greatest things, or the biggest the biggest problems right now in the manosphere is like you've got, you got this new sort of, uh, you know, generation ADHD, you know, <laughs> too long, didn't read. Um, they... They, they think that the red pill begins and ends with like Andrew Tate or Kevin Samuels or Fresh and Fit. And it's like, no, dude, it, I've been doing this for 20 plus years now. And it's much bigger than that. And it, it's, and it crosses so many subfields as well. So 
when people ask me, Rolo, can you give me the elevator pitch for the red pill? And I go, well, mm. how long do you have? Because I certainly can't do it in that time. <laughs> Which elevator are but we it's in? Really the are we <laughs> if I was to give you an elevator pitch, I would say it is the praxeology of intersexual dyna human intersexual dynamics. That's really what it boils down to. And then, of course, every that leads into yeah. all these other questions that go along about? with it. Yeah. What are you curious about? So you got to remember, like, just to be me and Mike here, we have to know evolutionary psychology, evolutionary biology. Uh, biochemistry. We have to know neural, you know, your, how your brain on. works, yeah, right? Um, work we is. have to know endocrinology. What about your hormones and everything else? Then there's sociology, anthropology, all this other stuff that goes along with that too. And there's so many different, and I'm not an expert in any of uh, any one particular thing, right? Fooled me. So you have no. to have, you have to have this kind of like encyclopedic knowledge of like, you want to say, oh, he's got all these numbers already, you know, memorized and stuff. Yeah, because we have to, because if you don't, there's always some smart son of a bitch going, well, you didn't know about this study from well, like, like 1941, where this happened here or, and this happened here. Or, or I'm going up against someone who has a has a 10 times bigger following than me. Yeah. And the problem is, like, while you may have that opinion, again, you guys have Brittany Renner on. Like, if I had, if I was talking to Brittany, I would just bring up statistics and then just watch her lose her shit. Like, that's what I would do. Because one of the situations is, like, you have to, you have to be based to start with. And that, that requires you to do some level of research, which most people, it's shocking to me. Like, we don't, I read, no I mean, I'm real reads. talk, like, o on this subject, there's probably 40 good books. You could get through that in a year. And, and it's just like, really specifically on evolutionary psychology, there's probably seven great books on it that you could go through really quick. When, uh, so she, he, he doesn't get along with Pearl. And so Pearl, I had her on my podcast and I said, and I told Pearl straight up, I was like, Pearl, there's seven books. Just read these seven. She hadn't read any of them. I just read these seven books. Like I personally, I have this issue where I don't. So if somebody came to me and they're like, "Hey, man, I want to, I want to have a conversation with you about sales, about like heavy, like high, high ticket sales, all this kind of stuff," and I was like, "Okay, cool. So what do you think about Russell Brunson and Alex Hermosi?" And they were like, "Yeah, I haven't read either one of them." And I'm like, "Well, there's no reason to us to have a conversation because you haven't even done the there's kindergarten." No frame of reference. Someone came to me as like, "Well, you know, I'm big into physics, but I'm not a fan of Isaac Newton." I'm like, "Well, what the fuck are we talking about then?" Like, <laughs> right. you understand what I'm saying? So somebody came to me and they're like, "I want to have a discussion about intersexual dynamics," but I was like, "Okay, so w w which edition of the Evolution of Desire have you read?" I'm like, "I have never read that book." Well, then like, what are we then about? I can't have a conversation. I don't mind having a conversation about dating, but like, do not try to have like this like meta level conversation when you're like you haven't even read the book. And I even get more upset because like, just get the fucking audio book and you can get through his book in like less than a week. Yeah. And then the people who criticize his books and haven't read, read them, the guys, books. I've read Mein Kampf and the uh, the fucking Communist Manifesto. I read books I don't agree with all the time. Just I don't understand the concept. Just listen to the audio book if you have that big of a problem with it. And they won't even do that. They won't even do the work to do that. And so the conversation that we have is much less red meat. And it's much more like here are the... That's the reason why James Sexton like actually... I feel like gravitated towards us mm -hmm. is because we were only interested in an objective Div truth. divorce attorney. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now here's the thing, right? Well, the rest of this space has like, I say I'm red pill adjacent because he is the red pill, right? I'm adjacent. Yeah, to there him. is no yeah. way I'm yeah. saying yeah. I'm he's not, not adjacent. Red pill. He is, he's red pill. <laughs> yeah, that no, will you gotta, never yeah. happen. He's the reddish <laughs> of the pills, right? Like this guy's <laughs> fucking right. Neo right here. Rightfully should have. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. right. All right. So, so here's the thing. Um, so, so I'm living the red. Yeah, yeah, sure you are. Yeah. So, so the issue, the issue with like when we have an, uh, we have uh, uh, what you said, a goal to a, 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 a obligation to an obligation to objective truth. truth. Mm -hmm. right. So as long as long as we do that. So here's the other thing, right? So in the military, we have like the order, the procedure, and the technique. We write this in our, our tech manual. The order is uh, we got to do the order. You're going to get court martialed. The procedure is the thing that, like, for instance, when we fly the airplane, we know, like, for instance, I flew a KC-135. I when I have to get a, like, 131 knots before we rotate. That's S1. That's a procedure. A technique is for me to write it down on my on my uh, checklist. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's three different things. When I for me, it's like this is an actual study. This is an interpretation of the study, and this is my fucking opinion. What works. But I, when it's my opinion, I say it's my opinion. Yeah. When I say 83% of, of women, when they cheat in a marriage, are less satisfied with the marriage, that is not my opinion. There's a study right. that shows that. Right. When and then I say the, same, the men who cheat in a marriage and men who don't cheat have the same level of satisfaction, oh shit, what does that mean? That means when women cheat, they're actually dissatisfied in a marriage. And when men cheat, they just want to get their dick wet. That's actually what it means. But that's my interpretation of it. Yeah. And I'll express it as my interpretation. I, I'm, I try so to make that, that like as clear as I possibly can in my books as, as well. So like when I, when I quote stats or I quote some like dynamic or some phenomenon like that, 
I'll always, I'll, I'll preface it by saying, Hey, look, I'm spitballing here. This is what, this is what I Smart. see. If you have something that you, th if I'm wrong, please tell me I'm wrong. But look, this is the dynamic that we're looking at right now. And in the introduction per, for pretty much damn near every one of my books, I say the same thing, which is I'm connecting dots here. Okay. If you think I'm wrong about this connection between this dot, then I want to know about that. I mean, if you want to tell me I'm a son of a bitch, okay, fine. That's, that's like your opinion, yeah, but man. Then, but, then <laughs> you but, but, but then there's nowhere to go when you say yeah. there's a son of a bitch. Like, the problem is, like, I'm... Rolo does start shit with people on, on uh, Twitter sometimes. Yes, I and I try to not start people shit with anybody. You're going to find someone. But no, for sure. You'll find sure. There's a, there's a, They'll find a, you. There's a, moron oh, yeah. in, there's a moron in Brazil who keeps trying every, every week. <laughs> mm, I'm just, just going to point out, he's made five videos about me, and I made zero about him. I won't even <laughs> say his name. Um, so, so the thing but is, this is going to count as a video for. Him. No, I'm not. I'm not saying his name. Whatever. He can. He can You're he lucky. Can I got way more than five that he's made. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So anyway, the point is, the 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 issue is, we have an, a, an obligation to objective truth, and so in doing so, one of the problems that happens is that you hear this information, and then you come to these realizations. Like for instance, I'm sure both of you guys at some point came to the realization that if all I do is subject myself to everything that women tell me and just listen to what they say and just act like the biggest fucking nice guy, I'm gonna get pushed over by women. Mm -hmm. Some point, I don't even, I, I can look at the two of you and tell, at some point you came to this realization, okay? Absolutely. Right, at some point you have to come to it. There. Right, you have to, but like, <laughs> some point. But then, then, the, then the crazy part is, then you come to the realization, wait a second, when I actually have my own boundaries and I stick to my own boundaries, not only is it not hurting me, it's fucking helping, helping. me. Mm -hmm. They're actually more attracted to me. Yeah. What is going on here, bro? <laughs> I was like, and then and then this, the, then you get into this very dangerous place, he calls it red pill rage. Mm -hmm. You get in this very dangerous place where it's like, wait a second, I believed all this shit it's I was told. Phase. And then now I'm starting to realize, like, I just got laid by the hottest woman I've ever seen in my life because I didn't give a fuck what she had to say to me. Yeah. Wait, what is going on here, dude? Yeah. And now you realize the system is broken and you've been lied to and now you're yeah. angry. Everything is a when lie. Guys, when and guys get into that anger phase, I think that's another thing is that, like a lot of people say that with the red pill, just, it's so, it, it's so, uh, so guys will hate women or those guys must yeah, hate so, women. So that, that's hate, the hate, problem. Hate, hate. Anger, anger, Common. anger. And I'm just like, no, it's like guys go through an anger phase for sure. But it's not anger at women, it's anger at themselves for having yes. like believed what they did for so, so long. long and wasted so much time and so much effort. And it's just like, I can't believe I didn't see it yeah. sooner. Yeah, kind of what thing. is real. And it's so, so I think that a lot of people, I mean, and all guys go through that. They go through that. Like when, when they unplug from the matrix or they take the red mm -hmm. pill, whatever it is. The first heartbreak. Yeah, the, yeah, exactly. Give, give you a who, glimpse. Who hurt you, right? I mean, that's I, that, it, all that is, is just an appeal to emotion. But the... The idea, but it's easy. It's an easy, uh, an easy poke because oh, yeah. guys do get angry, right? They get angry. That's part of uh, the what I call the five stages of, of unplugging, which are so not which are an analogy of the five stages of grief. One of those is anger, and so when guys get into that anger phase, it's not that they're angry at women; it's that they're angry at themselves for having believed what they did for so long, but. When people who are on the outside and they're uninitiated to any of this kind of stuff, they see that and they go, "Oh, look, see, that's this rage. These guys are they're gonna they're gonna be radicals. They're gonna they're gonna hate women and they're gonna like you know drive cars through out. like yoga studios yeah. or some shit like that." And it's like, no, that's 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 not what it's about. It's never been about that. But the thing is, is like it's. I think that one of the problems that people have, the, the biggest problem that most people have with with the red pill is it asks the questions that people really don't want to consider they don't want to contemplate Discuss. for themselves no I mean, of course like the concept yeah. of like you guys being 38 mm -hmm. years old and then being at your sexual peak and having more women be attracted to you but your the girls that you graduated there were seniors I'm and I, I'm at my are you peak. right there you yeah. go he's like that's when the news are getting the most right swipes yeah, yeah, yeah. but but <laughs> but then but then the girls you graduated from high school mm -hmm. with like a lot of them aren't they're 38 their 38 is a very different than your 38 mm -hmm. That's, that's, a, that's a very uncomfortable thing to, to have a discussion with about who's 38 and decided to wait to have kids until she was 38 years old and now is having trouble conceiving or finding a man. Here's, here's the, uh, here, I'll give you an example. This is, again, this will make sense. You guys watch football, basketball, right? Yeah. Okay. You're yeah. All right. Yeah. So you want, you're like, like uh, I'll give you an example. A guy who's young and good, like say, for instance, uh, Patrick Mahomes, he got a 10-year, $500 million contract, Ooh. right? Because he's young. Everybody wanted to commit to him because he's young. I'll give you $50 million a year. That contract is going to look cheap by the end of the contract. They were willing to commit. Mm -hmm. Look at Chris Paul in basketball. Everybody keeps trading his contract because nobody wants to commit to him because he's 35, 36 years old. Ooh. 
Because he's older, even though he's good, nobody wants to commit. When he was younger, they did. This concept is not offensive and makes absolute sense to us. You take the same thing you, you said about women, holy shit. People lose their shit. They lose their mind. How but it, could you? Who gave yeah. you guys a platform? Yeah, exactly, because mm -hmm. they get angry. But the, th the problem is, I'm not saying you have less value to society. But what I am saying is that when we look at Tinder, Bumble, and Hinge, right swipes and left swipes, mm -hmm. you get your most right swipes between the ages of 23 and 25, and men get the most between 38 and 44. That's just an objective wow. fact. How you want mm -hmm. to interpret that is, well, for me, I would say, well, then that means as a woman, you need to be more cognizant of that mm -hmm. fact. What women might say is, then that is the function of a patriarchy that you have created. And mm -hmm. it's partially or because it's of social, the concept. It's, it's partially of the concept that you've created. Yeah. And just to let you know, like none of this is true. And I am big and beautiful. And your heterosexuality <laughs> is just basically a cultural construct. Uh, and if mm -hmm. we just teach you the right things, you'd be more open to being pan, like pansexual and like being polyamorous. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I won't. No, I, I just, I'm not. Like, not gonna have it. My, I'm ready my, to walk out the room right now yeah. you know what I'm saying walk up to my girl but you better not fuck up <laughs> 38 right swipe you know I'm not what I mean? like, swipe on it yeah. right no but look, here's another one uh, I love this one there's a guy have you seen the TikTok with this guy he let, he he one million right swipes and Whoa. went on two dates and had zero sex and he's a pretty average looking guy a girl 6,000 left swipes to go on one date that's on average, mm. 6,000. Mm. Men are on these dating apps to have sex, short-term sexual encounters, some of them just to find anybody, anything so at all. 26% of men under the age of 30 are virgins. So it's like any any set kind of sex they can get, right? Now, he's good with his statistics. Now, he right. says it so quick. Well, it's like, and then the other, he's a pilot. The, the, yeah. the, other, the other part of that, though, is like, I think that when, when, we, when we talk about like the sexual marketplace, like the stats that he's Ooh. talking about right now, you're quantifying things. You're quantifying things that are very personal to people. Yes. Yeah. So when you say, uh, well, you know, because like if you look at my my infamous graph that's in my, my first book where it's like, you know, women's peak sexual market value years is right about 23 years old. I still still abide by that today. And you can see this in so many subfields. Like if it's, you know, uh, Hollywood actresses, when are they at their peak of the performance? Right about there. Um, you could, I mean, there's so many. I, I did that as just sort of a tongue-in-cheek yeah, kind but of it's thing. It's also, but it's also NFL but, running backs. Like, exactly. like, it's just, so it's like, it makes always, sense when it's a, NFL running yeah, backs. There, there's going to be, like, people want to say, oh, well, Rolo, you always talk about the wall. Well, the, the wall is a whole nother, a whole nother animal. But the thing is, is like when you quantify it and you put an age, you put a number on that. And I say, like, guys, your peak sexual market value years, the thing, the time in your life that you're going to be the most, you have your peak potential, assuming you maximize that, it's going to be right around 34 to 38, somewhere in there, maybe 36 mm -hmm. years old. And because at that point you've, you've, you know, made partner in the law firm, you're a surgeon or you've got your business off I the see. ground because the things that make a man maximally attractive are things that take longer to mature and accrue to that guy, as opposed to the 22, 23 year old girl who has, who has the world's her oyster. Now, Myron Gaines talks about it this way. Like women are born with a million dollars. They win the lottery ticket and they've got that million bucks, but they get that when they're 23. Right. And they, they've got to invest that or they've got to do something. You have to use, wow. be a wise steward of their money. They never really are but they have this sexual capital that their their agency is really determined by whatever their sexual value is by me saying those things by me quantifying it and saying it's 23 it's whatever got but well guys are literal minded autistic guys want to say oh see she's 23 i can't wait till she gets you know she yeah. gets to 29 and she's she's, yeah. she's old and crusty and she has no eggs in her but, egg basket but, anymore but the, but, the, but the opposite will happen mm. also is someone like you said charleston white saying there's no alpha males He'll say, I can't believe these guys are saying, no, 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 not these guys. We're using data from Tinder, Bumble, and Hinge in eHarmony. There's a book called Dataclism, mm -hmm. which goes over all these stats. So what you're doing is you need to make it personal about me mm -hmm. because you can't argue with the statistics. Mm -hmm. And you're sure facts. as hell not going to do any research on your that's, own that's to try the, to counter anything I've said. That's the sexual, mar again, that's what I was talking about when you quantify things. You take it out of this sort of romanticized, lovey-dovey, emotional feelings, world. social constructionism. And you say, like women will say, I can't believe those red pill guys talk about sexual market value. Oh my gosh, I can't believe they think it's a marketplace. It's like, no, it is a marketplace. You <laughs> just do don't want to call. But see, yeah. 
the fact that we would quantify things like that, they think we're like egghead, nerd, geeky, stupid people because we're, we're, we're putting a number on these things. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, is you can take that dynamic and use it in any other realm except for that. Yeah. Except okay. for romantic, except for intersexual dynamics because now you're dehumanizing them by putting a number on it. You, she's not a nine, she's a Too 10, brilliant. she's not a four, she's an eight, right? Those kinds of things. Because what you're doing is you're taking the sexual marketplace and you're really, what, what is a marketplace? It's an economy. So that economy is how valuable are you on this particular marketplace at your particular time? Mm -hmm. So when women will say, well, look at me, I'm, I'm in a fitness America pageant winner at 34. Yes, but you at 34 could not compete with yourself when you were 24 because that's when you were at your peak. It's not that you're not hot. You still are. Don't get right. me wrong. You're still a good person. The, the, I'm wall, sure. the wall starts here. It doesn't start here, right? It's yeah, like, would you be able to compete yes. with your 23 year old self at 33? But, but, that's the difference there. But by me saying that, I've brought the romantic, you know, ideal yeah, into numbers, dollars, cents, econ economics, and the sexual markets. Again, it's, it's again. Too brute. It's, it's harsh. Well, it, 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 harsh. It is harsh, but like go back to what you said before. I've met some stunning 34 year old women. The problem is it goes back to what I said before. You know, you're talking about a woman hitting the wall and that's offensive. Mm -hmm. Zeke Elliott hit the wall. He was the quarter running back for the Cowboys. They paid him too much money. So they cut him. Yeah. And you know what we think as Cowboy fans? Probably should have cut him two years ago. Yeah. That's the way we look mm -hmm. at it. And nobody's offended because he's sitting there making $3 million a year working for the, you know, the Patriots. We don't care. That's not how it, we look mm -hmm. at it. But for some reason, that's not offensive. But when we talk about women, it is. And I just don't understand like why we can't just look at this from an economic standpoint. Because if we did, then people would make a lot better decisions. Yes. And then that's essentially where we'd end up because we live in this cold, hard reality. And it, when we keep, how do we just defy the reality? Oh, astrology, karma, fate, destiny. <laughs> oh, I met him because, oh, because he was, his, his chakras were in the yes. right order, whatever. Venus that's was what, aligned with Pluto. Like, well, he, just, he just had good energy. <laughs> Isn't it funny how every dude you think has good energy is six foot three and sells fucking and coke? It Isn't it weird <laughs> how every time abs. the guy has yeah. good energy, he has fucking abs, his name is Brock, he works and he's a male Dales. stripper. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it funny how those are the only ones with the good energy? Like, it's just so crazy when you, like, have these, like, yeah. just basic conversations with people and they just get so livid yeah. when you ever ask the problem. And then the, the situation with women, it's like, I don't want to, when women are like, you, you see some women that are older, maybe overweight, and they're like, that girl's a 10. She has energy like she's a 10. And the thing is, I know some guys in the red pill are like actually offended. They call her delusional. They call her 304, like a hoe, whatever. Yeah. And my thing is, I don't even want to do that. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. you calling yourself, you giving yourself your own value is bad for you. That's the problem. Mm. Does that make sense? It's like, well, just just consider like I don't think any of us can play small forward for the Heat. I'm pretty sure <laughs> that we can't. But the thing is, like, if we could derive our own value because of our own self worth, we'd go out there and be like, "Hey, sorry, you know, sorry, uh, Jimmy, you're stepping over. I'm playing small forward." Yeah. They'd be like, "What the fuck yeah. is wrong with you?" <laughs> Jimmy Butler is playing small. Do you see how he's good and actually has to prove so, himself on a daily basis? One of the things you're talking about, like, though, is. I think a lot of people think that the red pill, like I said, once again, is like some sort of teaching or it's a philosophy or something like that because they want to say, how do I apply this? You can't tell people mm -hmm. just give them data and facts and numbers and, and everything we were just talking about without telling them how to feel about that. Because if you don't right. tell them how to feel about that, they will hate you for it. Yeah, they you will, they will hate me. You didn't. Well, because they want to know wait, why is he, t you cannot just give out n uh, you know numbers and stats to somebody because what the first thing they will say, if you don't tell them like, here's what, well, Here's how you should interpret this. Here's how you should feel about this. If you don't tell them that, they'll make it up for themselves. Uh, and usually it starts with, uh, why is this guy telling me this? Because he wants me to believe this, X, Y. He's trying to challenge my belief, my ego investments, and whatever my beliefs are. And this is the stats that like conflict with that, right? And so when we do stuff like that, we don't tell people like how to feel about it. Because that's we're not here to tell you how to live your life. We're not giving you best practices. We're just showing you here's the dynamics and here's the maybe you're wrong about what you think about how men and women ought to to you know behave with one another. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is it's not meant to do that. It's meant to educate. And that's really what, what this comes down to. When I started uh, Rule Zero, the, the panel show that I'm still part of, almost five years now, um, there's a little byline underneath it, and it says actionable information. And the, that's by Ooh. design, by the way. Because when we're talking about these things, it's not that we're giving you 12 rules for life. We're not giving you some sort of pl you know plan to go from step one to step okay. seven. And number four will surprise you. Yeah. right? Get we're not trying quick. We're not trying to give you some sort of template as to how to live a better life. So when people give, give me this this... 
uh, criticism of the red pill. I said, well, it's long on theory and it's short on answers because you're supposed to come up with the fucking answers, mm-hmm. man. That's because this is on you. All I can do is give you the tools. I can give you the equipment. I can give you the, inf- the actionable yeah. information, but you still have to go and do use this mm-hmm. for what you want. Work. Because I'll tell you this right now, me as a 55 year old white guy from the United States, I am not going to know what your personal situation is if you live in a fishing village on the coast of Chile <laughs> right. or or South Africa or, or Kenya or Turkey. I'm, I, I would be, I would, be, I would not insult people to say that here's seven or twelve rules that are going to make totally yeah, re- change all. your life. It's like one size fits all. It's like that's bullshit. And anybody who tells you that they have some plan for you like that is trying to sell you exactly. something. Yes. So. Right. When I when I throw this out there, people really want show me how to live, give me some sort of you know some sort of plan, show you, show me the way, hold my hand through life, so that I have something like you have. And I would not, I would not insult the people who read my books by by offering them something like that. I don't want Tomasi men. I want you to be your own guy. And the biggest compliment to me that is not like you know trophies or accolades or anything on my shelf is that I want to see what you built with this. You took this information and you went from being this to being something greater because you were educated and you had that equipment. That's way, that's way better to me. And so when people say, well, you don't give us any suggestions, you don't give us any prescriptions, like you're goddamn right I don't. Because if I do, you'll crucify you were the, me well, in and the, tell me it didn't work. At the end of my fifth book, which is Player's Handbook, I, I pointed out like this. I can give you, I can give you, a, uh, you are the canvas and I can give you paints and I can give you brushes and I can give you palette nice and I can give you an easel and I can give you all this good shit. But in the end, you're the one that has to put the picture on the fucking, on the, on the, the canvas. It's you are the artist of your own life and you have to construct that. Now that's just how me as being an artist would like, you know, illustrate Explain this, but it, it yeah. could be something else. And so whenever I get people who are like, even my DMS or they'll email me, they go, Rolo, I was like this, I was a piece of shit. And now I have got, now I have this as a result of reading your books and you, you know, the information that you gave me, because a lot of times people will tell me the number one thing that people tell me is Rola. I always knew this shit, but I'd never had the work. I couldn't put it into words. I couldn't articulate yeah, it. That's how I felt. And so, so by articulating it and giving it to them, then they understand it. They it's interpret it. And they, yeah, they, they uh, internalize it and they can change their life as a result of that. So that, and that, uh, that I think is the beauty of it because uh, again, my introduction to my books, I said this is like, I'm not in the business of making men better men. I'm in the business of men making themselves better men because I've given them actionable information so that they can do that. Everything that you're saying ties in perfectly with obligation to objective truth. Yes. Okay. It's just saying it's removing you almost from mm-hmm. it a little bit and saying like, yeah. you but don't you're the me. one who has well, to do it. yourself. Well, look, at the, look at the facts. It, mm-hmm. it, similar to addiction. Yeah. I can give you the information. I can give you the resources. I can put you in a room for 30 days, yeah. mm-hmm. but if you don't want to be sober, you're not going to be sober. It, exactly. At the end of the day. But, but just consider this, right? The double standard is what makes it different. Like, well, why can men do it? And I can't, and women can't do it. Like for instance, mm. there's, there's objectionable studies and objectionable. There's objective studies that show that as women have more sexual partners before they're married, they're more likely to cheat in a relationship. This is like, this is, it, the thing is, like, how could you possibly have believed right. it? Uh, so, so let's, uh-huh. can we say it again? Yeah. So, <laughs> so again, the GSS survey where it basically shows that on average, they, they surveyed anonymously thousands of people. Actually, I think it was like 750 couples, something like that. They surveyed these people and they said, if you cheated, remember, it's anonymous. They're more likely to tell the truth. Mm-hmm. About 30% of the women admitted to cheating. So then they went and said, what was your body count before you got married? And then they looked at the women who didn't cheat. What was your body count before you got married? For women who did cheat, it was like 8.9. They'd had sex with 8.9 partners before they got married and women who didn't cheat it was about like 3.2 all right so there's that's that's mm. forget 3.2 and 8.9 that means there's over a 200 percent increase in bodies for women who cheated versus women who didn't cheat you cannot say that's not a correlation that's at least something to look mm. into now no one in their right mind is going to look into this there is no university in the country that is going to do a survey that proves that as women have more sexual partners, that they're more likely to cheat in a relationship, they would be defunded in two seconds. Yeah. Quickly. And, I, and here's another Swiftly. piece of proof. If there was a single study out there that showed a neutral or positive correlation between mm-hmm. women staying in a marriage and having more sexual partners, if you publish that study, you would instantly win the Nobel Prize in psychology. Uh-huh. Without review, you would 
instantly win the Nobel Prize. If there was a study that showed women who had more than 20 sexual partners were be made better wives, that would immediately, that would be funded. There Push would be the a Berkeley, it. Stanford, yeah, Harvard, yeah, everyone yeah, would be doing studies. Of, but the problem is no one even wants to delve into this because if you do, you you know what the answer is going to be. So now I have an actual, like a, now I can actually say you shouldn't marry a woman with a high body count and you can't call me a misogynist because I have numbers to show this. Oh fuck! What does that mean, <laughs> bro? Do you understand what that means? No more, no more How bad life. that is! Like uh -huh. that, you can't sit there and just judge? call me these names. Like you actually have to objectively deal you. with this reality. And I have men who are like super offended by this concept. And the thing is, if I tell a woman that this is the case, and then I start explaining things like, well, it might have something to do with your endocrine system. It might actually have to something to do with neurochemicals. You're not able to bond as well if you've had more sexual partners, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If I'm able to do that, am I telling you these things because I don't like you? Or because I do. Do you understand the, the point is like, I, the thing is I love women probably more than men. Most of my friends are females. <laughs> like well, I have more female friends than guy friends at this point, just cause I, I host all these bikini competitions right, and pageants. Yeah, yeah. I have so many female friends. I love them. And if in hmm. loving, if I had a daughter, do you think if I told my daughter, Hey, just to let you know, if you, if you, you know, you go to college and you, you have a 50 body count, it's going to be harder for you to find a husband. Do, am I way. telling her that because I don't love her or because I do love her? Do you guys understand? Like that's hmm. where the confusion comes. And so now I have this objectionable scientific reason for women to have fewer sexual partners before they get married. And by the way, if you don't, here's the other thing, right? Mm. There's women who hear this and they're like angry about it. And I, and I talk to the women, I'm like, you don't want to get married anyway. Right, what is the marriage rate? It's six per right. six women per one thousand are actually mm -hmm. getting married. Like you don't want to get married anyway. So like again, I it, love it, I love it when we do when we do Access Vegas and we have the, all the all the girls on there. The first thing like this has been the case since since show number one. We'll have guys in the comments saying, "I would never marry any of these girls. They're all unmarriageable. They're all plastic. Yeah, right. They have big giant you know fake boobies and and lips yeah, that look right. like Kim Kardashian." Two thumbs and, up. And they will just hey, I'm, I'm like, well. If you're against marriage in the first place, why the like, why fuck do you care? Like, like, why do you care? Who cares? Exactly, that's a good, and, and the Actually, way, they're probably the best ones that you could get. Let, let, me, let me say something else. Let me say something else. So there's this other thing that happens in, the, in these type of discussions where the, the guys like get a fucking hard on thinking about, oh, these women are going to be 40 and they're going to be all unhappy and everything. Yeah, get I don't them, get want, them. I don't want them to be unhappy. I want women to be happy, right? So that's why I'm saying this. But I have bad news for those guys. Like, seriously, if you think that revenge is going to step in and karma is going to step in and the girl who cheated on you is going to somehow like have a, a terrible life. I got something. <laughs> the only thing that's bigger than the OnlyFans like 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 virtual like prostitute economy, the only thing that's running bigger than that is the simp, simp economy. economy. The simp economy mm -hmm. is outrunning it. Because you if you have the number of men in the future who are going to be virgins at the age of 30 is going to fucking skyrocket. Wow. There is all there is going to be a plentitude of simps to save these women when they're 35. Don't get it twisted. I don't care how mad that makes you. There is going to be a plethora of beta male. Oh, I, I shouldn't use that term. Sorry, Charleston White. A, <laughs> no, a, get back to a that plethora too. of no. beta males to save these women. And it's just going to increase over time because we, oh. we're not it's like when you hear old people like well, get off your phones and get away from the social media and get back into the real world the real world includes social media granddad i'm sorry to be the one to tell you this and like dudes who are on social media and actually good on social media are having like again zero sexual partners the top bottom 26 percent the average guy in north america i think is like five or six sexual partners and once you get a bunch above the top five percent it's 150 sexual partners so the scale looks like this i got news for you these guys right here are all fucking stunning on instagram i guarantee you all they, they, they are they do not care about they you do, they don't care about you they don't care about this argument they're There's, taking your girl they're no, fucking just, her in miami they don't give hello. a shit bro she's not the she's it's it's future future is literally sitting there telling you guys it's sensational. Like he's telling you, <laughs> she belonged to the streets. She's, yeah, te yeah, yeah. he's telling you, know you. he's Is there it? fucking these women. He's telling you what's going this on. What's going Are on. you yeah. listening? He was just on a call with with like his private group, and we were talking about like the simp economy versus like the OnlyFans girls economy. Because remember, we talk about sexual marketplace. We talk about it in terms of of economics, right? And then you're talking about you know the simp economy is actually bigger than the than the only chance. Well, I, I hope I'm quoting this right, but I think it was Warren Buffett who said something like the market can stay chaotic longer than you can stay solvent. Yes, yeah, it's exactly yeah. the same Bro, dynamic. It's so crazy. Like, like the simps 
can stay they, they can stay chaotic yeah. forever and you you're never going to remain solvent because, you're never going to you're because gonna here's outlast the, here's it. the problem on this is the reason why we do our mm-hmm. show that's different here are two different concepts this is the concept of getting six pack abs making an outrageous amount of money and dating the most beautiful woman you've ever seen in your life being happy inside and out and living a fulfilling life and then having children and offspring and generational wealth to leave to them and having buildings named after you that's this side this is success mm-hmm. this side right here is calling women 304 delusional hoes I can't believe you cheated on your man you're a dumb hoe whatever now here's the thing this side right here I'm guilty of watching this shit I'm just as <laughs> yeah, guilty as anybody us, we're gonna and, see it tomorrow and, <laughs> and to be, it's, it's fast. To be <laughs> fair yeah. this stuff right here for a guy who has no experience this shit is really fucking useful but I'm only interested in this I'm yeah. only interested mm-hmm. in this. I'm only interested in your approval, not the destruction of your ex who cheated on you. I'm only interested mm-hmm. in men uplifting themselves. Mm-hmm. And because of that, it because I have to give you these old, ugly truths to tell you these things, honey, like honestly, the probably the reason why he broke up with you is because you put on a little bit of weight. Women don't want to hear this and their friends are the last people to tell them. Again, you get cheated on and what does your mom tell you? You're a special snowflake and she didn't realize what she had and she's, she's too good for you. Really? Because she's in a fucking yacht in Biscayne, <laughs> she doesn't. She's not thinking about me at all. Like I don't really like these hard truths. She she, she chose another dude. Yes, we, yes, she was a slut for sure. But like the thing is, there's still things that you can improve. Every single, every time a girl cheats on you, she's doing you a favor. Every time a guy leaves your company, Ooh, he's doing yeah. you a favor. Amen. Like you just have to look at it from that standpoint. And like again, I I, I love sports references. Victor Wembanyama, first pick in the draft. He's like seven four. The kids got pull up J three point shot blocking every shot. The kid's incredible. When he looks at all the other players in the NBA, does he sit there and he, is he jealous of them? Or does he say, man, I am going to beat the shit. You remember when Shaq came in? I was watching the NBA Jam right here, 93. Shaq came in in 93. We played for Orlando. They went from like 19 wins to 41 wins in like one year. And he was punching on every... He had a, yep. he had a game one time with Scott Skiles where he had 10 blocks in a game. Just incredible. Do you think he looked at all these other players and he was like, I'm so jealous. Or did he think, I'm going to get better and I'm going to destroy yeah, these people? Which mm-hmm. he did. Every time you see someone on social media doing better, think I am going this is so exciting I have the ability to get better and do Mm -hmm. these things don't look at them with these things with jealousy when you do that, find a cohort of men who are doing better than you and learn from them. you guys. I'll tell you somebody you absolutely Mentorship. should have on your show is Wes Watson. You guys know Wes Watson is no. 10 years, uh, did, did 10 years for attempted murder, got out. The guy's making 3 million a month doing a, like coaching, Ooh. like a uh, fitness coaching. Mm-hmm. Oh, he has no sales team. He's the guy's incredible. One of the best yeah. motivational speakers I've ever seen. He has the most outrageous videos. He t- really teaches you the like how uh, Wes, Wes Watson, Watson. Okay. Wes yeah. Watson. He just moved to Miami. Anyway, I go to dinner sometimes. I'll be like, let's say Wes Watson's there. My buddy Dan Fleischman is there. Uh, it doesn't matter who these guys are, but the, what I'm saying is they're hyper successful. When the bill comes, what do you think happens? They're racing to pay the bill. Yeah. Nobody, <laughs> nobody's like, no, no, I got the, no, no. They're get up and go to the bathroom and like pay the bill before they even get back. So here I am sitting at dinner with these guys. Some of them were worth a hunt. Ty Lopez will be at dinner, $100 million. And I'm sitting with these guys. And while I'm sitting with them, they're fighting to pay for this meal that I can't even pay for if I wanted to. (laughs) And they're talking about concepts across the table. Each one of these concepts could make me millions of dollars if I would just shut the fuck up and listen. This is what it's like at the top if you really want to succeed. I do a clips channel now because of Rolo. Like Mm -hmm. I, like there's so many, I do live streams now because I learned from Myron and Fresh. Like I learn from people who are better than me. I don't concern myself if my ex cheated, whatever, this girl rejected Mm -hmm. me, whatever the fuck. I'm only concerned with bench press max, more money in the bank account, lower body fat percentage. Tangible results. What are the 45 books I read this year? That is all I fucking care about. And when you do that, you will notice a discernible uh, improvement and you're so focused on that. And while you're doing that, this crazy thing happens. This girl hits you up in your DMs who, who, who fucking ghosted you before. And oh, she goes, happened. how, how you, you been? Doing? I've it's been al- a long time. I've always had a crush on you. No, the fuck you haven't. Yeah. I've always had a crush on you. Oh, I've always thought you were cute, blah, 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 all this kind of stuff. Watch when it happens. And then the problem is you go right back to step one and you kind of like lose respect for women. I was like, oh, this is all I had to do? This is you. I thought I was, because I was a special snowflake. I thought I went to church and they told me God had someone waiting for me. And now I'm saying, Sitting in and all of a sudden I just ignored you and now women are paying attention to me because yeah, I'm successful. That, like that's change. all that happened. It's yeah. crazy, man. Well, I liked what you were saying about before about the uh, the fact that there's a, the guys on one. There's there's 
part of the Red Pill audience is always going to be the guys who want blood sports. Yeah. They're always going to be the guys who want to see like Myron kick these bitches off the show. Right? Yeah. Ah, finally, <laughs> we got her. Those are the highest view, viewed shows. There always will be. True. It's it's bread and circuses, and those guys are there for one reason. They're there to see the car wreck because they 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 want to live vicariously through Myron to kick these girls off because they would never be able to do that in their real lives. Never. And they love that. Okay, I'm not saying that that's. I mean, that's certainly well, they, a good business. They wanted been us, a good business they model for a long to time. Beat Brittany yeah. Renner's ass. But, that, but see here, yeah, or you know, the Brittany yeah. Renner thing, or whatever. That's there's always going to be that want for red meat, and I, I talk is sizzle and steak, right? You got you can't have the steak without the sizzle, right? So, but the problem is, is then it becomes nothing but sizzle all the time without any like real nutritional value, like is what I try to talk about. So when you've got when you've got the guys who are like that, and then you the other guys that you're talking to who really benefit from this. Those are the guys who may have been, you know, ready to self-delete. They get this information, and now they're not going to because that's where the real work gets done. I, my wife wasn't having sex with me. Now she is. Now I, 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 was, uh, I, I was a divorcee. I didn't have my kids. Now I have my kids, and I'm, I'm back in the dating pool because at, at 45, and I'm not going to be a statistic, right? Wow. Um, so that's where the real work happens, and I think that the, one of the biggest problems in the red pill in the manosphere space right now is there's that good side of it right there where it's like we're save, literally saving guys' lives. We're benefiting them. They're building something. Something and they're making creating something more and then there's the guys who are like you know oh i can't wait to yeah, get her get her get her get off the show ha ha you guys are too weak you guys don't like you don't you don't call these bitches out bro. you need to kick them off the show bro, bro. We there's had- always going to be that but and so the problem is, is like the guys who really need the nutritional value they really need the steak and not the sizzle mm-hmm. the problem is is then they get dissuaded to even oh, well i don't want to be part of that that is it's all about yeah. pearl and andrew tate and and it's all about this kind of shit where where's the real where's the real substance to this and they have to you really have to want it you have to go hunting for that and right. like i said that's another reason why what our charter i guess for lack of a better term is an you know a, an obligation to objective truth because we're i'm more interested in the guy who can build themselves up with the actionable information that we have mm. as opposed to bread and circuses and, and blood sports. Although I will say that, that, that has, Certainly, you have yeah. to have, you've got to have some sizzle there, <laughs> but there has to be nutritional value. There has to be like, I, yeah. I, I said that, you know, if you're going to give a dog a pill, right, you got to put it, you got to have the, the cheese, cheese and you got to put the pill in the, the cheese, horse. right? <laughs> so the, the, the pill is like the red pill, but it's got to be in the cheese. Otherwise the dog doesn't eat, doesn't yeah, want to eat it, its it, pills. It, it's it, 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 all, all my, all my content, mm-hmm. like all my advertising, it's just me talking about high status networking. We don't even talk about dating. And then all the, just me with tons of girls. And the girls are always mm-hmm. facing me, yeah. touching me. I'm never touching the girls in all the in all the videos we do. And so I sell them what they want and then teach them what they need. Right. Welcome right. to my course. You Sizzle signed up. Steak. Let's get it. It's US military training camp, buddy. Yeah, like and that's yeah. the thing. Like that's what you have to do because a lot of them don't want to hear it. Now, here's the thing. Myron Gaines owns 16 houses. Six Teen houses. To me, that is the most interesting. That is incredible. I was asking him questions because I want to get into real estate. But when he does videos on real estate, they don't do as well as when he kick Frank Castle's girls off the, the show. Mm-hmm. So he has an incentive to do this. And that's kind of the place that you got kind of get put in. And it makes it very Did difficult. You say that- so he Frank Castles. Frank Castle means he kicks girls kicks off, the off the show. He kicks Frank off. Castle like yeah. Punisher. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm exactly. like, all right, yeah, because yeah. I haven't heard his name in a while. I'm like, yeah. I like that a lot. Yeah. 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 So, so he he'll, he'll kick him off the show, right? And so it, you're just incentivized. Now, here's the thing. Let's look at it the other way. Like, uh, you guys ever watch Home Math? You guys should watch Home Math. He's ter- you, have you watched some Home Math? Is, yeah, is it's that, on YouTube. It's terrific. He, is that he makes real, it, huh? real estate. Is that about? No, no. Home Math is like about literally about the economic ho, like H O E. Home Math. Hoflation. Hoflation. Like like that. Anyways, it's really great YouTube channel. Um, and he, he talks about these different concepts. Uh, anyway, I forgot what I was, what I was talking about. But like go, going back to the, yeah, going back to the, the, the idea is like you have these concepts that are, oh yeah, I remember what he's saying. He's saying like there's, it, I love the way he describes it. It's like there's different levels of thinking. There's one level of thinking is I'm good, you're bad, fuck you, let's fight. And then there's another level of thinking as I'm good, uh, you know, you're bad. And then one of these things as well, you know, I'm probably believe this way because this is where I'm from. So I'm a Protestant from Texas and you, you know, you're from New York and therefore I am a, Rangers fan and you're a Yankees fan. Okay. So like that, that, okay. So I kind of understand and it would be kind of weird if you were from New York and you were a Rangers fan. So I kind of get that. And then there's another level. It's like, well, I kind of understand where your aggression comes from and my aggression comes from. And then you finally get to a level, like we're kind of all the same people. We're a function of of evolution in our psychology. And like, we really shouldn't, we should kind of get along. And that's what, what you should do. So like, again, with women, it's like, okay, women, do women unconditionally love men? 
Well, that, that doesn't make sense. Women should unconditionally love my child. If I have a child mm. with a woman and she's gonna push one of us out of the way so because there's a train coming, push me in the way of the train so that to save the child. Right. That makes sense to me. My genetics get passed on. So unconditional love should be reserved for the child. That makes sense. I don't understand why that's a problem. Mm. And so that's very difficult for people. For me though, where's the unconditional love? When, the, when someone breaks into the house, I'm the one who gets the shotgun. I'm the one who goes there and risks my life. Mm -hmm. the again, the unconditional love is coming from me towards the family, not from my, my wife. And so that's very offensive to people. They don't like this concept. They don't, they don't grasp it. But if the child isn't there? What do you mean? Mm -hmm. If there is no child, it's just you and the woman. So, so the thing is, it's all conditional. Like the, the problem is when you say unconditional love, it's a fun thing to talk about. If my girlfriend cheats on me, guys, I'm going to break up with her. I just got bad news. And I've told her this. I'm like, that's like I love you. This is great, yeah. but that's a condition. Like, just so, clear, mm -hmm. just so we're clear, just so we're clear. By the way, if any of you are in a girl have a girlfriend and your girlfriend attacked your mom, you'd probably break up with her. Like there are, I'm sorry guys, there are conditions. If someone took your child away, there are, you can sit there and make up all this bullshit about, there's always conditions. It is always fucking conditional. The only unconditional thing I've ever seen is a mother loving her child. That makes sense to me. That part is unconditional and it should be because if it wasn't, then the species would have died off 60,000 years ago. Yeah. You have to have this irrational belief where women will do anything. I'll do anything to get my son into this preschool. My son is smart. They have this irrational thing to like mm -hmm. to uplift their child. That makes sense, right? Yeah. So Talk, if I understand talking. that these concepts uh, uh, believe, uh, exist in evolution, then the concept of a woman wanting to have the best mate she probably she possibly can, a better mate, hyper gammy, that's what it means, right? About like women doing better, then that means that her necessity to leave one man for another or maybe cheat or monkey branch or whatever, it is a function of, of her evolution, just like me wanting to have some, several sexual partners as a function of my evolution. So therefore I can't blame her for it. Mm. And so having that understanding makes me, like having that higher level understanding, we shouldn't hate women. It is a function of evolution. I am very glad that women have con unconditional love for a child, but not, not necessarily have it for me. Mm -hmm. And when you think about it throughout history, men were the disposable race. If you go look at, or disposable gender. If you go look into the anthropological record, you find skeletons and these skeletons of men are destroyed. They're, they have ax wounds and broken ribs and cr crushed in skulls. When they arrows at, to the knee. Yeah, arrows to the knee. When you, when you see skeletons <laughs> of females, they they are pristine. When you find anthropological records of females, they were always pristine because that we never, like women were not the disposable sex, we were. So if you were to consider this, you lived in a, a like the 15th century, then all of a sudden a Genghis Khan and his horde comes in, Kulia Khan, whatever, they come in and they murder all the men there and then they take the woman. You're a woman, you have two choices. I either sit there and mourn my husband who just died in front of me and I die, or I take a new husband. Yeah. So, so evolutionarily, which one of the two genders gets over yeah. breakups quicker? Yeah, Anybody it's, think it's, about it? Uh, it's called it's a, women. It's, it's a war bride's dynamic. But it's, is a, what it is. But, it, but it's an evolutionary adaptation to get over that. Again, people yeah. are listening to me like I'm theorizing this. This is reality. Mm -hmm. Throughout history, tribes of men would kill other tribes of men and spare the women, women. and take them. Please mm -hmm. read the Old Testaments when the Old Testament when the Israelites killed the Mal Malachites, the fucking Jezebites, and the Canaanites, and they took the virgin women for their Spoils. own. This is what they did. And so when you come to this concept, just like, well, you know, it sucks that like, you know, she cheated on me and she already has like a new boyfriend or whatever. And you're like, well, no, she has an adaptation to do so. That's where it came from. That's, how That's how, that because if she didn't, then what happens is wow. while a woman sits there and watches her, her, her husband who's dead and she may mourn him, if she decides to not take a new husband, then she dies and her genetics don't get passed on as noble as she was. But if she decides to take a new husband, as skanky as that sounds, <laughs> her genetics get passed on. Yeah. And so she's an evolutionary winner versus a loser. And then so that thing gets passed on. And so now what happens is, wow. Now these women are like, well, I don't want that to happen again. So I want to pick the ma I want to pick the man who's like less likely to die. So I'm going to pick the broad broader shoulders, the oh, tallest guy, the one right. with the strongest jawline, the one who has like again the reason why tattoos look way more attractive on the men high than they value man, exactly the high value there alpha he, male, the high value yeah, alpha somebody male. Somebody on the show recently <laughs> said, said that it doesn't exist. But again, what he's, what he's getting into, too. what he's got. I mean, we can get to that if you want. To. I think that'd probably be a good a good segue into that. Yeah. But the uh, no, the the fact of the matter is, is like men must become and women just are. That's I, 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 We want to talk about red pill principle. There you go. Men have a burden of performance, meaning that you will, like men think higher. We build societies, we, we organize so, uh, societies uh, from a hierarchy, whereas women tend to do it in the round. They tend to do it more communitarian. So women tend to adopt more um, uh, egalitarian style of uh, uh, you know, politics, uh, social structures, things like that. So it's, it's, uh, 
again, because women being the vulnerable sex, whereas men being the disposable sex, uh, men tend to deal in hierarchies. There's the guy, I'm going to ruin the chain of command because I don't know this, but you got like the admiral and you got the sergeant and you go all the way down to the chain of command, all the way down to the private, right? Then you got the CEO all the way down to the guy who's the janitor. So you've got the, the, so men tend to organize societies based on ideally merit hierarchies whereas women when women come into social power they tend to take it and put it into a communitarian style now it's not to say that women don't compete with other women they do but they do it from within the collective as opposed to men want to get a step up they've got to defeat the guy they got to defeat the final boss Mm -hmm. at the end of that even even video games right are still based on okay i gotta go through these guys before i get to the final boss and then i beat the game right that's a hierarchy that is gotta get a fat arrest yeah that's a exactly so how do so and it just depends like I, I talk to these guys who say I, we're rollo I'm not really competitive blah, blah blah I go I bet you are I bet you can play chess and you kick ass at it I bet you play this video game or you play Call of Duty and you get real competitive in that Grand Theft Auto you get real competitive in those things the it's things that you, you. That, that you like that com- competition yeah. is there. It's, there it's just like you don't want to see it because you're like the desire the want to win is something that guys are innately as part of our, our psyches is we got to be able to excel in something, and it doesn't necessarily have to be like fighting. It could be, uh, it could be, uh, hey, I'm a better mathematician than this guy is. Yeah. There's that want to be better than whatever your peer group is, and that's because men tend to see things in hierarchies, and women t- tend to organize things so, in the so, round. So right. let's listen, consider what he just and said. And therefore, there has to be an alpha, the beta, the okay. delta, so, the omega, yeah. the gamma, the oh, because, the sigma's outside of it. No, it's not really because, because yeah. there's a hierarchy. So now, now consider this, right? Yeah. Consider this concept. We have two genders and one of the gender what like the men they want access to the women for reproductive access and they just everything like when you consider like a man's desires so many of them are based around access to women right they're like so many we mm. literally women being the pickier of the two genders is the reason why we built buildings you know solve sudoku <laughs> survival and reproduction are really the base the base drives for, sure. drives for so, men so let, let's consider well, that women. So, so if men are going to do things to compete with other men in order to get access to women and women women need like they they value these men who are more competitive and more successful so we have we have a species we have a gender of men who are rewarded with sexual access for being more successful for being more aggressive for being more competitive and for being more competent of course there's a patriarchy you reward the men who are the most competitive with the most sexual access which means you're going to force an entire gender through millions of years of evolution to be more competitive that's the reason why we have 17 Mm -hmm. times as much testosterone as women do so as doing so now we have a gen now in a vacuum we have one gender full of women who have a a testosterone level let's say between 60 and 100 and men are like 800 900 of course we're going to be more assertive and in these fields you're you're going to see men dominate in fields like you know law enforcement or you know politics or whatever these where, different where fields you have to be and, assertive. And, but but where you have to be assertive and you have to be competitive you're rewarding men for being competitive and then complaining that there's a patriarchy like do you understand the mm. problem here like it doesn't make any sense you yeah. like again you they, their whole purpose in life to survive and replicate is to get access to you and you're only giving access to the men who are capable, who are the most capable and competent and mm. the, those things make them more successful in pa- society. Patriarchy is the natural outcome of it, how yes. we evolve. It's, uh, it's understand what he said. He, said, he didn't say it was, good or, bad. Didn't he say said, it was good or bad. He said good or bad. He said it was a natural outcome. That is the truth. Oof. It is a natural outcome. That's what happens. So when you have that, that whole situation, then people are like, oh, well, you know, the whole reason that there's strip clubs and the whole reason there's pornography is for the subjugation of women. And I'm like, then why are there gay strip clubs? Why is there gay porn then? It doesn't make any sense. No, it's there because part of us, it's that dog in it. You know how competitive Michael Jordan and, and Tiger Woods were. And they also cheated on their wives. Do you remember that? It's that, that fucking dog. Oh, it's remember. that psychopath well, it's that's a, in there. If you look at Patra, if you look in its most idealized sense, okay, I'm not saying you take away all the horrible things, like the, the, the exploits that could come from patriarchy, because that's the first thing that feminists will want to say is like, well, this is why patriarchy is bad. It's tyranny. And it's like, no, you're talking about androcentrism. That's a whole nother thing. When you talk about patriarchy, patriarchy in its ideal sense is a much more balanced system than feminism ever will be. Because patriarchy still implies that a man has the responsibility to take care of his kids, to take care of his wife, Mm -hmm. to take care of his community. Because you, you have this masculine duty, this patriarchal masculine responsibility to do these things. 
The problem is, is there also, at least in an idealized sense, is there's an authority that's implied in patriarch that says, if I have these responsibilities, then I need this authority to affect those responsibilities. Yeah. So it's a much more, so guys who are not responsible for their kids, guys who, who slack off, guys who, who don't live up to their patriarchal, you know, masculine responsibilities, they're still going to be you know ridiculed they're still going to be lambasted they're still going to be criticized for doing those things but the thing is is they still have in an idealized sense they still have that authority the problem is right now when we look at patriarchy we only look at it from the terms of like it's tyranny that it's going to be something that that is meant to crush the poor little souls of women right the problem with that idea is that today we have all of these responsibilities. This is under feminism or gynocentrism. Men have 100% responsibility and 0% authority to affect that. So every time people, like especially like traditional conservatives, come at me and they say, well, we're going to save the West because we need guys to man up and take more responsibility. And you got to be, a, a, you got to get a, a good job and you got to get a, a, a good education and you've got to be a, a leader at your church and in the business and in your community and everything else. And it's like leader, leader, leader. The problem is, is whenever we talk about leadership, when it comes to masculinity, that's a hierarchy. We're still so talking about If you're a leader, still. that means you're at the top of a hierarchy of guys who are beneath you, okay? There's no equality. There's no egalitarianism when you're, when you're expected to be the leader. The problem with it is you got this leader who doesn't have the authority to affect the responsibilities that we expect that leader to take care of. Right. So we got this guy who's got 100% responsibility and 0% authority. That's the definition of slavery, so if you have 100% authority and 0% responsibility, that's the definition of tyranny. So when we say, when, when, uh, when people come at me and they start talking about like uh, traditional values, this, and we're going to see more of this, by the way, in the election cycle, in the, in the 2024 election cycle, whenever, whenever conservatives come at me, I throw that, that argument out and they got nothing to say about that. There's no coming back from that whatsoever. So, Did you want to? Do you want to talk about, yeah, about no, Charleston? You know, no, I, I, I honestly don't, uh, uh-huh. um, because it's really not needed. I mm-hmm. think th- this is the first time you, you, you motherfuckers are good. <laughs> right? We've been this, doing this, this a while. Is, this is no. the first time that me and him we shut the fuck up. Uh, we, we've been we've been super quiet, just kind of, and you know, laying and sitting there sending me messages. Let's talk about this. I'm enjoying it. Well, like when we talk about like like we, I think the the topic was like you know what's a high value man, and people are coming at me that yep. you know recently. And I think that the the problem we have with like what is high value is because we're still talking about masculine responsibilities. Mm-hmm. What is it? Should you have? Should you have a hundred thousand dollars in the bank? You know, should you have a Lambo? Should you have like yeah, access to hot bitches and and whatever it is. The thing is, I, I break it down this way. A high-value guy is the guy that other men want to be and other women want to fuck. That's pretty much what it comes to. Everything else mm. is context from there. So you can say, well, I want to be the guy who has, uh, who's draped across a Lamborghini, goes to yacht parties, he's making you know, uh, $3 million a year, and he's got you know, a roster of five or six really hot supermodels. Okay, so is that a high-value man? In some context, it could be Dan Bilzerian. Is Dan Bilzerian a high-value man? Okay, there's other there's another uh, f- you know school of thought that says no, you have to be married and you have to have five kids, Pick up the kids. and they all ha- and you have to have another on the way and you have to be yeah, you, everybody's you, definition have reproduce of definitely yeah but with essentially what it comes down to the high value guy and this is uh, I got, I'm getting this straight out of like uh, Dr. Hector Garcia's book uh, Alpha God three things have defined high value powerful men throughout history. And that has been resources, money, whatever, you know, Mm -hmm. um, territory that you're the space that you have and then access to beautiful, preferably virginic, but like beautiful, young, fertile women. So that's been true for like, uh, you know, Egyptian pharaohs and, you know, the the Caesars and um, dynastic emperors of China and the Forbidden City to tribesmen in the in the amazon rainforest they all have those three things in common which by the way most primates have in common as well so it could be chimps and gorillas bonobos whatever it's the same thing the alpha male of that of that you know troop of monkeys or whatever he, he they protect territory they have access to resources within that territory and he has access to a harem a harem yeah. of of <laughs> of fertile you know female monkeys right Sim- very simple, similar to that. So when we're talking about what's a high value man, 
he's the guy that other men want to be and other women want to have sex with and reproduce with. Now, how that, how that plays out to the guy in the fishing village in the coast of Chile might be a whole lot different than the guy who's in Miami or in, in Brickell right now or in yeah. Las Vegas. It just depends on what the context happens to be for what that guy happens to find himself in. What ecosystem you're yes. in, really. more or less. I think so here's the of, real questions I want to get to, right? Because I feel like right. we're so deep into this that... Mm-hmm. I want to give the people that watch us gems, okay. people that that are home for us. They're in a and, trove right now. And I, I and hope they I got no like, pens out for this. No, because because I think a lot of what you're saying, there's certain things that I, I could feel them asking. You know what I mean? A I couple, a couple of my friends I that are watching. I, know, I play chess and, with and, myself. And I, <laughs> I, I feel like <laughs> most men uh, that are trying to get into that right relationship struggle. Mm-hmm. You know, because a yeah. lot of the women, I feel like as good as these men are and that they're trying to be because they're trying to be because we're, we're mm-hmm. trying to let go of our past. I feel like the better they are, the more they're attacked by the woman to kind of hold them down. Like you, you're not better than me, motherfucker. So don't think don't you mm-hmm. think you can do this? Oh, yeah. and, and I know so many men that struggle with this. Yeah, well, I can I can explain that to you right right away. That's easy. Uh, really, within the last like since the sexual revolution. Um, we have systematically um, conditioned and re-engineered society, for, uh, a society of women, I should say, for four generations to distrust men. Sim- mm. It's simple as that. And it really came with like the advent of hormonal birth control. So women had more you know, like uh, they don't have like I can have sex and I don't have to worry about getting pregnant or uh, relatively speaking, uh, you know, worry about getting pregnant with this guy. Or now I have more choices. I can still have sex with this guy. But if he's not the right one, then I've got a fail safe, which is either abortion or I've got I've got hormonal birth control so that maybe I can get with this guy. You want to know why uh, marriage rates have have plummeted since 19, well, 1971, really. And. Uh, divorce rates have skyrocketed is because of one thing, which is really the the advent of hormonal birth control, the the sexual revolution, uh, and all of the social the social changes that happened in the wake of all of that. One of those changes was the distrust of men because we're putting women into the workplace, we're putting them into like a social structure that's already mm-hmm. pre-existing, which was a masculine hierarchy that women now enter into. So the thing is, is Women need two things. They need alpha fucks and beta bucks, okay? It used to be that women needed the, a man, f- needed a man for provisioning, protection, and parental investment. Those are like sort of the long-term security aspects of what women need for their sexual strategy. Then there's the alpha fuck side is, is he hot? Does he turn me on? Does he have, does he lay down the good dick? Is he fun in bed? Is he somebody that I really want his baby? Do I want to have his babies? Yeah. That's the arousal alpha fuck side. The thing is, is from, say, 1965 all the way up to 2023 right now, women have more or less covered that. They've got provisioning, protection, and parental investment down. And if they don't, the perception is that they do. So they can go and get their own money. I got my own bag. I don't don't need a man. I want a man, but I don't need a man, even though they actually do need men. But the thing is, is that there's, there's there's this pervasive idea that it's all about the want and it's not about the need anymore because women can provide for their own long-term security. The beta buck side of that has at least perceptually been taken care of. So anything that a man could provide for a woman in the long term, whether it's whether it's babies or it's you know provisioning or money, still important. But it's not as important to a woman who's making half a million dollars a year on OnlyFans or she's she's making her own. She's got the bag. I don't need a man, no, but I want a man. No. What is the man she wants? No. She wants the she yes. wants Jason Momoa. Yeah. So, she wants yeah. Justin Waller. She wants the guy who's got who's, t- you know, six feet tall, six, six pack six abs, man. you know, a, a big dick and knows how to use it. Right. That's that's more or less what women want. But the guy that they need, they don't need that guy anymore. Because they can take care of that themselves. It's the long-term security aspect of it. Mm-hmm. And the problem is this, is when women say, um, when we have that conflict, it's usually because that woman says, I don't really need this motherfucker. I can, I can, I can get along without him. I, 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 can, I, can, uh, I can divorce him before I'm 40, and then I can Stella go and, like, Stella got her groove back, you know, eat, pray, love, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. And I have can, a fourth quarter, yeah, baby. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, man. And so there's this there's always these fail safes and these options that are always there, even from within marriage. So when, when you see this sort of power struggle, like he, he ain't all that, he ain't, he ain't shit, right? That is 
her saying, I can take care of all the things he's supposed to be taking care of. And when that, when she starts making more money than he does, maybe they started equal and she gets a, a you know, a, re, a rise in pay or she's, you know, yeah. got a promotion or something like that. That is the number one precipitator of divorce is when the woman starts making more money than the guy because, because it's, it's independence, but it's also the, the lack of respect because the guys that she's working with 40 hours a week make way more money than the guy yeah. that is now, yeah. mm. now he's a liability. Now he's a sandbag. Mm. Now he is basically another kid, Danger. another mouth mm. to feed. Even if he's make, still making money, he's not making as much as she is. And there is this, uh, this is just the way the machine has evolved. That woman needs the guy to be the provider, the protector, and the parentally invested, right? Well, if she can do that herself, what does she need this motherfucker for? Yeah. So, and, so, she's wow. all, and so the power dynamic gets switched in that. And I think that that's where a lot of the wow. friction between men and women are at right now. Because if she can't trust this guy... If she can't trust him to make the money, if she can't trust him to lead in the family, if she can't trust him to be the more dominant partner in the in the relationship, she's going to fill that role. She's going to be the man. And that's why I keep saying, I've said this on a million different podcasts. I even said this on Dr. Phil. Women have become the men that they want to marry. Yep. So that's why you see the there's more and more women aren't getting married at all. And they'll blame it on guys saying, well, guys ain't shit. And I don't want to get with this guy because I already make more money than this guy does. And all I really want to do is fuck Jason Momoa, right? right. So, so really what they're doing is they're looking at this and they've, they've turned themselves into the masculine ideal. I would marry me if I were, if I were a woman, like oh, that's sure. the whole thing that comes, because, but they're a woman already and they've yeah. made themselves into a masculine ideal. And so that's why you hear them say, and, and probably without even really knowing it is I don't need a man. I just want a man. I just want a man around to like fuck me and then leave more or less is yeah. what it comes down to because she doesn't feel anyways that she needs that guy for anything other than just like her most immediate gratification at yeah, that point. You're no longer suitable for survival. So that power dynamic right there is if she can provide for her own long-term security and you can't, now you're just another child and you've been relegated down. You're not, you're not the husband anymore. You're, you're now at the level of the kid. In fact, women will say that. Men are just big children anyways. You'll hear that like female comedians will say this all the time. They're just big kids anyways, like to, just to demean them. But there's a kernel of truth in that because they know that the power dynamic is different. I make more money than he does, and so therefore he's just he's dead weight. Well, I don't want dead weight. I want a guy who's hot and has all this other stuff, makes more money than I do. It has to make at least half again what I make. So that's why you're seeing that power dynamic sort of shift, especially in marriages right now. And usually it takes place after, um, after someone, like after she gets a, a, yeah. a, a so, promotion. So, so consider this concept, like, again, we're not talking about good or bad. A woman all of a sudden now has the, mm -hmm. has the ability to make $300,000 a month on OnlyFans. And I've seen girls do this. <laughs> and I'm just like, we're, we're not being realistic to think that we wouldn't do the same fucking thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't. And not, obviously most girls are not going to make it. Most girls make $20 a week on OnlyFans. But they are less than two hundred dollars a month. Most girls actually—that's I think like the average, or whatever it is. But the concept of like uh, them doing that, I understand from an evolutionary standpoint why they're doing that. It just seems a lot easier. I'll just do this on OnlyFans, and then I'll just find a man. And like the thing is, I'll have a baby whenever because I watched this show where this forty-year-old woman just had a baby, and so I'll have a baby at forty because the perception. I, yeah, because that's the perception. Awesome. They don't ever show the IV, the, the three hundred fifty thousand dollars they spent on IVF in order to have a baby at forty, or the the fact that the, the likelihood of you having a baby at forty is like five percent they don't care about that what they care about is it happened for her so it'll happen for me because it feels good right. and so i'm just going to take i'm going to make mm -hmm. way the short-term feeling against long-term statistics and i'm not a statistic everything the all the things that michael sartain said those things don't count for me that's for everyone else and that, that i'm not a statistic and that shit doesn't matter so we understand that concept like and so what'll happen is you'll you'll have these women and they'll get into situations and men too they'll get in a situation like i i i'm what i'm saying is i understand from an evolutionary standpoint, why you would do the things that you do. If you're a woman and you have that ability to do it, it makes sense. We're not saying it's bad. Like you're about to have risk-free sex. You don't need a man. We get that. Like we totally understand that concept. The problem is what happens is later on in life, when you do want to have kids, you're not going to have the ability to do so. And then this weird thing happens, like I said before, Again, the guy who's 20, like they, they committed for the 10-year contract to Patrick Mahomes because he was 23 years old. But they won't commit like when, uh, what's his face? Aaron Rodgers signed with the Jets. It was a two-year deal or like a one-year deal. That was a five-minute deal. Yeah, it was a five-minute deal. <laughs> but that's why, though, right? Because even though he's good, we, they're both they're good. But even though he's good, Aaron Rodgers, we know he's at the, near the end. So these women who are now 35, they're like, you will not get the commitment from the alpha male that you're looking from the high status man you're looking for because of this thing that you overlooked. Mm -hmm. Because you feel like you And they also won't get the commitment from 
their OnlyFans. Well, we do. Yeah, we do this so we, every on, on damn near every show. We do the uh, female delusion calculator. That it's, you know, Fresh and Fit do this mm-hmm. as well. But we go on there and we'll say, we'll take the you know the poll. How and old say, are you? Yeah, exactly. How? how you yeah, exactly. How well, much money do you make a year? It's the so so if you go and you do this, like I've done it for myself too. But if you go into the it's delusion calculator exercise. and it only uses two metrics, it uses the CDC uh, as as its statistics and it uses the census. Yeah, the census, census data. Census data. So you can put in like what? Okay, ladies, what's the age range? What's the youngest? you'd go for what's the oldest we go and put that in uh is he white is he asian or doesn't matter like it can be all races uh height was another one like how tall is he usually women say it's got to be six feet right of course. you just eliminated like you like 90 Majority, you know, yeah. you're down to 14, 16 percent now 14 percent of the population yes. are six and then tall. it's and then it's uh and you know that 75 percent of the u.s population is overweight so if you say does he have to be obese well obese you know of course he's got to be fat if that's the case too so they'll go through all these data, and these are just basic things. Mm-hmm. We're not talking about religion, or he's got to love his mom, or he likes puppy dogs in Disneyland, or anything like that. All the stuff. It's just yeah. basic shit. And we'll put this in there, and damn near every damn show, it's like they don't realize just how rare an animal it is that they're looking for, just based on uh-huh. CDC yeah. and Census Bureau data. So- and even when you show them... It's zero point or point zero 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 four seven percent. They go. I'm still going to beat the I'm odds. Still gonna Don't beat never tell me the odds. So, 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 <laughs> they still so think you know, they're going to do it. When we when you just say something like six feet tall makes a hundred thousand dollars a year, uh, not married because a lot of the guys that they're looking for are married, which is why, like I said before, mm. they're offered infinite dick and they're still trying to take someone else's man. That you have all these these things that they're looking for the certain height the certain mm-hmm. uh, the you know the income and the age bracket or whatever and certain race etc cetera, etc cetera. when you go through that and then they see it's 0.2 percent of men they still and then so we do the opposite uh, survey yeah. where we because we don't even look at the man's good looking we do the opposite thing with the women it's like okay so do we care about your height we don't care about your height so any height yeah. do we care about the, how much money you make we don't care how much money you make so they don't care about that and then we go through the survey it's like 14 percent of women are like in my category that I like and 0.2 percent of men are in the category that you like and you wonder why you can't find a good man you could find a good you could find a man that you're very attracted to it's just he's got 17 other women in his dms and you don't consider that here's another thing we were talking about this before when women make more money than men that's one of the precipitators of divorce right Mm -hmm. so what happens as we climb the socioeconomic ladder from women and men as women climb the socioeconomic ladder they would have less necessity for a man who likes makes a lot of money and yet the Mm. opposite is what they desire rihanna was making all that money and was dating a billionaire for a while (laughs) Okay, when women go up the socioeconomic ladder, meaning they make more money, they want a partner who makes even more More money. money. It doesn't even make sense. (laughs) When here's the thing, though, in all 37 cultures, remember the 37 culture study, as men make more money or climb the higher socio higher socioeconomic ladder, when they do that, you know what you find? The difference in age between them and their wife consistently increases in every (laughs) single culture and income. the richest men have mm. the greatest age differential between them and their wife as women make more money they want men who make more money as men make more money they want women who are younger that's mm. the set and by the way what i said is it good or it's bad no but it is the truth Facts. and it is not fucking cultural mm. it is genetic and that's the part that drives people crazy they don't like this term Dude, the idea that intelligence is genetic i, I just had a the discussion with uh, uh Ty Lopez about this. You know, if you, have, interesting, if you have kids that are not smart, like the reality is there's a ton of things that they can do. There's a, they can, they can go play running back or they can become a fucking painter. There's a bunch of things. Mm-hmm. They can actually become an incredible salesman. They can become an mm-hmm. actor. There's a bunch of stuff, but the likelihood of somebody who has a, a, a 78 IQ, you know, pushing it up to a 120 is impossible. Like your IQ just kind of is what it is when it comes to eye color, wow. when it comes to height, when it comes to skin color or the coarseness of my hair, we don't have a problem when it comes to genetics, but when it comes to heritability of intelligence, people get woefully offended no i'm going to get my child into the best preschool ever and they're going to get super fucking smart and you look at the studies and it's just not true and these preschools are ripping you off making you think that they're going to be able to do something when they can't it's just not true it's because people still cling to the ideal of the blank slate yes they think that, they that, think that, that there's we're fighting against the blank slate. everything exactly. i've been throwing out this term throughout today's shows is it's social constructionism 
people think that it's society that makes you this way. No, it's not. The 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 nature versus nurture debate is over and has been over really since the mid two thousands when we plotted the human genome. And so if you there's actually I don't have it on I couldn't give it to you on hand right now, but there's uh, there are four laws of behavioral genetics, and these are if you read these and you go through uh, you know just step by step each one of these, you'll understand that basically pretty much everything we do like behaviorally what we what we are express in ourselves is it's all f- fundamentally genetic mm. and so like what we were saying about iq yeah, that's a that's genetic it's heritable right so right. just the same way as like her- inheriting like blue eyes or brown eyes or whatever else it's it's pretty much the same thing people don't want to talk about that because they want it they still want to believe that everybody was born equal and then from there you can just do whatever you want it's like no no you're no we're not <laughs> born equal okay i mean it should be obvious that that you know first of all second of all is the the idea that it is all about society and social constructed everything that we do for instance when we're talking about like body fat acceptance or beauty standards and these things well women only find these you know these little teeny tiny you know uh, cover models to be because you know beautiful because they've been taught and socially engineered to think that no 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 that's, that's the way the machine evolved right. 200,000 years ago like has nothing not. to do with that but the thing is is it's it's convenient we're still we're still clean to the, the it, it, when it comes to like sociology psychology evolutionary psychology all that stuff this has like been like settled a long time ago but we're still clinging to these ideas like the blank slate ghost in the machine the naturalistic fallacy meaning like if it's natural it's got to be better than than you know if it's if it's not natural no it's you know (laughs) hemlock is still gonna kill you even though it you know grows in the fucking ground okay um and then there's social constructionism and then there's the um uh the well the blank slate social constructionism uh really what boils down to emotionalism. And I think one of the biggest conflicts that we're always going to run into, whether it's ideologically or if it's, if people want to say the red pills about politics or it's about ideology or it's it's really to me, no, it's always going to be about intersexual dynamics. But even in those terms, you're going to have a conflict between empiricism, objective reality and people's emotions, emotionalism. So anytime I see this conflict, like we're going to debate whether God is real or is not, okay? Mm. We can, the, the one side is going to be as analytical and as mathematical as possible. The other side's going to argue from emotion. And it doesn't necessarily have to be left versus right or right versus left because they both rely on emotional arguments. When you come and you throw out empirical data and people don't want to feel bad about that, they'll tell you you're a bad person. Mm. And so when, when I'm talking, I try to do things from a position of being a factual absolutist. I want to know what is true, whether it's right or it's wrong. Well, we can talk about like best practices later on, right, but, first, but I want to know what's true and, pr- and create a predictive framework around what is reliably true yeah. before I can say, here's how we ought to do it. Start here's how we should behave as according to this truth that we know. Right. Whereas people w- want to reverse that process. You're a bad person, and if you can, unless you can tell me something different, unless you can tell me, like, unless you, I win the argument until you can come up with a better emotional argument to tell me why I'm wrong. Mm. You're, you're basically, you have like empiricists and, uh, and emotionalists, and they're talking past one another because the emotional side wants to find out if you're bad or a good person or what's the best practice, where the empiricist is saying, here's the numbers, here's the stats, and here's what's true. Both are so like, you don't, you point. don't, you're not even having a, de- that's why I, I say debate is dead. Because the people who are doing the debate, one's usually the empiricist and the other is the emotionalist. And they talk past each other. And the, and the goal of the debate for a, an empiricist is to find out what's true. The goal of the debate for the believer, for the, for the emotionalist, is are you a son of a bitch and are you evil or are you good? That's really what it comes wow. down to. Sounds like so a, you end up talking like past one another. Girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The emotion that's involved. I feel like uh, most women... I mean, it's true, right? The men use the logic, women use the emotion. Have you I seen, there's a, a, I mean, you, you'll you have to dig this up, but you'll, you'll get a copyright strike if you put it on right now. Mm-hmm. But um, uh, there's a, a really great, like it's a, like a two minute, three minute video. It's called, It's Not About the Nail. And what it is, is it's like this couple and they're sitting on a couch and the lady, and they're having this conversation. She says, I feel like I've got this really horrible pain in my head and it just won't go away. And it's just, you know, and she's just going on and on, yammering on and on about this pain in her head. And the guy's just sitting there, he's like looking at her, and they tur- she turns, and she's got this nail that's stuck in her head. And the guy goes, you know, I bet if we took that nail out of your forehead, 
that that would solve the problem. And she's like, it's not about the nail because she's arguing from a, from an emotionalist, a female side of the guys, the problem solver, there's a nail in your head that let's, appears to be the it. source of your problem. And you probably would have the relief and you wouldn't have that headache. If we could just take that nail out of your head and she just it's not about the nail. And she, so she's, you know, she you goes on. Ask how it got there. And yeah, exactly. You so missed the you point. guys never listen, you know, and it's, so it's you're, but what they're doing is they're talking past, past one another. Other, right, so you've got the guy who's the really the empiricist. I know how to solve your problem wow. because of the fucking nail in your, on your forehead. Yeah. And she's like, "It's not about the nail. I want to talk about this. You know, you men, this you don't. You listen to women, and, and so it goes into this sort of emotional diatribe. When really, probably the solution to the problem is just pull the nail out of your head. So how do you solve it? The, the thing is, if you, if you, <laughs> you try don't. to solve, it, if, 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 if you if, end up with the nail, you know. But but if you if you try to solve it, now you're mansplaining. Now you're so here's the, yeah. here's the issue like. The, it, when you look at uh, distribution of IQs, this is Aaron Clary who, who wrote about this. Mm. Uh, uh, what you'll find is that men and women score about 100. They're they're on average. It's not like women are two or three points below. They're about the same. But what happens is a far greater number of women score inside the first standard de deviation, which is between the scores of 85 and 15. Far more men score outside that distribution, meaning the smartest humans alive are men and the dumbest humans alive are also men. Does that make sense? <laughs> so we're outside wider in the in the distribution. <laughs> Extremes are where we're the at. Difference is, the difference is, we're, so just consider there's like two chocolate cakes here. <laughs> the difference is the women have this icing over their cake called emotions. And the emotion, like it clouds the logic. They have the, they have the, intellectual horsepower to do things like become astrophysicists. They have the ability to do that, but do they want to? And so this, this emotional, um, I don't know how, what to, to say, how, how to say it, but it's like maybe just estrogen, this thing that happens, it clouds their ability to do things. It's like, uh, what is uh, uh, Ronald Reagan said about Democrats? It's like Democrats are smart too. They just know too many things that aren't true. Mm -hmm. you know, stuff, it's stuff like that. It's like, but what happens wh where the danger comes is that when your emotions are so strong, that you start believing that your emotions outweigh objective reality. Then mm. we start getting into dangerous situations. Then you're talking to your girl, telling her not to drink and drive. You know, when you're when you're talking to her on the phone, but she's like, no, 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 I did some coke. And I'm, you ever talk to somebody like that? <laughs> yeah. I did some coke, so I'm good. It's like, like I don't they think you're hearing me. And then, and then <laughs> you tell them, it's like, hey, just, like, it's funny, because I've done this before. I had a friend of mine, she was like drunk as shit. She snorts some coke. And I'm and she's like, yeah, I'm sober now, because I snorted coke. And so I send her the study showing, you're not <laughs> no, more sober. Really not. You just have a higher heart mm. rate. Your heart rate has gone up because you did the cocaine, but you're literally just as yeah. drunk. Mm -hmm. And she's like, but she feels like she's sober, so she so fucking drives anyway, bro. Like it's mm -hmm. it's a crazy. It's like well, it's like I'll, I'll give you another good example of this. It's more recent. Is when you see transgender athletes, like me, biological men, dominating female sports. The emotion is well. He identifies as a female, and because gender is a social construct, and we all want to play along and pander to this, and we all want to say that he can be he can be just as much a woman as as any biological female. Therefore, we have to let him compete in female sports. And what happens? Goes in there, dominates. I think it was the 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 best female swimmer. Yep. Is like the four hundred and thirty sixth, you know. She was like in the four hundred place, yeah, four hundred place, number one, and with number females. one of females. And so, what you're looking at right there is your look. As I said before, you're looking at the conflict between empiricism and emotionalism. Emotionally, we want to think, oh, he identifies as being a female. He was going to go in there. He's going to do that. Zuby, by the way, has, has identified as a female. Went in, broke the world's record for uh, for female deadlifting. Promptly went, went right back, back and changed his thing and went right back out <laughs> because and that. it was funny as hell and it made the news because because it's it's emotion versus reason mm -hmm. and so when you see a woman who says oh women can do anything men can do except for I don't know break down a door or be a good you be a fire as an effective firefighter or whatever something that that create that needs physic physicality. Is life or death in or, that particular yeah, like, job? Yeah. That's empiricism smashing headlong into emotionalism right there. Mm -hmm. So whenever you, and by the way, it's always biological men. You don't see biological women who identify as male who come into male sports and dominate that. Do you they guys, have, that did never you guys, happens. Did you guys know there's Hello. absolutely no rule in the NBA against women competing in the NBA? There's no. I love that. The, do oh, you guys know that? There's no <laughs> rule. Hold on. There's That's no great. rule. I looked it up. There is nothing in the world to stop an NBA team from drafting a woman to play. Nothing. 
but there doesn't need to be a rule, yeah. does there? Yeah. There doesn't no. need to be a rule, does <laughs> it? It's like it's, a, it's one of these situations where it's like what you talked about before. Uh, women can do lots of incredible things, but they can't be a saw gunner in a Marine Corps unit. They can't. Mm -hmm. It's a 75-pound rucksack. It doesn't work that way. So there, there's just there's these the different things that happen, and when you hit that, like you said, the empiricism thing. Mm -hmm. Here, here's the thing. Here's where we get uh, like the confusion. There are social constructs in gender, but gender is not a social construct. Right. Gender has to do with at the, 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 the formation of the zygote. Are you XY or are you XX? That's what gender is. Mm -hmm. Now, what's happened is we're going to bastardize that word and say, well, gender is also a social, a social construct. There are social constructs in gender, just like if I am a Muslim man, I may more, be more likely to have different facial hair than if I'm a Protestant man. That's a social construct that mm -hmm. exists within a male gender, but it's a different mm -hmm. social construct amongst different religions and different uh, you know, ethnicities. Okay, that's fine to have that, but that doesn't mean the entire gender is a social construct. Right. For instance, there's no, it's not a social construct that men are more interested in casual sex than women when, all gener when men are more interested in casual sex than women in all cultures. That's not a social construct. When I have 17 times as much testosterone as a woman does, that's not a social construct. And so that's where people get this, this confusion. It doesn't mean I, like, but by the way, neither one of us have a problem if someone wants to transition. That is not the issue. But what the issue is, is if I then say afterwards, hey, just want to let you know, even though you transitioned, uh, you know, to- You're a, to, still a you, dude. Even though you transitioned to a woman, you're <laughs> yeah, still more likely bro. to get prostate cancer than the biological female. Yeah. Sorry to let you know this. If I were to say that, that doesn't make me hateful. No, I'm not because I was born a woman. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know but, what like, I mean? You just don't know, but I, I am, I knew when- And then, by the way, but, but that's all fine. Like, again, I, I, fought, I fought for the First Amendment when I was in the U.S. military. If someone wants to transition, I don't have a problem with them transitioning. What I have a problem with is then them then telling me I'm wrong for mm. me, still recognizing the fact that if we looked at a DNA sample, you're still going to come up why that's the problem that's the issue like i'm not hateful for telling you an objective truth but i still like again like if somebody if i had a family member and they were like hey i want you to uh, uh, identify me as she her i would do it i actually would so, not have a problem cool. with it okay. i would be totally cool with it do whatever you want by the way i feel the same way for the girl who makes three hundred fifty thousand dollars a month doing only fans fuck anyone <laughs> you want on your only fans yeah. but when there's a dude mm -hmm. who wants to fuck your 23 year old sister who hasn't That's been nuts. run through instead of you don't complain to me or say that it's misogynistic we mm. told you mm. this was going to happen yeah. if i start taking a bunch of fucking steroids and then by the time i'm 40 my kidneys give out I don't blame the doctor. Mm. I have to take responsibility for my actions. Right. But for some reason, mm. when women do the same thing, they don't want to do so. And then so that's where the issue is. By the way, men do too. That's why I said the simp economy mm. is mm. growing. What is the simp economy? <laughs> I didn't take accountability for my actions. So I didn't get in better shape. I didn't build a business. I didn't read any books. And I stayed in my room and played Grand Theft Auto 6 while masturbating. That like expectation, yeah, yeah. that expectation <laughs> of women to have, to be able to That's like, the bombs right there. To that's have the a, first button. To have a fail safe. Yeah. Like what you're saying right there, they don't want to take responsibility for their for their actions. That once again is responsibility versus authority. Women want that authority to be free from judge. Don't judge me. Oh, stop judging me. Uh, they don't want to have the they they don't want the responsibility, but they still want the authority so that when the shit hits the fan, they can still say, "Well, I'm a woman, so therefore you're yeah. going to have to respect my wishes." The other thing is like when we talk about like feminism. Feminism it teaches women two conflicting things. One is that they're victims. They're constantly victims of oppression, of historic, you know, crushing yeah. oppression of the patriarchy. And that's first. And that they're also, at the same time, superheroes. They're Miss Marvel, you know, Captain Marvel. They can do anything. They can be an astronaut. They can do whatever the fuck you want. Very... So what is, and both of those are conveniently applied in the situations that they can maximize the, the most authority in those like, situations. Like a microcosm of that would be Brittany Renner. Look, watch yes. Brittany yeah. Look, again, yeah. watch, Renner's just bipolar. Watch, Come on. Watch, <laughs> watch Brittany Renner at the end of the conversation crazy. that she has with Andrew Tate on, on Pearl's thing where she is completely, oh, yeah. totally acquiescing to everything that Andrew's saying. Mm -hmm. And at the end, basically asking him for absolution. What do I do? Mm -hmm. What do I do to get over this? And then to watch that her on- That was a good one to watch. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then watch her on your show grinding on Charleston White. Like watch the, the, the 
she is doing both. Like again, <laughs> bipolar. Like, again, the situation is I don't I don't have I don't dislike Brittany Renner at all. But my issue is like I do. when it comes when it comes to the situation, <laughs> like like Deion Sanders has her go speak to Jackson State and, yeah. and basically explain, hey, this is how we're gonna try. Well, uh, girls like me, we're gonna try to juice you. We're gonna try to get your money. We're gonna try to get get this cloud on you. We're gonna try to trap you into a baby, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Not realizing number one, she's snitching on her sisterhood, and number two, she is the butt of the joke, but is mm. so incapable of shame she doesn't realize what she's doing because after she goes and speaks to Dion's group does she stop that behavior in any way whatsoever there's right. a video of her saying that her vagina hurts because she fucked three dudes in the same day does she disavow the video but yeah you see her next day Andrew Tate being like please take me back what do I do how do I make uh, this better and the, I mean it's the same situation you just see this over and over again mm -hmm. same situation one of my favorite ones you guys should go watch Myron Gaines versus fucking Brittany Renner she comes <laughs> off saw, she calls yeah. him the bitch ass n-word just start off yeah. like at the very beginning by the end, she agrees with everything he has to say. Yep. Why? Because when somebody stands up to her, she's fine. When somebody stands up to her, she's not used to that. Then all of a sudden, she wants to. She falls in line. She's like, "Oh, this guy is kind of an alpha male. He's not like acquiescing to anything I say." And so you see that situation. She is a, it's like such a perfect example of that dichotomy. Now it's a bad example. It's not really in good faith because I personally believe she has borderline personality disorder. But that's but that's the thing. Like you can kind of see both of I'm a superhero and a victim at the same time. Same time. You like you literally. So one of the issues is, do you remember guys, remember at the end of the interview she does with, with Pearl where she goes, I feel like I have a lot to contribute to this space. Yeah. I was so angry no, when I heard don't. that. I was like, what space? Go away. Wait, like uh, you Brittany wrote a book about getting a fucking, getting pregnant from an NBA player. You bragged about it. You literally, you gained financially off PJ Washington's yeah. money and from the sales of this book. Like it's mm. so crazy. Like it's one of these things like, okay. And you, got, you brought a child well, into that but, but equation. I, I want you to consider this, right? But it did rip her vagina. It ripped her vagina. She had a staged <laughs> a second degree terror that was the there's the victim because, because because I'm nobody, the victim what, no, what can I do yeah, nobody, <laughs> she, I love him she, she, it won't work vagina. anymore she goes, she goes she goes she goes nobody can tell what I'm going through except the you know the the eight billion mothers who gave birth also like they yeah. can also tell what you're going through anyway the, the <laughs> issue is when you listen to her say that she's like I have this all this to contribute and I'm like you haven't even disavowed what you've done wrong what do you have to contribute mm -hmm. it's like okay do you guys remember when Donald Sterling got caught saying all that racist yeah. shit right B. <laughs> Siviano recorded him yeah, and then he yeah. goes he goes on television and he starts talking about like he starts trying to explain himself and what does he do does he make it better he makes it so much worse <laughs> same thing with oj simpson when he <laughs> talked afterwards same thing with fucking uh the, did you guys see Lindsay hill the girl who accused um the baseball player uh uh what's his name trevor bauer trevor bauer uh, accused trevor bauer of sexual assault turns out there's videos proving none of it actually happened everything was thrown out of court she couldn't even get a, a protection uh order against him that she goes on a, on a show to try to clear her name and gets <laughs> absolutely eviscerated why do people do that why does britney renner after what she did continue to go on these shows because because it is she is incapable of shame it's a, like a clear sign of narcissism mm -hmm. like there's no way if you had done what she done like consider if you're pj washington every time she goes on a show like how mortified you are that this is the mother of your children and she's saying this crazy shit getting drunk and doing this stuff like you would just be mortified so why does she continue to do it it's a sign of narcissism which is one of the things he and i talk about bipolar we talk about, we talk about cluster bit we talk about well bipolar is a mood she disorder she's clinically insane yeah, but, but, i mean really <laughs> clinically she needs and way, stop it let, you let, can go get let, help let, 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 let me make let me make this clear also everything I mean, i'm saying i would absolutely say if she was here i'm saying this like from a clinical standpoint she has no ground to stand on morally and yet says that she has a she 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 has something to contribute to the space people I'll tell you as good like wes watson has something to contribute to his space because he went to prison for 10 years for trying to kill someone and got out and reformed his life he did something he repented. He mm. grew from it. That has some. He has something to contribute to the space. Yeah, he acknowledged she, the problem. She, first. she, she acted like a hoe. That's fine. If you want to act like a hoe, that's fine. If you want to write books about being a hoe, that's fine. I don't even have a problem with that. In fact, that seems like you could write some funny. Chelsea Handler. She writes books about being mm. a hoe. It's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But you want to write books about being a you about being a hoe, and then later on being like, why aren't there good men for me? And then calling people names afterwards, mm. and then saying you have something to contribute. I still don't know what like. <laughs> Like the level of arrogance that you would need to think that in this space of intersexual dynamics that you have anything to contribute is like so beyond me. I'm not mad about it. I'm just.
just like so confused, like how you can be that way. And then you come, come to the realization, it's borderline personality disorder, antisocial personality disorder, narcissistic personality disorder. These are the things that some of these women suffer from. Histrionic personality, history, it's, all, history. it's all cluster B. Yeah, H- cluster B. I feel like a shitload of women suffer yeah. from that. Yes. It's because of being accountable, especially by other women. Yes. Now, mm-hmm. Us men, we will look at each other when we will try to big but, but, each but, other up and but, build but each other I want up. You, I want you to consider to the this. Next level. If you were a sociopath, if you guys were like, if you had some sort of like, you, like you're severely autistic or you had like some serious problems where nobody got along with you, what would happen? It was hinder your ability to work. And, and then let's go back to the 1850s. It would hinder your ability to breed. You with me? If you were just a complete fucking weirdo, totally impossible to work with, acted like a psychopath, all these different things, it would hinder your ability to function in society and you would have a harder time finding a woman to have sexual intercourse with and have a child. You would have if to you're, find recourse. If you'd you're a fucking to. hot woman, it doesn't do shit. If you're a hot mm. woman, people will still breed with you. This is the it reason. It might increase your chances because we yeah, have to say exactly. anything. Exactly. Yeah. But my point, my point is, my point is, it's we crazy. don't select against these mental illnesses because she had a fat ass. That's the problem for us as men. If we continue to breed with these women who have these mental disorders, and we know, so for instance, antisocial personality disorder is partially genetic. If we continue to do that, we had a problem. By the way, men, we have the same issue. If women consistently complain about narcissists, but the last three dudes you fucked were narcissists, if all women would just decide, they'd come together and say, we're not going to fuck any more narcissists, we're not going to fuck any more fuck boys, we're not going to fuck any more of these guys, no matter what, we're not going to have sex with any of them, in two or three generations, you would completely wipe these proclivities out of the human race. But you don't, because that's what you reward. You reward them, you reward those behaviors with your vagina. You do. If you True. could, if you wanted these behaviors to stop happening, stop fucking men who do those things, and these were these behaviors would go away immediately. Actually. By the way, if you read uh, Dr. Buss's final book, his most recent book, that's his final conclusion. Incredibly offensive. If women don't like the way men are, stop fucking those men, and then they'll stop being that way. It's true, but they won't. And neither will we. We will continue mm-hmm. to fall for a big fat ass and a smile. Mm-hmm. We're going to continue to do the same thing. <laughs> yes, we do. We, we, have, we, have a, we have a similar issue. So that's the thing. Like, we have to hold ourselves accountable. If you have a certain level of abundance in your life as a man, then all of a sudden, beauty becomes sort of like not that big of a deal. You're like, no, I'm not really kept. I've seen, I've had plenty of fat asses. Yeah. I'm good with all the fat asses. I'm curious if this woman would be a good wife. I'm does curious. Does she have if, motherly tendencies? Does she have motherly tendencies? Is she feminine? Uh, does she, is she nurturing? Does she compliment my business and my path in life? Mm. Is she going to be loyal to me? And is she going to embarrass me? Like, these are the things I'm mm. going to look at. And like, look again, like I just, I'm so obsessed with this whole fucking concept because I'm a huge NBA fan. <laughs> and like, the thing is, PJ Washington was fucking 19 years old. Yeah. And she Scary, walks up with that fat ass and she's just like, of course, bro. I, like, I don't <laughs> even blame him. But, like, the, <laughs> but the problem is like, when you see this situation, it's like, from his standpoint, I hope to God, like everything works out in the whole situation because there's a child involved. Yes. But like that, that is the one of the best teaching moments as men we could possibly that and the Logan Paul situation are mm-hmm. like the best uh, possible teaching moments for us as men to say, why did we do this? And Logan Paul actually is not a good teaching moment because he still hasn't broken up with her. Yeah, he, he's he, still in it. He, he, he will he, he hasn't will realized when, when she finally cheats, he will break up with her. But like until that happens, we, he hasn't broken up with her. So it's not quite the best teaching moment. But we learn these situations. Like consider Amber Heard shitting on a bed and how crazy and loony that is. <laughs> now remember that story's great. remember, hold on, hold on, hold on. Elon Musk put his dick in her. <laughs> Remember that before Holy you start shit, saying, well, she's that. shit in a bed and she's so crazy. Whatever she had, because she was attractive enough, got one of the smartest humans who is currently alive to put his dick in her. Mm. It, that's so crazy when you consider it, wow. like how pervasive this issue is. Again, Marilyn Monroe is like, Marilyn Monroe had a mental disorder. Marilyn Monroe's mother had the same mental disorder and so did her grandmother. So how does that happen? Wow. It's because they were hot and dudes keep fucking girls and that are hot. They you have to, you have to take, take this into consideration too. So when Johnny Depp is with Amber Heard and he sees a big turd <laughs> on the bed right there, he's like, it's not so bad. Like People will just clean it yeah, up. So like fuck that. her. He'll yeah. still go back to it even after she shits on the bed. Like that's <laughs> it's just, it's that's the power of the, of the crazy pussy. <laughs> No, but but it's like again we go back to the same thing. What are the what is what possibly could be the explanation for all this incredible irrational behavior? We're hairless murder apes. That's the reason we are we are designed for an ancestral period fifty thousand years ago. We are not designed for today, where it's like I used to have to go kill and hunt my food to bring it back to my tribe. Now I push a button and endless calories, French fries, shows up at my door. Endless calories shows up at my door. I I used to have to like perform in. (laughs) 
order to get access to hot women. Now I just look at pornography, endless free right. pornography for me. And you just like consider like, what, what is this? Why are we so evolutionarily mismatched? But because so like the, the part of the solution to these, these ailments, which it's kind of what it is, um, is the red pill, right? Is it possible to red pill too early? Um, I don't know if it's like, possible. Like, so, so here's the thing. He, he and I are going to have different definitions. Mm -hmm. So like for, for the people in the red pill, the red pill just equals the truth. That's all it means. Yeah. Right? I don't but see the, it. As, it's not a verb. Right. right. So, yeah. right. so, so but, but here's the thing is, for him, the red pill is essentially the concepts that are uh, uh, you can empirically prove. Mm -hmm. For other people, red pill is those things plus their opinions. But mm -hmm. your opinions are not part, part of empirical truth. Mm -hmm. So for, to uh, answer your question, is it too early to know empirical truth? And the answer is it could be. Yeah. And here's the reason why. If I live in a tribe, like consider this concept. I get washed up on a shore of a, of a, a deserted island. And on the deserted island, there's a group of people, and in their culture, whenever people wash up on the shore, they are religiously bound to never hurt that person and to actually treat that person as an honored guest. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Mm -hmm. So in that case, their religion, which may be based in complete irrationality, saved my life. If I'm a member of that tribe and I'm like, hey man, this guy might be coming here to fucking kill us. We should kill this guy. It is better for me to actually believe in the nonsense that they believe in for me to get along with this tribe than it is for me to believe in rationality. So there are there are situations where it's probably better to believe in a lack of rationality. It's metaphorical truth. Yes. It's, is the practice still useful? Yes. So like for instance, like, and I, I talk about this in my my religion uh -huh. book, is like there's there's folklore, right? That you have to stay away from a porcupine because a porcupine will shoot its quills and it'll hit you, right? Yeah. A porcupine can't shoot its fucking quills, right? Yeah. So, but the rea so the reality, the objective truth is a porcupine can't actually shoot its quills, but it's better for you to believe yes. that it can. So you stay the fuck it's away from that thing because that. it's painful as hell to have to have to pull those things out, right? Mm. That's one. All snakes are poisonous. Not all snakes are poisonous, but it's better for you to believe that they are, mm. so it doesn't kill the baby in the crib, kind of thing. Mm. So there's the. It is true. It's not objectively true, but it's metaphorically true it's because useful. it's still useful and it useful. serves a purpose. Yeah, your, your fear of heights, if you guys have ever been like, uh, you, you ever go to the, uh, the Willis Tower, the Sears Tower, there's this little observation thing you can walk out into and you can see straight mm -hmm. down. And everybody mm -hmm. feels like you just like you tighten up because you can look 1,300 feet straight down. Mm -hmm. But there's no reason for you to believe. You have a fear of heights, but there's no reason to have a fear of that height. But you, you still have it because objectively, it's useful for you to not jump off of things. Yeah, because all and your senses point out to it. And your ancestors that had sex with people who were like, who were like, did not have facial symmetry or ate poop or jumped off of buildings or had made friends with fucking snakes or did not have these natural fears that we have, they were not our ancestors. They died, right? They did not have the, again, all the things, that every single live. proclivity we have as homo sapiens must have existed somewhere in our ancestral past in order to aid in survival. Because mm -hmm. there were certain periods in our ancestral past where there were fewer than 50,000 humans on the planet mm -hmm. and a, a plague or something like eating the wrong fruit or some sort of weird yeah. evolutionary well, it's like, it's like it's like It's like dietary prohibitions in, in certain religions. Yeah, trichinosis, like, like, yes. Like, a, like, like Jews and, and Muslims are not allowed to eat pork or shellfish or whatever because you, if you eat uncured pork, that you'll get trichinosis and die, right? Um, and shellfish, same thing. I Probably the iodine or whatever the hell it is. Sure. It makes you sick. So, therefore, you're not allowed. To, God said, don't eat hoofed animals, unclean hoofed animals, right? Well, now we got, you know, you can have kosher, hot, you know, Hebrew national it makes a pretty damn good hot dog. <laughs> so, but, well, well, you know, shalom aleichem, it's okay. You can eat it right now. Um, so, the... Uh, the, the prohibition has a latent function. It had a latent purpose, which was don't eat this because you're going to die. We yes. don't want God's people to die because you're eating, you're eating pig, right? Now we know that we can cure pork and bacon tastes good, right? So, <laughs> so we can still, we can have ham for Easter, Easter Sunday, you know, morning dinner or whatever, you know, yeah. but now, but, but there was a purpose to it, but now we understand what the purpose is. So we can sort of like say, oh, you know, God wasn't really serious about Jesus that. He, we can actually have a little bit of this, right? So, but the metaphorical truth was was that God said, "Don't eat, you know, hooved down." It's was it uh, is it haram, halal and haram? I think is what you know the yeah. difference between yes, the, the yes. foods and stuff. So there's still people today who say, I, "I still don't touch pork." Period. End of story. Right? Just because it's in my belief set. Right? They're still sticking to the metaphorical truth, although the actual objective truth is eh, bacon tastes pretty damn good. <laughs> so, so there's those the, those things that had a function, and now they don't have a function yeah, anymore. Like, think, think of you were like an ultimate rational human being. Like you only believe in pure rationality, like Richard Dawkins' level of rationality. Like let's say you did that, and then you went and ran for president as an atheist. 
how would that work for you in the United States? Yeah. You, like literally what, what you, your rationality is now working against you. I was going to say that, and there, that's a, a good, good example <laughs> of like, well, when we talk about like emotionalism versus empiricism, right? If you are just empirical, you're, you, you're never going to be able to get as far as you would is if you understand the language of emotion, emotionalism as well. You have to make people laugh. So you have to, you have to at least give people at least a little bit of magic. As I said before, you can't tell people stats without having, telling them how to feel about it. So if you say, okay, well, I got these stats and here's what I think is going on and you like, uh, say pander, but if you like include people in the conversation and you say, well, what do you guys think about this uh, you know, in relation to what you believe, then you can have that conversation which comes back to the point that you made just a minute ago. Do you think that it's like something some people can become red pill too early. And I would agree, yes, you can. I had a conversation with Dr. Sean Smith, a psychologist uh, back in like 2018 or something like that. And he, he told me this, he said, you know, just because you can like uh, expose these guys to the red pill, does that mean you should? And I'm, my, my answer is there's no way, to, the genie's out of the fucking bottle. Like, if they get, don't get it from me, they'll get it from somebody else, right? Yeah. So, um, so the, the fact, but he was, I would say he's correct because there are guys who are simply not mature enough or not ready to have, they're not ready to handle the truth, mm. but that's kind of beside the point because you take away Mike Sartain, Rolo Tomasi, the whole red pill, you take every, Myron and Fresh, you take everybody off the table, the manosphere goes away and still people will be red pill because it's unignorable in today's society with social media and we have uh, we have mass media we have global communications and guys will still become red pill because they'll see the inconsistencies in women's behavior and men's behavior and they'll go why the fuck is this uh, why yeah, is this standard of justice set for women and this is not for men and so you're going to okay, there's it's unignorable right now so yeah. you know us being here this the, the point is kind of moot because it, it, the genie's out of the bottle at this point whether i'm here to red pill you know i don't think it's a verb yeah. but if, to to red pill somebody or not they're going to do it themselves or there's going to be somebody else who comes along and, and picks up the picks up the flag and keeps going with it wow <laughs> yeah I, i'm telling you this is it. one of those conversations where it's like a lot of those <laughs> shut the fuck up moments you know what Absolutely. i mean for us we're just Absolutely. we're quiet as fuck i'm ready for the comments yeah. to be like yeah, oh, no. yeah, yeah we are quiet as fuck you know so again keep getting it, into keep the, in mind uh we're used to speaking to battle rappers and uh you know that mm -hmm. that type of urban uh committee so yeah. it's not this much well as i said there's a lot of cross up there's a lot of cross there's a ton of cross up yeah, yeah. yeah. There, there, there's which i mean, feel like for us it's just beginning right like mm -hmm. i'm i love this shit <laughs> I genuinely love this shit. I got into this space because I want to have these conversations. I try to tell people the Danza Project is not a podcast. It is a network. Mm -hmm. I love and it. it's more and more learning that I get mm -hmm. throughout all this. I don't know half the shit or half the people you're <laughs> mentioning. I'm over mm -hmm. here saying. I'm like, writing down names. Uh, yeah, yeah, course. exactly. And, uh, um, but let me look that up. Yeah. Super, oh, yeah. super useful oh, information yeah. and things that mm -hmm. help you along the way. It help a lot of people along the way, stuff that I want to be able to offer to all the viewers that are out there. Um, mm -hmm. and, and again, it's super important for me to get those parts out because mm -hmm. with, with speaking to both you gentlemen and then knowing that a lot of these men are out here really struggling with their mm -hmm. relationships because they, you know, they go out, they, they get out of the bread and butter, they suffer, they work mm -hmm. the, the long hours and they're busting their ass, but then they go home and they, they, they want a little bit of love and affection, but it's like the, the girl's mad at him. She's like, well, so I just, I just, eating. I, I cooked what? and I cleaned. So what the fuck did what? you do today? Why don't we, why don't we tie that all together? Cause you just said you cook and you clean, but there's a woman who is an, or who's a rapper who says, I don't cook and I don't clean. Look here. I still got this <laughs> ring. The, so here's the thing. So I'm, I'm from, I'm from Texas. I grew up listening to eight ball and MJG and UGK and the ghetto boys. <laughs> Uh, and I and I love yeah, it when I, when I, I listen. Got MJG tatted on me because that's my initials. Yeah, so I, oh. I always thought he was the coolest motherfucker ever so, because of that. So I love uh, I, you know I love listening to that music, and when I listen to uh, so my favorite rapper is Project Pat, and so okay. when I when I listen to uh, when I listen to Cardi B not Cardi B when I listen to Megan The Stallion, mm -hmm. I, there's this Houston flavor in her beats, and I'm like, mm -hmm. man, I fucking love this. And she has all these like hypnotized mind three six mafia beats, and I listen to it. And then I listen to her lyrics, and I'm like, fuck, dude, this is the end of the world. Yeah, dude, yeah. <laughs> like, this is the end, bro. Like, Thank this is like, I, I'm like, man, I love this shit. And then I listen to her music, and I'm like, damn, like, we're, we're so we're, we're, we're a stripper who steals from our clients, and we roll dudes, and we don't do shit. And, like, we're, we're, our value is our wet-ass pussy. And, like, I just, wait, don't, nobody clip that, please. The, uh, <laughs> the, and that, that's yeah. what we're, we're good Mark for. Our, we're good for our vagina, and we don't do shit for... 
men and then we steal from them and we drug them and I'm a bad bitch and like I'm just so confused. And like the, the, the issue is like con, 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 consider this with Megan Thee Stallion. Like the whole of the shit where you know, she got shot in her feet or whatever uh, by, um, who was it again? Tory Lanez. Tory Lanez. Allegedly. Uh, but, but sure. But the thing is like they were fucking him. You know what I'm saying? It's like the part that you, you remember what I said before, these women are being offered infinite dick and they're still trying to steal each other's man. Like, that is what that was about. You guys do know that. I don't yeah. care what she yeah. says. Yeah. I kind of don't believe she didn't fuck Tory Lanez, but like she fucked a dude who then shot her in the foot. Crazy. Like, did you understand how crazy this is? Like crazy. when you consider these concepts, like how nuts they are. Um, and, and when you, when you, when you really think about that shit and then, and then you're just like, you're these these women, these female rappers, a lot of times are just giving horrible advice to, to women. Mm -hmm. And there's kind of the ones who are leading the charge more than anyone. And I love listening to fucking Megan Thee Stallion and Cardi B. I like their beats. I like the one when they rap. Yeah. And then I listen to their lyrics and I'm like, this is the worst shit. And it's like, it's not even like, you know, clap that ass, like whatever, like objectively sexual. I don't care about that. It's like, you're literally giving women the opposite advice mm. for their own happiness and self-preservation. It's crazy. Then yeah. I listen to it and it's like, cause I'm, I, all I do is listen to hip hop. He, he's a more of a rock and roll guy, but all, I grew up listening to, like I said, like. No, I, no Project Pat for Rolo? No, no, yeah, no I, uh, yeah, that's what you asked. I like, I like, I like, I like Taliban Duda. I like Taliban Duda. I watched, like I've been such a huge fan of Project Pat forever. And so I, I watched his interview with Vlad, on Vlad TV, and I was like, man, this is fucking awesome. Oh, wow. By Jackson, the way, Vlad TV here tomorrow. Oh, beautiful, yeah. yeah. So so, mm -hmm. so the thing with Vlad, I, I watch it, and then I message him, and he messaged me back, and so I'm going to try that Project Pat on my show. But it's like, well, it's one of these things where I like listen to this, and it's very interesting because these same concepts that made these men like very powerful, when you think about the, the, the crack epidemic in the early 90s, which then led to mm -hmm. like these dudes were, they were selling weight, which got them studio time. That's how fucking Biggie and, and, and uh, Jay-Z got in the studio. That, yeah. If you go back and watch Straight Outta Compton, Easy was selling crack, got the studio time so that NWA could start you know, doing their album. Same thing with Bun B and Pimp C and Port Arthur. Like that's what happened. Wow. So when you, when you come and you have that realization, these were men trying to survive and it comes off as masculine and, I have, and I'm holding this block and you ain't gonna take my block and I fucked your bitch in some Gucci flip flops. And all. These are like masculine concepts that we have and we and we glorify these men for it. I'm not saying it's good or bad. Then women try to adopt these same mm, concepts when they we go. they try to adopt these same concepts in their hip hop and then it's just like it's the women like it and then the men are like Bro, this is terrible. Like, this is really bad. <laughs> this is really bad. Like, I don't want to, like, I, I objectively don't want to marry. Like, I have so many friends who are, like, women who are just, they're, they're either escorts or fucking, they come on our show, they're porn yeah. stars, whatever. And they're so funny and they tell these incredible, so we had one girl come on the other day and she's like, yeah, I'm dating this guy and I was to take it seriously. And then later on, she has a couple drinks. She's like, yeah, I just sucked this guy's dick right before I came on the <laughs> cool. show. Nobody clip that, please. Uh, and, and, she, and so so she no. said, Landon's she, clipping all so, of it. So, no. she, so she, she says this, and I look at her and I'm like, hey, do you understand? Like, I, I'm not trying to judge you at all, but do you understand how a guy might be listening to this? Because she's a pretty girl. And just be like. And just be like, man, I don't have any, either I don't have a chance and I have no faith in mm -hmm. what is out there for me when I listen to you. How scary is this? I think about every date I've mm -hmm. ever been on and like, did he, did she go suck some dude's dick like right, right after? Before, now I'm right before, right deal. after, now I'm paying mm -hmm. for a deal. It's exactly the deal. And it's just like, do you understand how like, you, the, this whole thing is like decaying the whole fabric. There's a viral and it's not video going around right now where a man is discussing um, how he feels about women and knowing the situation that we've all been through. We've all been with a woman that had a conversation with their man while they were around us. Bro, isn't it crazy said, that we don't, like, like oh, you, I can't make it, I'm, uh, my grandmother's really sick, or you, you don't understand, I really had to be here, my friend, she's going through. We've all been around a woman that gave that excuse to another man while we're waiting with our dick out ready to fuck. Or How could we uh, trust yeah. this woman to... Or during. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. It's crazy, bro. It's like crazy. It's, it's so nuts. Yeah, you're like, sitting on the side and, like... Bro, and, and bro, and they, and, they, and, they, and, they, and they always put him on speaker. Isn't it like the crazy? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. But like for us, it's like so <gasps> crazy. It's like niche porn now. It's so nuts that that shit happens, man. And again, like it's one of these situations where... Is it a double standard? I, I just said, it's like kind of cool when fucking, you know, my mind's playing tricks on me. When it's kind of cool when I'm listening to this stuff about dope dealers in Houston, mm -hmm. but it's not cool when I hear women doing the same masculine it's things. Good. Is that a double standard? Yes, it's a double standard. Yeah, yeah. It is a double standard. And I'm not saying it's not, uh, but that's the thing, like that, that's the world that we live in. And so, you know, you appreciate these things, but when you hear it from women, it's just like, you, you just don't understand. It doesn't have the same effect. Here's the best mm -hmm. example. I love this example. Um, you have a woman and she's a, a cardiologist and she performs 
heart surgery on your niece and saves your niece's life. From every objective manner, both financially, her value to the world, her intelligence, this is an incredibly valuable human. This woman who saved your niece's life is by every measurable objective means an incredibly valuable member of society. And she, and because she was able to do that, doesn't make my dick harder. It doesn't. Her, the things that make her valuable to society are not the things that make her attractive. But Hello. if I'm Tom Brady and I'm a good quarterback and I'm fucking, I'm, I'm, I'm a leader of men and I make a bunch of money, I am both attractive to women and a, a, a valuable member of society, and these things are, are matched up. They're the same thing. Mm -hmm. These two are two concentric circles, but for women, they're not. And because women mm -hmm. don't understand this concept, that's where you get women trying to take on alpha male tendencies, yes. which ironically make them less attractive. Yeah. Well, it's, like, I've, so. like I've said before, there's no such thing as an alpha female whatsoever. When women call themselves alpha females, they usually do so because they are essentially alpha males with female body parts because their idea of like what an alpha, what an alpha female is, is usually based on a male archetype. So if I'm a bad bitch, I got my money together. I went and got my, got my, my, my education. I, 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 I walk like the boss and talk like the boss. And yeah. I, it, that's, that's what I'm about. Essentially what she's doing, she's aping male behaviors. And that's so therefore like men, God gen forbid you say that to a woman. men generally uh, heterosexual men generally don't want to get with people with women who are just like men. Right. They want to get right. with the, the op opposites attract, not likes attract. But the thing is, is just what he was saying before is that what women do is they, they conflate their personal worth with what their sexual market value is yes. because that's what men do right tom brady wow. is both hot and he's a valuable member of the society whatever and so the guy who is also like say, a man who is a cardiologist who takes care of your you know saves your niece's life that makes him attractive and he's in good shape wow. and looks good that makes him that, that much more of a catch right because that's a male st he's again, at the again, hierarchy again. that we were talking about that's he's at the crazy. top of the Con fucking hierarchy consider a woman being saved by a firefighter Right, think about the firefighter fucking what do they call the the the, the calendars? Where yeah. The guy firefighters yeah. all have their shirt sexy off. Sexy fireman. A sexy fireman <laughs> comes in and saves this woman, and then afterwards she's attracted to him. That yeah. would make sense to us. If a female firefighter came and saved me, I'd be like, dude, thank you. Like that was awesome. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and if she asked me to go on a date, I probably would say I'm, I'm, I'm in a relationship now. But if I was single, I'd probably say yes to be nice. Mm -hmm. But like she's got shoulders to pick my bitch ass up. I'm two twenty. Yeah. Like, like that's crazy. Did you yeah. have to do it on camera? Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, like seriously, like <laughs> if that happened to me, like my leg was messed up and she pulls me out of there, yeah. I'd be like, thank you. I might, so, I might even give her money, but like, I'm not going to fucking date her because she <laughs> saved my life. Yeah. Like that's the thing. Like women don't understand these masculine qualities don't make you attractive. They make you valuable to society, mm -hmm. but they don't make you attractive. They it also makes... ruin the relationships for women. Yeah. A lot of women mm -hmm. in relationships feel like that's where their place is. Okay. Well, my man's doing this. I'm going to do this. And they start clashing. And they don't realize or competing. That's, yeah, and that's where like yeah, because she feels again like she feels like she has like, to be the one that yeah. provides the long term security because his bitch ass won't do it. The other thing is that when we're talking about like uh, the alpha male, alpha female versus like the alpha male, like, that's a male archetype that that woman has decided. Because this is what we've done. The reason why that exists is exactly what I told you before. I have to be an alpha a female because if I don't, I can't trust any man to provide, you know, to do all of these things. And most women want to submit to a worthy man's cause. To a, they do want really to get a guy who is a dominant guy. To submit What's to that? A they do. I think they're I genetically and evolutionary predis predisposed to something I, I like that. I, I, the they just somewhere? simply don't trust men yeah. to provide that yeah. anymore. That's I, why they have to turn themselves into the men that they wanted to marry. Because if they don't, then they're living in this very... Because remember, they're the vulnerable sex. So the primary focus of, fem of women is they need long-term security because they've only got between 18 and 28 for their peak sexual market years. Everything after... I hope you live a long life, right? But everything after that, that 10-year window, 18 to 28, everything after that so. is, going to be, is going to be focused on a long-term security, babies and, and provisioning protection and, and uh, uh, parental investment. I can't find a guy to do that. So I got to prepare myself as an alpha female because if I don't, I could die. It's like a fear of death, right? It's a fear of, of insecurity in a very chaotic world because that's what our ancestral past used to be. Lions and tigers and bears are going to come in and eat me if I don't, if I don't have a man to protect me because... I need, I'm going to be pregnant for the next nine months. I'm yeah. going to maybe have two or three kids. It's a need for survival. And I'm going to, it's a need for, that's why women look to dominant, strong, 
masculine men who are taller because they can protect them better when they are taller, more ma- more muscular. That again, it goes back to what he was saying, like the 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 shoulder, like the V taper, the shoulder to waist ratio. That's a sign of a guy who has who can kick ass and take names. He's the guy who has a capacity for violence, and that's another reason why women tend to be more attracted to guys who have at least look like, if not actually display the fact that they can actually kill somebody yes. else. And uh, so what happens is. When that woman can't find that, particularly in the modern world, she has to supply it herself. If there is such a thing as an alpha female, it is a chick who looks like a supermodel with big tits and a beautiful body who can compete and outclass other women. So an alpha male outclasses other males. An alpha female would look like a supermodel, would look like would look like a bikini model, FHM model, because she is the, the peak and the pinnacle of femininity that men want to reproduce with and want to protect, provide, and parentally invest in that one woman because she is a good bet for re- reproduction. That's an alpha female. An alpha female looks like a bikini model. An alpha an alpha male looks like a guy who's like who's who is the guy that other men want to be and other women want to mm. fuck. So there's there's different metrics for guys because we got you know mu- there's resources, territory, and, and access to women. But I mean, they all end up being like when you consider all of these different things that are attraction triggers, you can also kind of put them like in an ancestral environment, which men is either going to be able to conduct the most violence on my behalf or at least be aligned with other Mm -hmm. men who are able to. So even a sense of humor is in alignment with other men. Guys, I believe Mm -hmm. generally men, tattoos on men, tend to be more attractive because they show signs of like culture like tribal alignment that's the reason and also Ooh. scars when when scars. men have scars on their face women mm. don't find those unattractive often they find those scars to be attractive yeah. when women have when women have tattoos it shows it's almost signs of bondage it's like this is you you're owned by this person like it does that's why tattoos on women are just not as attractive as they are on men Tattoos on men are a masculine quality. And then again, women will go off and do this. And you'll find that when women have tattoos, the likelihood of them having multiple sexual partners is like astronomically higher. It just is, guys. I'm sorry to be the one to tell you this if you aren't aware. But like, that's the case. And I'm not trying to be judgmental, but that's the thing you're going to see. This is, you're going to see tongue rings and a lot of tattoos. And then you're going to be like, oh, you're a virgin? No, that's shocking. Like, it's just what you're, you're going to find. And I don't mean to be judgmental, but like, it comes off like that because when you look at statistics on all these things, you find them to be the case. And then people are like, well, you shouldn't judge me. People are individuals. I agree that we're individuals. But when you go buy a house and you were to ask what, how good are the schools in this house and what's the resale value of my property, you, these, are, these are good questions to ask mm-hmm. and they're based in statistics and mathematics and mm-hmm. points of data. But for some reason, we don't do it when it comes to marriage. See, that's the thing is I think we, should, we need mm-hmm. to be more judgmental. And I think that when we say, oh, don't judge me, but... I'm going to say something that you're going to judge me for anyways. This idea that we, we shouldn't be judgmental. I think we need to be more judgmental, at least more, dis, maybe judgmental is not the word, more discerning, right? Okay. I say, okay, I see what you're about. I see what, Let's what you're, really beha- I see what your That's behaviors are. I see what your words are. I see what you, what the outward per, you know perception of you. And by the way, we do this anyways. Because human beings are very good at pattern recognition. In fact, we had to be. Otherwise, we would die. So when we look and we say it's like the purple cow theory. Like you see a, a, a herd of brown cows and you see the one purple cow, you see whatever is that pattern that's in there. If you're like looking at... Um, if you're looking at clouds, what do you do with your kids? You look at clouds, you go, oh, it looks like a Tyrannosaurus, and that looks like an elephant and stuff. We see patterns. Even when there's no what pattern happens? there, we'll create patterns for ourselves. So to say, I'm not going to be judgmental. I'm a, no, bullshit, you're not. You're always going to be judgmental. You're going to tell them, well, you know, hey, uh, I, I know it's not societally polite for me to be judgmental. You're going to be judgmental anyways. Uh, if you see if you see a pit bull or you see a, a Rottweiler, you say, mm, okay, you kind of have a different opinion of that unless it's a Cocker Spaniel, right? You know that one of those those dogs probably, even could be the nicest dog in the world, but you know that the, the reputation of that dog, that dog breed is it can, it can might, might grab your arm and not let go, right? So you kind of give it a wide berth as opposed to like, like the Cocker Spaniel, which actually might be more mean than the, than the pit bull. <laughs> But we still have that pattern. We have that understanding. And I think that we'll, that it's actually served our species well to be judgmental because we're so good at pattern recognition. Not to mention, in order to mm. fix something that's going on in a lot mm. of these households between men and women, because mm-hmm. more often than not, there's some fucked up situation in there when you're in relationships. And you, you better speak up and say something about it opposed to not being judgmental. But no, it's mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. You know, like a lot of people, mm-hmm. I think there's too many men nowadays that I'm, I'm somebody that universally i try not to put anybody on blast i never want to do it 
Uh, but I'm universally the guy that most of my friends would speak to about the issues that they're having with women. For sure. You know, mm-hmm. and I'm always trying to say, you know, well, you, you got to tell her if you feel mm-hmm. that way. And it's caused because it's mm-hmm. causing mental health issues with you. Mm-hmm. You're you're just shutting the fuck up and she's just starting to walk all it's over. It's acting you. like a bitch. And all you're going to do is end up. <laughs> yeah. Now, you might be fucking three other women, but in home, you're not happy. Go ahead. Fix mm-hmm. fix home real quick. Well, it's because that's because men and women communicate differently. Men communicate overtly. And women communicate covertly. Women have a greater capacity for understanding like communication. So when women, actually women enjoy the act of communicating. Mm. So for women, it's the feeling that they get, get from the conversation. So if she wants to get with her best girlfriend, say, oh, let's go down to Starbucks and catch up. About like That's an event because it's pleasurable for women to actually have that conversation because women focus on the context of the conversation. How did that conversation make her feel? Men, when we're talking, we're transferring information. Where do we, where's the woolly mammoth? Let's get, we need spears, we need spears. Okay, well, how are we going to kill it? Are we going to run down the caribou? So it's a process, and men tend to be overt in their communications, meaning we mean what we say and we say what we mean. It's all based on information rather than feelings. Again, empiricism versus emotionalism. And it's also based on the content of the conversation rather than the context. So the content is, what's the information that you're giving me? What problems are we going to solve as a result of this conversation? And then somewhere in between, we might end up becoming brothers. We might end up becoming friends because we both worked together and collaborated and cooperated on this collective problem and we solved it together because that's the way that we, men, when they communicate, we we communicate this way. We're looking at the game, we're talking. When women communicate, they look at each other. And it's back. It's 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 eye contact back and forth. For men, it's usually not the way. When men are communicating, it's you. The best time to communicate is when they have a collective project, like working on a car or some shit like that, mm-hmm. or they're fishing or whatever. They have there's some sort of project that they're working on, and that's when men tend to communicate the best. But like when you're when your buddies come to you and go, "Hey, man, I don't know if she really likes me. Should I tell her about my feelings? Should I do this?" And like, and what do we say? You're acting like a bitch. Mm-hmm. You're talking like a bitch. But literally, you're talking like a woman yeah. because you're Ooh. using a covert communication style and what's your what was your advice just tell her what the fuck you're, you want like yeah. just tell her what you mean say what you mean to me what you say go stop stop <laughs> using covert language and start using overt language start acting like a man go out there and tell her what's what instead of going instead of being wishy-washy and acting like a bitch that's the difference between female communi- male communication and female communication and so and i think that that's probably the number one reason why guys get into these really bad situations with women is because they're communicating like they think that that woman wants to be communicated yes, and, and, with. Men are You're not a good listener. They're, You're they're goddamn also, right. Because men I are speak over, this you way. speak Men cover. don't want... Mm-hmm. Uh, men communicate in bad situations like this. Mm-hmm. They don't want their girl to go fuck somebody else. Yeah. They're taking it easy. Mm-hmm. Stop being a bitch. If she wants to go fuck somebody else, who gives a fuck? Mm-hmm. All she did was help you dodge a bullet. Fuck her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, she of course, because you, you, you have a, a certain level of abundance. So the other the other issue is this, right? Um, there's no... There, it doesn't make sense in evolution for women to give you an instruction manual on how to make them happy. Yeah. They, like often, mm-hmm. often you guys will find that if you do exactly what your girl tells you, she will punish you for it. And so one of the issues that happens is like when you set boundaries as a man and understand that I'm just going to, I have my path and purpose and you can join me on my path and purpose. You have to allow me to lead. If you understand that, what will happen is initially you're going to get pushback. And then eventually what you're going to find is that she's happier because she is in a situation. So this is a problem. I'm going to say this for women who probably aren't going to agree with what I have to say initially, but just like listen to the whole thing. Women have the ability to get what we said before, infinite dick. They get like come constantly being paraded. It's being put in their IG. Constantly they're they're being offered it. Everywhere they go, every even the cashier, people in their, you know, people in their they the grew mechanic, up with whoever, the, the mechanic, everyone. Guy, guy, everyone's dude. trying to have sex, sex with them. They're being offered this constantly. So we understand that women have the ability to be offered more atten- they have more attention than we do. So in order for, because they have that leverage point, in order for a relationship to work, women have to be, I believe, women have to be slightly more into a man than a man's into a woman. If she, if he's more into her, remember, she also has all these options. So it doesn't really work. And he has no point of leverage. If, if she has go. genuine desire and he has the upper hand where she's slightly more into him than he's into her, then this relationship can work because now he has the ability to lead. And if you can show me something that, that counters this, and please let me know. The vast, vast majority of relationships that I see work are when men are allowed to lead. Not allowed, but men lead. 
when they do lead, what you find is that a lot of the problems that she's having having with you magically just go away. So this boundary that so she's back, that. that she's you saying aloud comes from somewhere yeah. because it is a thing. Yes. you know what I mean. It's, you got it. It's like you okay with a sweetheart? Yeah, we'll do a lot better if I lead the way. Yes, right? for, for sure. Saying? I yeah. all the time. I, I tell sometimes my girlfriend she'll be we'll walking around with a big group of girls and the girl be in her ear. Where are we going? I'm like, it doesn't matter. You're going to let me lead. This is like, this is my, we're like nightclub in Vegas. This is my house. Don't worry about it. Like yeah. we're at, we're on stage at excess. I like, I basically pay rent here. You're fine. You're yeah. fine. <laughs> don't worry. You're going to let, and I, I don't even say, I don't ask her, but like, you're going to let me lead. And then she's like, oh, okay. Now I understand what's going on here. Whereas if you could, again, you can't ask the deer how to hunt the deer. Women mm -hmm. are going to, like biologically, like just imagine a girl who's like a perfect 10. If she had some sort of like, was able to tell you how to bang chicks who were like tens, then every guy would just be banging tens all the time. But of course it doesn't exactly. work like that. There's no way that a woman who's that attractive is going to give you the blueprint in order to sleep with women. So like they can't give you the advice to make them happy or to wow. be in relationships with them or to sleep with them. It's not, it's not that they're like deliberately trying to give you bad advice. They just evolutionarily can't give you. It's because like they know that when you ask point. for, when you asking a woman directly, you're using, you know, empirical, you know, overt language. When you ask a woman, the very question. The, the, the fact that you would need to ask her in the first place disqualifies you. Yes. You're and, already, and, and, and because and, you're the guy who doesn't get it. She wants to get with the guy who's been rewarded right. so many times with chicks that he doesn't yeah. need to ask those yes. stupid and, and, fucking and, questions. And so, and so what'll if happen- If you were a suitable mate, you would yes. know. Yeah. So, but, but here's the other thing. When she does give you advice and she'll give you some advice, she's giving you the advice of the man she's attracted to. So she's mm -hmm. going to give you advice like Ooh. be more sensitive or buy her flowers or whatever. And by the way, if you're as good looking or as wealthy as Tom Brady, you can buy women flowers and I'm sure it's a turn off. <laughs> but, but that's the thing, mm -hmm. in her mind, the concept, I've, I've said this before, the concept of male self-improvement, I truly believe women don't even believe it exists. Yeah. I truly believe that women are like, when you'd say, hey, what can I do to make this unattractive guy sleep with a super hot girl? The girl like can't even conceive of that reality. Even though we see it happen all the time, dudes like pull themselves up from their shoestrings and improve and become like high status. And they end up sleeping with super hot girls all the time. We see it. Women, when they give advice to men on how to sleep with women, the advice is always the advice that they would give to a man who they're already attracted to. Oh, wow. They, because they can't conceive of a man they're not attracted to being able to sleep with them because that would require self-improvement, which women do not inherently, con and it's the hottest women who don't conceive this. They don't conceive this of I idea. They wait at the finish line and they fuck the winners. Mm -hmm. They don't care about your struggle. They wait at the finish line and they fuck mm -hmm. the winners. And so from that concept, like that's why they cannot give you good advice. Now extrapolate that to being in the relationship and you're asking, well, what do you want? What do you want to make me happy? You asking the question all, all of a sudden means you're not leading. So mm -hmm. now she's even more turned off. She's her her hypergamy is more confused, looking for signals. Where's this out? I need an alpha male because this guy clearly isn't one. Mm -hmm. When instead you say, "No, I'm going to lead," and then when she when she doesn't, you have to have the ability to walk away. I tell my guys all mm -hmm. my guys all the time. Mm -hmm. Would you? Would they ask me a question Boundaries. about their girl, and my my first answer, my my question is, I don't know how to answer your question because I don't have all the con the context. But what I would ask you is, would you tolerate this behavior if there were three stunning women waiting for you at home, dying to fuck you? would you still tolerate this behavior? And they're like, no, of course not. Then, <laughs> then you have sold yourself short. All you need to know. Would you tolerate this behavior from your boss if you had 50 million in the, in the bank? Would you tolerate this behavior from your friends if you could just get rid of them and get a cooler friend group? And would you tolerate this, <laughs> would you tolerate the behavior from your girl if you have three girls waiting for you back at home? I've had three girls waiting for me back at home before, and I can tell you from that point forward, I would not tolerate anything from a woman that I dated that I wouldn't tolerate if I had three women back, back at home. Confidence is derived from options. So, but it, it's der derived it's from like, a, a, It's a like tolerating it from a fucking employee that's yes. a piece of shit employee, but yeah. you know that is you're already good. This so is this is that. one of the reasons why you'll see with large sales teams they fire the bottom 15% on a regular basis and why NFL teams will will churn through the guys at the bottom of the roster. Mm -hmm. But for two reasons, one they want possible improvement, but two they need the rest of the team to see mm -hmm. you are competing for something. And so the situation is if, if a woman does not want you to cheat, but if she knows you can never cheat, you are in deep shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and a woman does not want you to oh. replace her, but if she believes that you can't mm -hmm. replace her, if she believes that she is the best you could possibly do, she will walk all women, over you. Women don't want you to cheat, but they love a man who could. Yes, yeah, and, and, and if she has any inkling that if she cheated, 
that you would take her back, you have two problems. Number one is there's an, an underlying issue that caused her to cheat. Women do not cheat because of generally, 83% of the time, generally not cheat just because of a sexual urge. They cheat because they're they're missing something. That's the first reason. But the yeah, second problem urge. is when you, when you take her back. It could be. Yeah, it could be. Okay. Can't roll that when you, out. When you take her, I'm, I'm sorry, for sexual variety. That's what mm -hmm. I meant to say. Short-term sexual variety. Women generally don't cheat for short-term sexual variety like men do. But, but that's the first issue. I need long-term good dick. Yes. That's basically what that does cheat for. This better be worth it. So yeah. there, there's, there's yeah. two issues. If you take a woman back who cheats. The first issue is that there's some underlying problem that hasn't been fixed. And the second issue is you're always the dude who took back a girl who cheated on you. And mm -hmm. she will What's wrong with you? That. What is wrong? Even though consciously she will be begging you to take her back. Subconsciously, she's like, he took me back after I cheated on <laughs> this him. This weak there motherfucker. Is, there must <laughs> yes. be, her hypergamy is saying uh, there must be something. Is. Because remember, her whole, her, all of her evolutionary programming is to find the best, the best genetics that she mm. can possibly couple with that is going to be able to protect, provide, and provision mm. for her child. Yes. That's and also she, why you should never tell a chick that you're reading my book <laughs> yes. or that you're in MOA or that you're in any way trying to become a, to, to have some sort of masculine self improvement and never never say hey i became the man i am today because i read the rational mail and went to moa and i never say that because that woman wants to believe her just hind happened. brain that you just get it you're a naturally an alpha that you through. didn't actually have to go through any process you just naturally got it because her filter her intuition her high well, i call it the hypergamous filter right she's looking for the is he the best i can do right mm. Well, if he was, he wouldn't have had to go through all that bullshit to become the, the, this guy. So there's this want for an understanding of whether the guy is authentic. So when you look at like uh, shows like The Bachelor or The Bachelor, you know, that there, there are women who are trying to figure out if these guys are the real deal. Is he the best for her? It's like you got a bunch of guys and one, one chick, right? They say, who's, who's the best for the best? The reason why it's in its 28th season right now is because women have this innate evolved hindbrain desire for this indignation to to figure out is this guy really who he says he is or is he trying to deceive and so when you when you present yourself as like I'm an attorney but you're really a sandwich artist at fucking subway that want to f to figure that I got him I figured it out right that want to figure out if the guy's authentic or he's not is an evolutionary failsafe for women because they have a higher reproductive cost mm -hmm. than men do so if a woman gets with the guy she can't like life wise she can't afford to get with the wrong guy and have his babies wow. because even it's if he's the sense. right guy it could still be a death sentence for her yeah. so there's this there's this innate want for uh, that's why I like things like cheaters or like um, if you look at any of these shows that play on this want to figure out if the guy's the real deal or not or if it's uh, if he's cheating on her he's not cheating on her. Uh, the Bachelor is another good example of this. The reason why those shows are so popular is because it plays into that want to figure out if this guy is really the real deal. Well, if you man. if you telegraph that to her by saying, "Yeah, I'm an MOA and I read the Rational Mail and I'm Red Pill." You're done because yeah. you're inauthentic because you had to learn that from yeah, somewhere learn, yeah. else. And, and they, it's they not believe innately in this magical who you are. fairy dust. You just ended yeah. up this way. So it's just one of these kind. Of, I mean, you think about like female models. Like the, when you look at models up in New York, they look like they just fell out of bed like that. They're just hot like that. <laughs> and that women want to believe the same thing about men. You just got it. And like, of course, we all know as men, that's ridiculous. That's not. We had to put so much Process. work into ourselves to even get to the point of the possibility of being able to date a girl. Like, but women don't see that work that we put. In. And then, and then when you they look at like the sandwich artist or the cashier at, at, at Chick Fil A, they don't even remember that was a human. They don't even see the person. It's not that they they think he's ugly. They don't even notice he exists. Yeah. Like they literally don't even know he exists. Anyway, we're talking about before double standards and rappers, right? Women give the like, horrible advice when you listen to their lyrics and some of their songs. And some of the best advice I've ever got in my life, I got from Willie D and Project Pat. Like real talk, like you gotta let a hoe be a hoe. Talk to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like don't save her, she doesn't wanna be safe. She's a, she's a chicken she head, bro. You understand what I'm saying? I, 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 if, if she kissed me cheating, I won't never tell her sorry. I got my baby mama and my side bitch kissing. Like, like you, this, the best <laughs> advice, like seriously. They, they, like, and I, again, I know it's a double standard. Rappers were giving the best fucking advice. The be I fucked your bitch in some Gucci flip flops. Don't be with a girl who's gonna cheat on you. She's gonna embarrass you, bro. Like this is the thing that, you know what I'm saying?
man. That's what he's talking about. Like, they give the best advice. So you listen to that shit. And that's one of the, the ironies of this whole thing is like, I, I, I consider I consider Project Pat an evolutionary psychologist because he gives like such great advice. <laughs> the surest way I to make a woman, take. the surest way to make a woman miserable is to give her everything she wants. Yeah. Once she got you in the palm of her hand, it's mm-hmm. over. Boys. Absolutely. And they all want it. It's so funny because it's such a catch-22 situation. If we do exactly what you say, you punish us for it. I bring that up to my girlfriend sometimes. I'm like, you've argued with me about this certain thing, so I'm going to do exactly what you say. We're gonna, I'm going to take, I'm going to even see. record the conversation. When we come back. I'm, and, a, I'm, a, I'm a conversation recorder. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. I, I'm going to record this conversation. <laughs> I want you to remember And then this afterwards, shit. I'm going to record this conversation. And then when you completely go against what you asked me before, I want you to point, I'm going to point out this to you. Whenever I do what you ask me, you punish me for it. Whenever I lead, we're both happy. Remember that. Eventually down the line, I'm going to know how this relationship is going to go when you come to the realization, when you let me lead, because I'm a competent man. I've I've fought in two wars and I run run a a seven-figure business. I'm a competent human being, at least from her standpoint. If she sees me as competent, that's why she's with me. If she doesn't see me as competent, then leave. That's fine. I'm I'm totally fine. But if you don't respect me, it's the best thing is not for me to, the best thing is for you to leave. If you do respect me and I'm a competent man, you need to let me lead. If we do what you say, my girlfriend's 24 years younger than me. I need to start off by saying that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> if, if, if you, we do a motherfucker job, by yeah. the way, yeah. 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 Shout out to you, <laughs> if, if we, uh, if we do what you say, that's impossible. You, you just, <laughs> you don't have like the requisite experience. And also you're going to have less respect for me. If I'm following your lead, if you follow my lead, we make millions of dollars and live a happy life and travel anywhere you want in the home of your dreams if you let me lead. That's the way it is. And I can only promise you that. I can only say that with words and you can only look at my actions. But if you don't believe that, then leave now. And I have the ability internally to know that my my self-worth, that if you leave, I can find someone else or just go on and be single. That's another another option. My is girl's 11 years younger than me and I say the same shit. <laughs> go ahead, take off. Fuck it. It's you want to leave? You want to argue about this bullshit? Go. You know, and it's tougher too, for me. I got my, like, I got a 18 month That makes son. it much harder. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So well, I, I tell you got that one on the way, but I'm always telling her like, that's significantly it's different, so yeah. much more important that like you understand you chose me. For yes. I, I think, I think it, it steps along the way. If you're in a relationship, I think it steps along the way. It's important to remind your, your the woman that you're with what your value actually is. So like when we, I, I've had women actually hit me up after we do the delusion calculator. And we find out like like the, a guy. So what they'll do? I've had women too. They'll, they'll hit me up in my DMs. They go, you know what? I put my husband's stats in the <laughs> in the delusion calculator. Oh my god, he's like point zero zero one two percent of the population. You're welcome. And they're like, mm-hmm. and yeah, and they're like, they're like, I I have a new appreciation for him. Like I I, I couldn't believe that he's actually you know a rare animal yeah. kind of thing. And you know, thank you for pointing this out, kind of thing. And I think that. I mean, that's a, an extreme way of going about it, but I think that m- women just simply don't understand just how valuable the guy is that they happen to be with simply because oh, that that sure. guy doesn't have, like, especially when you get to a relationship or a marriage or whatever, guys don't have the opportunity to show pre-selection and social proof and all these other things that made them valuable when they were single. And the woman was like, she was had urge had an urgency to fuck him like, you know, seven ways to Tuesday because she knew that there was other, he was the man that other men wanted to be and other women wanted to fuck or at least perceptually. So in her own context, right? Once you get into the comfort and the familiarity of being in a, a long-term relationship, those occasions those incidences where you can actually display a higher value or you can be appreciated for the value you have women just take men for granted at that point he's mm-hmm. that he's supposed to do he's supposed to this motherfucker's supposed to he's do supposed everything to he's, do. he's supposed to work 60 hours a week he's supposed to come back home and take care of the baby he's supposed to do this supposed yeah. to supposed supposed as and he they, should as a and baby. then exactly exactly and so you get into this routine and it's like there's no occasion for that guy to say look i'm actually a pretty rare animal and if you don't if this is not what you want then there's the fucking door, right? And it's and, and again, you, then you get into situations where you got kids, you got responsibilities that are like long term ties. But having those occasions where that woman actually wants to like say, "Oh damn, I, you know, I actually have the insight to know that this guy is actually a pretty good fucking catch." And yes, god damn it, he is the best I can do. I just needed to be reminded of that. Now, so this is something that you guys probably come across pretty often, right? Um, People will say that we're putting ourselves on a pedestal. Oh, but you guys are an extreme exclusive group. You guys are just lucky, if so. Um, can you 
if you're not born an alpha, could you become an alpha? That's all you get. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, so no one, I don't think men are born an alpha. You, what, what you can do is you can be born exceptionally good looking, tall and athletic. You can win the genetic lottery. And, yes, you can win the genetic lottery. And like, like there's, there's not too many scenarios where like, um, you know, Shaquille O'Neal isn't an alpha to some extent, right? You know, seven, one, three, forty. Like that, that's gonna, and he can jump. Like that's yeah. for most part, he is going to. But like for most people, like if football was never invented, would Tom Brady have been an alpha? Like you understand, mm. it's contextual. So the thing is, no, for men, because there's this thing that we do that's a little different. Women go through puberty, they grow some boobs, and then they're just hot. Like that's just kind of the way it works. They don't have to. There's no forms they got to fill out. They're just fucking hot. Wake up one morning, they're hot. Uh, for men, we there's generally the U.S. Marine Corps has this. You'll see this with Aboriginals, or uh, you'll see this with um, you'll see this with uh, Inuit Indians, or like a, a tr- ancestral tribes is what I'm talking about. You'll see this with yes, U.S. military groups. You'll see this in in certain businesses. There's a rite of passage. Okay, there's a there's a thing. Uh, you know, you the when a uh, freshman gets on the football team, he has to hold the seniors' pads. Mm-hmm. There's a hazing that goes on in yeah, fraternities. Coming a man. There's a oh, rite yeah. of pat. No, see the thing is, we understand that as a, a, as becoming a man, and we probably looked at bullying differently. I didn't mind if a senior was bullying me to make me tougher, so that when I was a senior, I would be like that. If it was just like psychopathic, just weird quasi homosexual shit that they were doing as hazing in these fraternities. That shit was getting out of hand. Like that's yeah. not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is do some pushups, rook, do some pushups, rookie. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> Taping the rookie to the fucking uh, the the the, the goalpost. That's okay. It's the weird fucking quasi gay <laughs> shit yeah, that they're that's, doing. That's that's that was where it gets that, rare that was what about. like anything that was like had to do with someone's sexuality. Like cancel me, cancel that shit. You can miss me with that. What I'm talking about is we, because we go through that rite of passage, by definition, becoming an alpha is something you have to become, and it's not something that you're born with. Now, some guys are going to have more of a proclivity to be better leaders of men than others, but we're all going to have strengths and weaknesses. Some guy may be a great leader of men, a terrific speaker, and have very low intelligence. Some people may have very high intelligence, but be borderline autistic and like have no ability to lead men and no charisma mm-hmm. whatsoever. So you're going to, yeah. like men have different strengths and weaknesses, but... Yeah, you can become. It's not that you can become an alpha. That's the only way. Is you must become. Yeah, I was going to say is that there's uh. your personality. Remember, I was talking about the the four laws of behavioral genetics. Well, pretty much every character trait you have, attributes. Like if you're imaginative, you're you're an introvert, extrovert. If you have like you know you're more conscientious, that kind of stuff. That is heritable. So that there okay. is an, a genetic component to that, but that doesn't make much difference if you're not in a position where you can actually express that. So if you're mm. in a if you are just you could be born in a different culture. You could be born, you know, it's just simply we, we try to repress certain things and we try to, to uh, express other things for the last, like say, since the, you know, this, the mid seventies, we've told men to get in touch with their feminine side, their female side, right. Uh, and, you know, be more emotionally available, be express yourself emotionally, be, yeah. become more like a woman. Right. Well, the, fu- the fact of the matter is, if, are you left-handed or are you right-handed? You're right-handed. Are you left-handed or right-handed? Right? Are you left-handed? Left, yeah. Okay. So if I if I said to you, I want you to sign your name with your right hand, would you be able to do that? It would just look like way, shit. Yeah. yeah. Would you be able to do the same thing with your yeah, own? Right. Exactly. Because you were born, you guys were born with different proclivities of right-handedness or left-handedness. I could teach you how to sign your name with your right. If I stood there and I, I was trying to get you to do it long enough and I could force you to do that. But if you're naturally left-handed and you're naturally right-handed, if you're in a culture that favors your you to be right-handed and you to be left-handed, just, then suddenly you're a right-handed alpha male motherfucker, and you're a left-handed, you know, like oh shit, I gotta I gotta make up for that. It just depends on what the what the environment and the conditions are that you're that you're in. So when people ask me like, well, don't you think girls can throw a ball just as well as a guy? You know, you'll throw like a girl. No, because male human beings have like a, a better ability to like put their shoulders into yeah. it. They can throw an object with better accuracy. Genetic predisposition. Can you teach a young girl to be a very good pitcher for a little league team? Yes, you can. <laughs> But the boy has a natural proclivity for that where the girl maybe does not, and so therefore she requires more training. So can you teach a guy who may, might not necessarily have these alpha proclivities to become more alpha male? Absolutely. It's just going to take him longer uh, than the guy who has the natural proclivity to do those things. Wow. Yeah. A that, lot of men, I well, feel like they fall into money, and then they start getting their shit together. Right, like well, because because go so there's hopefully. no there's no money in the in the ancestral environment. Mm-hmm. So money is an allegory for competency, 
And so that's what makes it attractive. So it's like, if you if you inherit money, there's a great book about this, The Millionaire Next Door. When people inherit money, it didn't gener generally ruins their life. Mm -hmm. They become like almost useless. Yeah. You have to consider all the things that go into that. The start, the finish, the actual, the risk that is involved mm -hmm. in order to make the money, the hard work that is required in order to make the money. If you put all those things together, what you have is a fully fleshed out, accomplished man who played quarterback or started a business or, you know what I'm saying, became did something, became... Uh, a, 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 a okay. social media celebrity, yeah. whatever that required in it's order okay. to do the work in order for them to make the money. That whole thing, that level of competency, along competence. with the fact that they have access to this resource, those two things both make men attractive. They're competent and have resources. Mm. I think a lot of, I think a lot of people want to, uh, they want to characterize alpha as what best represents themselves. Yes. Right. They want to say, well, yeah. like for instance, I, you get, I'll get into trouble a lot with like tra traditional conservatives and stuff like that. They'll say, well, an alpha male doesn't look like Dan Bilzerian. He looks like the good, responsible, upstanding guy who's a, a leader in his community and his church. And he makes his, he's got his own money. He's got a, one wife and five babies and another one on the way. And that, that's an alpha male. Right. Whereas then other guys will say, well, look at Dan Bilzerian. He's not married. He gets like, hot chicks all the time. Looks like he's living a pretty damn good life. He's Hugh Hefner, that guy's an alpha male. Andrew Tate, oh, he's an alpha male. The guy who's maybe whoever, you know, a good conservative guy with a very family oriented, that's a, it's whatever. They, yeah. that, that's so that people, like, especially guys and women too, depending on where they are, what stage of life that they happen to be in. So if they're from like 18 to 28, they're probably going to want the Dan Bilzerian bad boy when they get to 29, 30, 31. Maybe now it's like, well, I need to find a guy who's a good upstanding, you know, uh, member of the community, a pro-social kind of guy. Um, so when you're looking at different like forms of alpha, like how is it expressed in society? For instance, like I, I use this example all the time. You got, um, you've got Captain America and you've got Tony Stark, Iron Man, both alphas, okay. but different expressions of that alpha. So the, the alpha male and the sigma the male. Sigma, okay. Yeah. It's okay. There's no such thing as a sigma male. There's just different expressions of alpha. There's the pro social alpha. And then there's the antisocial alpha or the one who just simply doesn't give a shit, right? The happy-go-lucky scoundrel alpha who might be Batman, the, the Dark Knight, you know, the, the, yeah. the maverick uh, vigilante is yeah. an alpha male. Superman, truth, justice, and the American way. He's looks, and each one of those alphas may or may not be attractive to a woman at a particular time. Women tend to go for sort of like the dark triad guys. But usually when they're, when they're more in their younger years, and not because they're naive, but because they can get that guy because they're more attractive. Right. When a woman is more necessitous of long-term security, that's when Captain America and Superman <laughs> seem to be the best choice of alpha for them because they also represent long-term security and they're kind of hot and they have superpowers, right? So you're looking at two different alpha archetypes. Uh, people want to say it's a sigma, an alpha, whatever. It, it's not. It's really just the same alpha. It's just one's pro-social and one's anti-social. Prisons are full of antisocial alpha yeah. males. Okay, they are drug dealers. They are gang leaders. They are you know scumbags. But Still no, no one much. would call them not being alpha. Okay, mm. and then there's the guys who are like the leaders at your church and the leaders in the business and the community and it's on the city council and all that stuff. And he, he takes care of his kids and everything. That's also an alpha. It's sure. just a, it's it's just a different expression of that same thing. So it all all these kind of depends on what you end up like you're like yeah. most men have this like oh well i'm an alpha if he looks yeah. more like me then he's got to be an alpha and then women will go well if he's looks like han solo then that's who i'm going to go after the scoundrel or does he look more like captain america because that's what i need now as opposed to what i needed then. that's your alpha yeah right. there's a bad boy alpha and then there's the good you know cads versus dads one thing i just want to give you guys like just really quickly your guys ability to explain things mm -hmm. and, and you know Make it make sense for simple-minded folks like ourselves. <laughs> Correct. Um, articulate yourselves. It really makes a lot of sense for me. I keep rolling this around in my head. The obligation to objective truth. Yeah. By starting there, everything else just kind of unravels mm -hmm. beautifully mm -hmm. right after that. By starting with, let's start with mm -hmm. the facts. Let's start with the numbers. Let's start with the, what, what were you saying? The historical. The, what are you talking about? About it's proven through historical, historical truth in short. It was. Uh, th there's an, a, a, an anthropological record, but. I think the, uh, look, the word like, track was ev great. Ev evolutionary psychology. Evolutionary psychology, <laughs> uh, what it was proven through time, not just mm -hmm. theory, basically. Yeah. So, so I mean, I think the the best just to be give a practical piece of advice. If everyone here read uh, the Evolution of Desire by David Buss and just started from there, be like, okay, these are the things I know. Right. This crazy, crazy statistics in there. 
thirty percent of men on Tinder are married. Like that shit, like that is so like crazy to me, dude. Probably. But like, if you were to read that book and it explains why men and women are the Name way they are, the the, the evolution desire. of desire, the twenty sixteen edition by David Buss, David M. Buss. If you read that book and then you start from there and then you start exploring other things like Stephen Stuart Williams or yeah. uh, you start like Hector Garcia, if you start reading Gatsad. Mar Marty Hazelton. Yeah, Mar if you start reading the other evolutionary psychology books, but you start from that, that's the 101 book. And and you explore out there and you just say, okay, I'm just going to start from this objective truth and then, and then kind of base my opinions based on what I see here. You're just going to come, you're going to be so much closer to useful data that can help you in your life. Actionable information. Correct. If, if you believe in the five love languages or the secret or fucking trauma release or things that have no... I'm not opposed to the secret. I don't think the secret is what people think it is. I think it's an obvious thing. I think it's just, if you think about something, you attract to it. But, but, like, I think people's idea of the secret is wild. I think when you read, when you read the book or when you listen to it, I, I think it's dope in this aspect. Obviously, if you if I purchase a car right now, I'm probably gonna see the fucking car a lot more. Sure, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Like it's now I notice it. Oh my god, I fucking notice it. So yeah. I feel yeah. like it works in this way. If you're thinking that you want to be successful, you're more than likely to allow that successful conversation. Agreed. Yeah. You but, know what I mean? Like but, if if there's a successful conversation next to you, you might want to walk into it. As far as like yes. all the other dreamy shit about it yeah i don't care how much players. positive juju you yeah. send out in the cosmos there's yeah, not going to be a t-bone steak in your freezer tomorrow because you, you thought that it was going to be only that you might observe so, what you yeah. think about so the, you might act yeah so the, the, the problem is the problem is when you watch the videos on the secret that's not how they they actually believe there's some going to be some sort of quantum quantum physics yeah. manifestation mm -hmm. of a lamborghini that's just going to appear in front of you the problem is the issue still is still working on that. The, God, the thing, come on. the thing is, the thing is, while what you're saying, well, I would consider that the concept of visualization, which is something that you can study in psychology. There's science that can show you if you just consistently have positive thoughts, you'll have a positive outcome. But that's psychology, which is a science, and there's no quantum manifestation involved. It's just a science. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why, like, again, The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle, it goes into, like, present moment awareness. There is science behind present moment awareness. You are far less stressed when you can actually focus on the present moment, and you will be able to execute things. You're actually a more attractive person to talk to and listen to when you're in yeah, the you're present right moment. Right now. Yeah. There's science behind that. Though. Well, like, if you have, like, certain, like, fetishes, or you have, like, a, like you, you got your rosary beads, or you got whatever, whatever mm -hmm. it is, your lucky rabbit's foot and shit like that, that's basically superstition is what it is but the belief that it has some sort of, like the the, yeah. the fact that you're like in a different frame of mind because you have this fucking whatever it is in your hand your if it's chicken's useful foot, yes mm -hmm. it's it the, the thing itself is is nonsense but the the power of you believing so you the thing beard hair might you pussy well it's a, well so for instance for instance why <laughs> why be, are yeah. the nitty why are some there, of them like that well think about it this way why are there drummers and why are there bugler why is there musicians on the battlefield for grit for big battles and so why are they playing, you know, Flight of the Valkyrie? <laughs> you know, that, because it puts you into that frame of mind, like I can go and fucking kick. I, I, so you're, you're psyching yourself up. Yeah. There's a science behind that for sure, because it's, you're going to you're going to create endorphins and you're going to like feel you like you can you hype yourself up enough to go and do what you got to go do for sure. But it's the power that belief actually triggers like maybe an endorphin release or a dopamine hit or something like that so that you can go. Yeah. Out. There's a you know, this is fascinating. I was meant to talk to you about this, but like one of the reasons why. Um, like we have like these big religious uh, edifices, like by big cathedrals or like big uh, uh, whatever, like uh, temples, places of worship is, is because it gives us a sense of awe. That sense of awe actually triggers like biochemical reactions within our bodies. So when like, for instance, you go to like a big Gothic cathedral and you see the big organ there, that organ that's playing, it's playing on, on a frequency yeah. that is, de well, it's not designed, but like they, we figured it out. Like it makes us feel awe. And so we feel something, and that something is when you hear the the, the organ, like that kind of stuff. It's like a heavy metal concert, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. You f you get a dopamine hit from the sound of that because it, and that's what inspires. And we think it's magic. It's, and it's not necessarily magic, <laughs> but it's because we hear that, and it's the sound that triggers that that chemical cocktail in us that makes us feel like we're either closer to God or we can go out and, and kill that opposing army. Yeah. Um. Unfortunately, I heard a quote it said, uh, church without music is a lecture. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. 
So that yeah, was, I mean, it's supposed to, yeah, it's supposed to trigger something mm-hmm. right but, to what but, you were saying. But you also consider like the act of like, for instance, people, uh, again, I am religious, but people who aren't religious that are against religion, like the organization of a European society, which allowed for the mercantile society we live in now and the discovery of the new world that happened because of religion. Right, the organization of Europe in order for us to get to the point where we are now happened because of religion. So, like, you can have things that are not purely rational that can lead to rational outcomes. It, this Makes is sense. how we started the podcast. It's like if it, if you believe it enough and it works for you, metaphorical. Truth. If it works hey, for you, mm-hmm. absolutely. Hey, mm-hmm. by all means, um, you guys have these profound views and, and thoughts and imaginations. Do you guys at all dabble in like uh, psychedelics and things like that? <laughs> You're no, there. I don't do anything. Neither one of us do drugs. No, not at all. We don't, so we we don't, don't, even, got, we don't even drink. We don't even drink. <laughs> right. so I've never even I've, tried marijuana, dude. I'm sure I have, I have done. I have. Okay, so yeah. I'll, I'll be straight up with you. I've done. I've dropped acid twice. I have done shrooms in the past, but I was 19 when I did those. Nice. I, I am now 55. Nice. Um, so I have experimented with those and back in the day when I was much younger. Um, so I do know what I'm talking about when it comes to psychoactives and things like that. I understand okay. the psilocybin thing and you're know, like, Oh, it's going to expand your reality or ayahuasca or whatever. I've never done. Ayahuasca. It ayahuasca. seems to help a lot of people. But I just, I, I, the yeah. thing that gets me is like, I think, I think that's something you should have done in your younger days. Not when you're like 40 and you go, I, I, oh, I found this, God because I, I took sure. You know, no, you didn't. You just didn't I, take it when you I should have. have actually seen people deal with certain anxiety problems with marijuana like that is yeah, that is without yeah. question i've absolutely seen that like Bipolar. certain people who like i just they are in to- like their life is intolerable without that and they smoke it and they just become like functioning like it's it, so i've seen that the, the efficacy of that not necessarily with the alcohol um the alcohol is 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 helpful in social situations i've seen that but like i don't think any of it's necessary and i know some people think that like especially the psychedelics are necessary i don't know that that's the case i think you can live a pretty functioning it's like oh man oh expand your horizon and and learn about more stuff i'm like i don't know man i could read a book like i I, like i kind of like my horizons right now they're pretty cool like i I, I don't like anything that sedates me right now that's one of the big things i get people say well Rolla, where do i start how do i get better how do i self-improve how do i become the best version of myself the first thing you need to do is find out what is sedating you sometimes it's porn it might be like mm. prescription opioids it might be weed especially weed now mm-hmm. um it might be alcohol it might be something it might be your your uh you play online you know yeah. um, uh, multiplayer online you know your your immersive kind of like world of warcraft games Whatever your escape is, that's probably your sedation. Whatever your drugs are, whatever keeps you in bed and doesn't get you out and you fucking on your ass and, and, and going out and killing the world, yeah. that's probably something that's sedating you. And there's lots and lots of things that sedate, especially young men today. Especially now. Find out what is sedating you and start with that first and and stop being sedated. Stop you. I can tell you all this great shit, and I can give you actionable information all day long. And it makes no fucking difference if you can't get your fat ass out of bed. Come on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So whatever is sedating you, and so it, you know, did I take drugs in my youth? Yes, of course I did. I, I LSD, you know, shrooms. I've done um, ecstasy. I've done I've done other drugs before. Just a little dab. But um, yeah. but I, I I haven't touched drugs since I was probably like in my late twenties, maybe or mid twenties, right? How shocked are people? So, so, when hear that. Well, like, I well, I also worked in, in wine. And, I worked in wine and spirits up until about 2020. So I mean, I'm I'm familiar with alcohol quite yeah, a bit. Things, I'm, I was yeah. a, a, pr- a principal creative for Van Gogh vodkas. So oh. uh, I've done quite a, and, and through them, I had like a, a portfolio of a lot of major brands as well. So I'm familiar with the with the whole you know alcohol scene. That's actually yeah. one of the reasons, like, one of the things that kept me in the clubs and sort of like kept me sort of a student of human behavior was being out at promos because I uh, the, the industry that I worked in. So I'm the only one sober at 2 a.m. and everybody's fucked up, and it's lot. like a superpower, oh, man. I'm out there writing notes. And, you know, okay, I see what you know that kind of shit. So, um, so, um, but as far as um, as uh, I, I know, that's popular, like psychoactives and stuff like that. Especially I hear, that. I hear like older, mostly older guys just say like. I went to the Amazon rainforest and I licked a poison frog or I took ayahuasca on some shamanic, uh, you know, Journey. spiritual, you know, <laughs> I went to the spirit world Retreat. with peyote or something like that. I'm like, I'm like, no dude, you just turned your brain into silly putty for like, you know, half a day. And now you're back to where you're at again. And this is the shit you should have done when you were 19. Like I wasn't going, okay, it was pretty stupid, but you know, I did it. Yeah. I did what I did. 
Um, I don't think it's like some some you know path to the the spirit world or another dimension or anything like that. You're hallucinating. You basically are mm. turning your brain into silly putty for a little while, and then you, if you feel like it's, I, I can understand why guys who do it later in life they think it's some big spiritual you know uh, revival for them because they never did it before, and they go, oh yeah. my gosh, where's this been all my life? And so yeah, I can see how it's <laughs> much more significant to, significant to guys who like do ayahuasca trips when they're 40 some odd years old because they didn't do it when they were 19, when they were too sh scared shitless to do it, or they didn't even know what the hell it was at that time. Yeah. So I understand why, like a lot of people who are predisposed to that sort of mindset, think it's like this big, you know, ex you know, uh, experience excess existential expansion of their lives yeah. and stuff. I get that. I get the feeling cause I've done them before, but I think that really it's not something that, that you should use as a crutch. And I certainly, it's certainly a, not something that should be a sedation. I, mean, I just know you guys get that question a lot because the information that if you guys anything, put out. If anything, I need to do more caffeine and I need to do something. <laughs> so I, 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 I need to, to be more piss. amped. What was yeah. the question? <laughs> uh, if they dabble in psychedelics. Okay. And, uh, yeah, Very long it, time ago. You'll have to watch it. Mike was too busy in the Air Force. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you, like, I just, just something I, I want men to consider, okay? Um a lot of times, and this is an unfortunate thing I've seen, but like women, when you talk, like something I, I like for guys to do is have a group of females you can ask questions to, hopefully in the cohort that you're attracted to. So like the type of woman you'd be attracted to. If you could ask questions to 10 girls that are just at least in that area, but maybe they're married or for whatever reason, you're just not going to hook up with them. And you ask them a question, just, just do a little science experiment. A couple of questions you should ask them. Number one, how did you meet the last five guys you had sex with? Now, some girls won't even admit they've had sex with five guys, but just ask the question. And you're going to find out that the question was like rarely ever cold approach, you know, pick up cold approach in a mall. It's usually a friend in, introduced me or mm -hmm. I met him on Instagram or something like that. That's an interesting piece of advice. How long did you make a guy wait before you had sex with him? And then because, because you're coming at them as a friend, they're going to tell you, yeah, I fucked him on the first night. You're going to get more of an honest answer if nobody's watching. So yeah. I highly recommend that girls do do that like you ask some of these questions well another question you might ask is something to the effect of hey the f last five times you had sex how many times were you drunk or high and the, the especially the really hot ones you're going to find out it's like 85 90 percent of the time they the first time they had sex with a guy they were drunk or high now this is an unfortunate thing wow. so there's a couple things you need to be aware of number one if a girl is going to do drugs or drink she should pour her own drink i have a very very strong mm. rule with it comes to my program mm. Girls, men never pour women's drinks at any of my events. Women only pour women's drinks. Uh, you guys have all been to a party where some girl's like, oh my God, I got drugged. And we just watched her drink herself stupid and yeah. pissed on herself. Mm -hmm. like, no, no one drugged you. You fucking drank just too much. Just eliminate that but, entire. Yeah, just eliminate thing. the entire mm -hmm. argument. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. The second thing you need to ask yourself is like, if you're a dude watching this and you have ever done cocaine by yourself, like figure out what the fuck, or cocaine with just men, just figure out what, there's something going on here. <laughs> you should have never in your life done cocaine just with just men. Sound. Okay? Like I do not recommend, I'm not going to go on your, your show and say <laughs> that men should use cocaine in order to fuck women, <laughs> but men do that. They do. We all know that. Yeah. But if you have ever <laughs> like done cocaine <laughs> with just a bunch of guys, you have a fucking problem, okay? Yo, time out. When yeah. I first, uh, I, I, I'm not gonna sit here and yeah. I've ever yeah. done cocaine. Yeah, but I like I, I did yeah, I but... did the cocaine with my boys. You know yeah, what I'm no, but, but, but you'll do it. But like the in the intent should be like I'm, okay, because it's gonna sound really bad when I say this. The intent for some men, not me, would be to do it because women are around and they like to do it. I get that, but like you probably shouldn't do it with just the guys. They were on the way. I swear. <laughs> if, if the girls are on the way for sure. And, and, definitely and, 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 and you and, sure shit shouldn't do ecstasy with just yeah. Yeah. If you're doing ecstasy with just I guys. I definitely agree with there you. There is something problem. wrong there. Doing like drinking with just the guys, I get it if you're like watching your team in the Super Bowl. I get it. I, I kind of get it. But okay. my point is the whole the whole reason why it's like, marijuana, you know, mushrooms fucking uh, alcohol and, um, you know, whatever, cocaine. The reason why those things exist in general and the reason why they're prevalent is in, they have been throughout history. And I'm not saying this is a good thing, mm. but it's so that men could get women who ha were judgmental and have were very picky to not be so judgmental and picky. Drop their inhibitions. To drop their inhibitions so that they would have sex with more people. And I'm not telling you to do wow. that. But what I am telling you is that you're a man and you shouldn't have to have, oh my God, I got to stick my dick in these two women in a threesome. I need to drink. You should not <laughs> need to drink or do drugs in order to get over your inhibitions to fuck women. You shouldn't. You're a man. You should be able to fuck women without being drunk. Yes, That's my true. point. So just consider what I'm saying. Consider... Are you, if you're drinking in a social situation because the girls are drinking, that's fine. If you're drinking way more than she's drinking, 
Ask yourself why. What's going on there? I understand why she needs to drink because she has an evolutionary adaptation to be more selective and have inhibitions because if she fucks the wrong guy and gets pregnant, her ancestor, her ancestral, uh, you know, whatever, she then, could die. Then, then she could die. Then that yeah. would be, she'd be, she would to be ostracized from the tribe. I get it. But you're a man and just consider, again, there's nothing wrong with drinking. Like that, that, I'm not saying that's the issue. My point is if you're consistently drinking and you're and and you're drinking more than the women you're with, then you're kind of missing the point. Mm -hmm. It's like she's the one with inhibitions, not you. Mm. So that's the thing. Now, if you're drinking just to have fun, that's totally fine too. You know, drinking is fun. I totally get that. Yeah. I'm just saying, there's a lot of guys out there. I meet them, and I'm like, they're doing cocaine in a fucking strip club bathroom by themselves, and I'm like, why? <laughs> what are you doing? Like, what are, what are you doing? Like, bro, like, I just, my point is like, like, you know, I just, I get, I get. What I'm saying is, I get why girls do coke and drink. When guys do coke and drink, it's like. I just like ask yourself yeah. why you're doing it. That's all I'm saying. You better yeah. be the one making I, a profit. Or I'll, I'll, I'll uh, stop doing all sorts of drugs like that. A long, I'll, I'll tell you, like, so I, I have not, I have been sober since 2017, since December 2017. Okay. Sober now, all in all, no drinking. No either. drinking, no, I don't smoke, don't, don't do that. I'm, wow. I'm boring as fuck, yeah. Um, no, but I, the reason, well, I worked in wine and spirits for a very long time. Say, yeah, yeah, I worked in, I, I, that's all I did from like 2005 right up to 2020, so like 15 years of that, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, and so was I, I'm, I'm not against drink, please drink, especially no, my yeah, brand, no, the no. brands yeah, I still yeah. have royal, I get royalty. So yeah, please right. go and drink those. I, I would love for you to do that. I'll give you the list if you want, if you want to know. Um, but because it's, it, it's been something that I did, but I'll tell you what, yeah. the, here's what I did. I've never been to an AA meeting and never got a DUI. It was just a, a personal decision. And the reason why I didn't, I stopped drinking really was because I wanted to start writing the fourth book and I had to be perfect. I had to be on point and bulletproof because I was writing about religion Seriously, and I had right. to, I had to, I had to research it. I had to do a lot of interviews Highly and I was starting criticized. to become more, um, more involved in doing my podcast and making live appearances and everything else. And I can't do that and be recovering from a Friday or a yeah. Saturday mm -hmm. drinking because that's going to mean Sunday is dead. Yeah. Right. And, and I sure shit can't write on a, a Friday or a Saturday if I'm drinking or if I haven't fun, you know, even casually. Right. So I don't want to be hung over. I don't like the feeling of being hung over and I'm a much more productive writer as a result of not drinking. So I made a promise to myself. I said, okay, I'm going to write this book when I'm done, then I'll celebrate by having a drink, right? I'll be, then I'll, I'll get fucked up, right? I'll get blacked yeah. out drunk. <laughs> well, unfortunately that book took three years to, <laughs> to, 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 to actually write and, and publish. And I got to that point and I go, you know what? I don't really feel any need to do this anymore because I'm a much more efficient, much more productive human being when I'm not drinking. And so that's why I can stay up till one in the morning and do and do these things and, and still stay on top of my game. And as I was saying before, it's like, you know, I would much, you know, my, my diet is caffeine and stress right now. That's uh, you want to know why, how, how does he stay in shape? Caffeine and stress. Those are the two ways I stay in shape. But the, um, the idea of like eliminating your sedations, that's what I did. And as a result, I, I've, I've produced two books since then. So that was the fourth and the fifth book as a result. And I'm a much more productive, more, I'm a better writer. I'm a, I can work out. I'm a better bodybuilder. I'm a better, you know, at, at so many other things. Like you shouldn't need to have, uh, to, to, to be drunk and to be fucked up to, to go and have sex. Uh, yeah, if anything, yeah. that's a hindrance, yeah, that's, I would that, think. That's, that's my point. My, my point is not to, like, if you want to drink or do drugs, that's fine. I'm all about it. Go ahead. If you're doing you know? more than she is, smart about it. then just like, as possible. Question be a drunk, why, be an efficient drunk. <laughs> question why you're doing more, drinking more than she is. Like, again, like when I, when I have a threesome, there's no anxiety. It's super fun. I don't need, oh God, what am I going to do? I got to have to have sex with these women. Fuck. No, I just, I'm good. I don't need to drink anything. Let's go get this done. You I think know? my problem with a lot of people in drug usage is if if you aren't successful, I don't think these drugs are going to help you. Yeah, for sure. No, and a matter of fact, if you if the, the the problem I see is, uh, and I could I could use multiple examples for this. It's what's called too young, too uh, too much, too young, too fast. Okay, yeah. and usually we we apply this to like young athletes who get like they come from the projects and they get a, like ten million dollar you know to play in the NFL, and then they go hog wild and they 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 blow it all or they end up you know in, in domestic abuse or they have drug problems and stuff like that too much too young too fast and i think that a lot of that is a, actually a problem in the influencer economy right now because what you do is you have these kids who are maybe they've got a drug problem or maybe they're just sort of borderline alcoholics or there's something else that's a problem with them then you give them a lot of money because now they become super popular on twitch or super popular on youtube or whatever and it, now they're a kid 
who had a drug problem, who now has $10 million in the bank to facilitate that. Now you're a $10 million drunk instead of a $10,000 drunk. And so that ends up, and I'll use Jordan Peterson as an example, right? This what happened with Jordan Peterson. He went from being this very obscure, unknown psychology professor at the University of Toronto. I think it's Toronto or Ontario. um, And he was making, maybe he was making six figures. Maybe he was making $120,000 a year to going to making $80,000 a month on just Patreon alone. Crazy. And he's already got a benzo a diazepine uh, you know, problem. Yeah, that's too much, too young, too fast. Now, is he too young? No, he's not young physically, but like he's new to having this much resources so he can facilitate a, a, a problem. Your demons are going to follow you, and you're going to have a $10,000 demons, or you're going to have $10 million demons. Yeah. You better fucking resolve that shit before you, before you get into that. Otherwise, it's going to wreck and you. And a lot of people can't even get there because they've, they've blocked it out. You know, what I mean, you yeah. got too fucked up too. Well, soon but the thing is, is that get, so if you have, it's success. the problem. This is the problem. The problem is, is like, it, I wouldn't have this amount of money if I wasn't a fucking mm. genius. If I, did, <laughs> I wouldn't have ten million dollars. Yeah, I wouldn't West. have this money in the bank right now. Kanye West was great, but um, I wouldn't have this money in the bank. I wouldn't if I wasn't a genius. Then I wouldn't have, be worth a hundred million dollars. It's like the Joe Rogan effect, right? He, he, he goes to Spotify and he's for, to the tune of $100 million. It doesn't matter what he says. The sky is purple. The sky is green. Doesn't matter. $100 million. Sure and again, is, I'm always right no matter what because $100 million, right? Same thing with Kanye West. Kanye West said this in one of his more lucid moments was uh, when you become famous, that's when you start to grow. That's, you cease growing. You stop growing wow. because everybody around you will, because they're, Revenue and their their well being and their their you know their life source is attached to you and telling you everything is is great. You're a genius. You're, you're wonderful. Of course you of course you are. Look at you, right? Their livelihood is dependent on telling him yes, 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 yes. Even when it should be no, this sucks. You should probably do a little bit better, right? So he was saying like when you become when you become famous when you get rich that's when you cease to grow because everybody who was pushing you to be better they stop doing that. They start telling you yes to protect their interests. Yep. So I think that this interview definitely needs to have a part two. Cause it's, <laughs> you know what I mean? We can do it. We can do it. There's, there's a lot of great content. Let's that do it with Vlad TV this. tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shit will be sweet. Mm. But I mean, but we got so much. I, I like pairing people together. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? I think that's super dope. We got so many people that I think would be super dope to, to sure. us, all, all of us to Merge, be able to sit yeah. in. Sure. And listen, you guys are going to be uh, in town tomorrow. You know, mm-hmm. We'll be on with Vlad TV tomorrow at 6 p.m. You guys mm-hmm. want to stop by. You know, this cool. Uh, when, when I feel like when we build a relationship with somebody, it's forever. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not somebody that's like, oh, I'll never. There are a few. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, let me not say that because then all of a sudden somebody's going to hit me up and be like, yo, you mind if I stop that dude? No. Forever's forever. I'm definitely boy. a blunt son of a bitch. So, as calm as I am and as cool as I am, and I'm, I'm willing to learn. And, and listen, mm-hmm. at any given moment, if there is an individual that I do not want to fuck with, there's, you're going to get a quick, please don't call my phone again, my boy. You know what I mean? Do I me a favor. Don't do that again. It's going to be a fucking problem. <laughs> yeah. But um, I want to ask you a question is, are, are you in a relationship now? Yeah, I've been married for 27 years. How was that like with you and doing everything you're doing now? Oh, doing everything. <laughs> Why don't you just go and ask me? <laughs> yeah. No, I, it's it's good. It's good. I I I am in a relationship and I'm in a marriage that I think a lot of guys would would say is ideal. So I have uh, I've been married to my wife for 27 years. My daughter's 25. She just got married back in August herself. That's and, congratulations. Uh, sir. Thank you. And. Uh, I think a lot of people want to say, well, how can you do what you're doing with at Access Vegas and hanging out with these girls and everything else? And I'm like, that's actually one of the best strengths of my marriage is like my wife and I are like that, you know, that's we're that secure with everything. Right. So she knows I'm not going to go. I'm not out here to go cheat on her or anything like that. But the other thing is like she loves the fact that like I am. I'm doing what I'm doing right now. So it's like, yeah. you know, when I want, when it's time for me to go leave, to go to Vegas or come out here or something like that, you know, she takes care of me. We take care of each other. Yeah. And it's, it's also, remember what I told you, how about like most guys who are in relationships and in, uh, uh, you know, marriages or whatever, they have very, very few opportunities to show social proof and, and pre-selection mm-hmm. and to say, you know, like give this, you know, Hey, this, well, this girl likes, like, yeah, likes this. Even though I have, options even though i have like women who who find me attractive you know like being on the show and everything like that she's the one that i 
that I stay with. She's the only person that I that I stay with, so right? But then, of course, we have 27 years of just shared history together too. So, yeah. so I respect my wife for one, for number one. And then second of all, it's like, it's, it's kind of a, a good like value appreciation. Remember I said about the, 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 with the women who would say, who would go and look at the, um, the, uh, what is it? The delusion calculator and they find out how valuable their, their, their husband is. My wife gets that on a, on a weekly basis. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so, and that's good. And I like it because she appreciates me and I appreciate her that much more because we, I think if anything, it strengthened our relationship but other than anything else. We were at a wet Republic, uh, bikini contest. And I was a, I was nice. a judge in the, at the bikini contest and everybody's looking at like Corey's pictures. I didn't even take all that many pictures. Corey started, his photographer started putting these pictures up on Instagram and everybody's like, isn't he married? I can't believe he's oh, and like, God. I guess. And, and my wife's like, you know, you know, <laughs> you know, go for it. Like, yeah. but it's not like, um, but she knows that like we have, we have a very solid core. We have a 27 year shared history. She's, she's with, witnessed uh, the progression as well. She, yeah. So and, like, and I would very much like to, I, it, the problem is, it's like, I can't really take her on the road with me, although she would like to come sometimes, but you know, it's like we have, we have our dogs and we have other responsibilities and stuff like that yeah. too. Yeah. We but, have our dogs. Yeah. So well, we do. We have our dogs. Shit, yeah, we have our dogs. Yeah. Well, I'm I mean, not leaving I, my fucking yeah, dog. I've, I didn't want to leave my dog. Yeah. But um, no, but I mean, we have a very solid, stable relationship. And I think what's funny is like when I, when those pictures would go up and people would go, isn't he married? I'm like, yeah, you should see that as a plus, <laughs> yeah. not as a, not as like, you, you know, <laughs> yeah, not, not as something that's bad, you know? And I, um, what was the girl that you were, um, you were interviewing not too long ago on your show? And she was saying, oh, I've never really seen too many guys or too many married couples who are happy after a certain Corey of time. Yee. Episode Corey Episode 104. Yee. I would love to introduce her to my wife. And I'll tell you what's funny is my wife likes certain girls that are on the show and other ones she just like hates. But like, then there's like the ones that she likes. I'm like, really? Like, like yeah. Domo. Domo's just a porn star. She's like, my we, girl we hates love, them all. We love her, you know? <laughs> but it's funny. It's funny. It's like she, she <laughs> has, she has her favorites and stuff like that. Yeah. But it's like, you know, that's, that's just how we are. My girl yeah. doesn't hate them all. Just is clear. I'm going to get my ass off for saying that. Yeah. <laughs> but, but Mike. I don't care what you say to me. I know that you're clearly more the dickhead out of both of you. <laughs> so, so how is it? Because he, he knows. Oh, you don't, you know, you know, you don't read my Twitter posts. <laughs> <laughs> right. But I mean, 27 years. Yeah. And you're saying, girlfriend, what is it like for you in a relationship and doing what you do and being outspoken as you are? Um, the, the, the outspoken part is that like, I actually don't get into as much trouble as he does because really? I Ooh. always preface everything I say with like, there's never a, an opinion. Okay, like you said earlier. Yeah, yeah I really, a lot of girls like, watch my show. I, I just hosted uh, Swimsuit USA's World Championship last week, and it's 50 girls, Sick. and I'm the host, and all the girls, like, watch my show. And they're, of course. And they're fans. Like, it's not a big deal. And then I, I host the Wet Republic Bikini Competition, uh, and then I host the one for um, uh, uh, Paradise Challenge, the Black Tape Project. I host that one as well. Sick. Uh, my girlfriend and That's I are, po are polygynous, meaning we see women together. We're not polyamorous, we're polygynous. So we, the, her, her and I see women together. That was the only relationship that I was comfortable with having. Um, and because of it, it works. Also, I didn't choose her because she's 21 and I'm 46. I chose her because she just, we got along. I was outrageously attracted to her. And I didn't realize how young she was when we met uh, because she has a boob job. And you know, usually girls that are that young don't have one, but she had um, a, a growth that she had to have taken out and had a mastectomy. And so she had a boob job. It's a pretty big boob job. So when I met her, I was like, Jesus Christ. But like when I, <laughs> I was very happy, but like, well, yeah. my point was when I met her, I didn't think she was 20 years old. And so we've, we've grown, uh, and you know, I come home and she's just an incredible partner. Uh, and there's certain, there's the, the funny thing is I'm on TikTok more than her. So like, there's not the, the cultural divide that you would expect. I'm in the gym as much as she is. Um, and we're like the there things we, we listen to, like I listen to just as much hip hop as she does. I want like, I, I still live in the world that she's kind of in, so it's like there's not this huge, not a huge two and uh, a, yeah. But I, I still remember 1979. You know what I'm saying? So it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. there's still there's still that big difference. I had one life, basically an entire life before I, she was born, and then an entire mm. life since she's been born. And so that that part is interesting. There's huge uh, value in that. Yeah, I'm sure the, you blow her mind on a regular. There is. There's Just a lot of stuff I explain. Now I was gonna say is like like you guys are aren't, you're up on a year now. Yeah, Has we've been, been together. Uh, yeah. The 18th of October. I remember when year. he says, "Yeah, I'm, this is my new girlfriend and stuff like." That. I was like, "Are we 
you sure? <laughs> <laughs> because, because I'm, I mean, I know the kind of lifestyle he was living like prior to her. But, and I was, and now like probably like two months in, I'm like, okay, I get yeah, it. Yeah. Like, I like, totally get I'm, it. I'm, I'm 100% I'm like, on board with like it. Like I used to be a guest at the Playboy Mansion and one of my close friends is Dan Blazarian. Like I host the three <laughs> biggest bikini competitions. Just in the world. by proximity. Yeah. yeah, yeah like, it was just, it, well, I'm not, I'm not even saying I have game. What I'm telling you is I was just around so many women that it was one of these things where I did very little work. Yeah, and so I could you're get not just going to commit to any. Correct. And it's a situation where her, I explained to her, I was like, this is my lifestyle. This is what I appreciate. She, she was also into the same thing. And so it kind of worked out that way. So that, that's why it worked. If I didn't have a girlfriend, uh, if I wasn't with Kylie, I just wouldn't be with anyone. He I likes big giant titties too. That's I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I tell my girl this all the time. Circus tits. I'm like, I, I don't think women understand that one thing. Like for a man, it's like, when you say, if I wasn't with you, I just wouldn't be with anyone. Yeah, so she I, she, think, she, I think they think that you're not going to have sex with anyone is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you got to understand, like, if I'm not with anyone, I have so much more possibility. Yeah, so, so yeah, yeah that's, I mean? that's what they, because part of their plan, like, none of us grew up being like, you know what I want to be? We're like, I want to be an astronaut. I want to be a firefighter. I want to be a policeman. None of us grew up being like, I want to be a groom. I can't wait for my wedding day. That's, none of us said that. But women do. Like, there's a, like, bar, like wedding Barbie. Like, that's part of the plan. So, for them, it's like, if they weren't with me, then they'd be with someone else because that's part of the plan. Hmm. For me, like, they don't understand. It's like, you're not competing against another woman. You're competing against me being single. You're Like, wins against replacement is just me being single. Because it was really awesome when I was single, but it's better with her. And that's the only way I'd be in a relationship. I'm not in a relationship because I need to be in a relationship. It's like some companies don't have like a chief revenue officer. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a almost like a fucking position you invent when there's somebody qualified for that position. <laughs> that's what the it. position of Michael Sartain's girlfriend was invented because Kylie was incredible. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like she was like, wow. this girl was like defensive player of the year and led the league yeah. in scoring. Like she was her, <laughs> scoring points. Yeah, right she now. was, she it's was like, like, it's like, I'm, I've said this before, like I'm, I've never, I'm not against marriage. I think a lot of people think I'm against marriage because I talk about like divorce stats and I talk about marriage oh. and, and how I I'm against the way we do it now. But I think that the institution and the, you know, the idea of like monogamous, you know, having, having some sort of formal formalization of, of a relationship. Absolutely. I'm 100% for that. It's like, I'm just not, the, I'm not on board with the way that we do it, especially in this country, the way that we do it now. So when people see me and like, they see me on, on access Vegas or they see me, you know, the swimsuit thing like oh isn't he married blah blah and like the reason why you're saying that is because you have this preconception of what a particular relationship ought to be and my my relationship is my lifestyle is a, is a lifestyle choice his is a lifestyle choice as well one of the things i've always said is that if you're going to go like you can spin plates and that's pretty much what he's been doing for quite some time you spin plates you date non-exclusively until you get to the point where you find one girl that's like that's you know, she, she looks Worth like she's a pretty down. good fit yeah. The re- and he's he's done this successfully is um, the relationship is is the inevitable outcome of the of the person of the, of the two of the two people coming together. So it's not like I'm looking for a relationship. I got to find a relationship. No, you get two people together and then it's just see it's the most obvious most. It's like it's like yeah. the byproduct of sense. you two getting together. Yeah. So and honestly, I think that's where the most the healthiest relationships begin. When it's the two people are so good together that it's just obvious. Like you don't have to. Oh, I'm official on Facebook. Fuck that. It's it's <laughs> you are you realize yeah. that you guys are in a relationship, and you don't have to like. It's effortless. You don't have to make some big formal. Okay, everybody. Now we're it's face. We're Facebook official, we're and now what? You know, it's like we're not going to do a soft launch or what? All that bullshit on Instagram. You don't have to <laughs> because it's just the relationship is is a lifestyle choice that is the inevitable result of the two people that are are in the relationship to begin with. Well, goddamn, fellas, <laughs> fucking dope. There's so much. There's so he much. He did it, man. Out. I was like, I and it was like the natural flow of it too. I'm like, is this really happening? Yeah, <laughs> let's go. I love I love Kylie. I, I love her to death. She's she's fantastic. Yeah, she's great. She's from Arkansas. She's yeah. amazing. She like I truly believe she would kill someone for me. Like I'm not even kidding. <laughs> yeah. Like that's probably that would so touch. It probably wouldn't take much love. provoking either. Well, she is. She's, people are like, oh, she seems sweet. No, she's angry as yes. shit and she's very mean. But like she's she's mean <laughs> yeah. for me. But she fights for that's me. Dope. Dope. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's well, I appreciate I appreciate you both coming through here to the Dancer Project. Come on. I think that. 
Let's get that handshake right. Um, I think that we should definitely do this again. For sure. Um, yeah, it's, there's there's a lot of dope content to unpack out of this for sure. Yeah. Nova's gonna be working. Landon, you gotta be working because we got some shit to put out. <laughs> I don't I don't like waiting. I'm gonna be honest with you. I fucking hate it. I'm like, get your fucking dope content out there. You saw what the fuck they said. No, this, but this um, is definitely one of the rewatched episodes. A lot of times we, we do these episodes. I don't know if you guys watch your own show. We oh, yeah. we don't. Unless it's a situation like this. Mm-hmm. There's a lot to unpack here. So, so. A, lot, a, a bunch of dope shit. Yeah. So we definitely got to get it going. Come Atlanta, on. Again, what episode were we on? 148. 148. I like, see, that's the thing. I just tell Landon, what episode are we on? So what is this? <laughs> this is a natural thing that we love doing. 148, baby. But uh, again, I appreciate you two gentlemen coming up here. There's a lot of dope content. A lot of shit that I learned, mm-hmm. which is what I love this episode that's for. True. Because it's just to be able to sit here, because I'm going to... I'm, I'm going to be talking shit to my girl for days. <laughs> <laughs> it's over now. I'm like, be I, I'm like 83% males. of women, 83. Did you hear what yeah, we said? Yeah, that's what it's all about. All right, signing out. Yep. Cheers.